Hi there. Hey, this is an extract from my larger course called Webflow Essentials. Okay, so if you enjoy this course and want to go further, uh, check out my Webflow Essentials course. There'll be a card in the corner and there will be a link in the description. All right, enjoy the video. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott, and together we're gonna to learn how to build responsive, beautiful, accessible websites in Webflow. Now this course is aimed at people who are new to the Webflow software, and for those of you who are new to web design in general. You'll start by creating a simple one-page website, learning the fundamentals of layout and animation, uh, using Webflow's no-code software, everything is designed visually. You'll learn how to make your website look consistent on desktop, tablet, and mobile. You'll get started learning CSS classes for layout and font styling, as well as the importance of class naming conventions. If you're someone who has used Webflow just a little bit, okay, and you're finding things like grid and flex and columns and divs all a little bit tricky to know which one to use, uh, don't worry, I promise by the end of this course, you, my friend, will know when to use which and why. You'll then tackle a larger project where you build your own portfolio website. Here you'll also start making more complex animations. Timed animations, parallax animations, ooh, fancy. You'll learn how to create and style forms. Some of you might have some skills in Figma or Adobe XD. And for you, I'll show you how to convert those designs into a Webflow website. But knowing Figma or XD isn't essential for the course. You'll learn sticky navs, SEO, symbols, brims, floats, red to green gradients, Comic Sans. What? What's wrong with Comic Sans? Impact? So once we've got the fundamentals of Webflow under our belts, we'll then look at creating a dynamic CMS website. We're gonna create a blog. Okay, you'll learn how to create it and style it but then how to hand over the responsibilities of that site to your customer, your client, uh, your staff member, your houseplant, so they can log in and start making their own changes to the website and creating their own blog posts without any of your help. Then at the end of the course, you'll use your mad new skills to create an e-commerce store, creating and styling shopping carts, order forms, payment gateways. You'll learn about selling physical and digital products as well as selling services. If you're sitting there thinking global, class, flex, grid, float, that all sounds way too hard, don't worry. Remember, we're gonna start right at the beginning and work our way through step by step. This course is aimed at anybody who wants to build websites and Webflow. Uh, you might have just one website or store that you need to build for yourself or for a client, or maybe you want to become a full-time web designer, or maybe you are a freelancer already and you need to expand what you offer as a freelancer. I set assignments throughout this course so that you can practice what you've learned and build things ready for your portfolio. All right, it is time to upgrade yourself. Go from website zero to Webflow Hero. All right, uh, getting started. Uh, first thing is there are some exercise files. There'll be a link on this page here. Uh, download those, they'll be the files that we use for this course. All right, the software. Uh, Webflow is actually browser-based, so you go to, you can use this link here if you'd like to go and sign up. Um, it's an affiliate link, so uh, Webflow give me a uh, finder's fee for that, or just go straight to Webflow, sign up for an account there. It's free to sign up. It's Mac or PC because it's browser-based. I'm using Google Chrome. Check the browser specs um, from Webflow, whether they support your browser, if you're using Safari or Edge or something else, but I'm using Chrome in this course. So paid versus free. Uh, Webflow has both a free and paid one. Uh, for this particular course, um, we are gonna start the course using the free version as far as we can. Um, and there's a point where we need the extra features uh, and we'll sign up for the paid one. So if you are, you can do two options. You can do all the free stuff and then just watch the paid stuff and decide if it's for you. Or what might be useful is um, you can sign up for a monthly account, okay, with them when we get to that paid stuff. And, you know, then you can decide after that first month whether it's right for you or not, okay, and maybe switch to an annual after then. But yeah, um, you'll be able to do a chunk of this course, let's say 20 to 30 percent of it, uh, using the free version, and I'll let you know when we do cross over the paid version line. Now Webflow is updating really fast, so um, if there are any updates to the UI that aren't obvious, 
um, check out the comments below the video, okay, just to see if there's anything, or if it's really bad, or a big change, I'll go and re-record it. But um, let me know if there is any changes, um, so that you can help other people, or yeah, if there is something you're like, hmm, that doesn't look right, just check under the video uh, to see if there's been a little update. Uh, the other thing is, I speak really fast. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm speaking fast right now. I feel like I'm a little bit more chilled out. I'm at the beginning of the course, things are a bit nervous because we've just met, but um, I speak fast. Uh, you'll notice there's a cog in the bottom, that side of all the videos. You'll be able to change the speed and slow me down to inebriated Dan. Uh, it can be easier if maybe English isn't your first language or I just talk fast. <laughs> Some people speed me up. <laughs> Both are weird sounding me's, but you get used to it. Uh, and the last thing was, oh yeah, um, I there's a bit of like explaining Webflow what it does for the next few videos. Uh, if you wanna skip that, skip along to the video named, wait there, I'm gonna check, found it. It's called How to Build Your First Website in Webflow. So you'll see that's a, bit, a little bit further on in the course. If you just wanna jump to like that part where you're like, actually just start making stuff and quit with all the talky, um, you can jump to there. Otherwise, we're gonna go through the next few videos just all answering all the questions that I had before I got started with Webflow. I think it's important to frame it up, what it is, what it does, frequently asked questions. There you go. All right, next video. So, what is Webflow? Uh, Webflow is a way to make websites. Um, where it sits in the market of website making is it is considered a no-code website builder. Uh, so it means like on one side over here, you've got fully coding your website, HTML, CSS, PHP, whatever you're using, okay? Uh, and on the other side here is more the Wix and Squarespace where it's very drag and drop, okay? And they handle all the back end. So Webflow kind of sits in this happy medium for me of it's, it does, it writes beautiful code, okay, and gives you access to the code if you want it, okay, you don't have to, but uh, for me as a web designer who understands a lot of the code, I find it really useful because it gives me uh, full control like the coding side of it, okay, if you code your own website, you can do whatever you want, okay, but it takes a longer and it's a different way of building, right, you're a coder, I'm more of a designer. So what I like is Webflow because it allows me to build really quite complex sites custom, like exactly how I want, or I can start from templates, kind of more how this Wix Squarespace world works, okay? And yeah, Webflow's in the middle. They hide the code from you, it's accessible if you need it or want it, if you wanna push it further, um, and it has a lot of depth. Coding, your own website, has infinite depth. You can do whatever you want, okay? Webflow is kind of in this middle ground of you can do pretty much what you want. Anything that's kind of, normal to do, <laughs> um, you can do it in Webflow and it's expanding. Where And then over here um, on this other kind of set are more drag and drop for people who want to build one website for their team or club or business and never want to touch it again, okay? Because you can pick a nice template and you're off. Whereas here you can pick a nice template and you're off, but also if you want to do this other weird thing and this thing here as well and you want it to look this way, this is where Webflow sits and it kind of hides the code from you writes good code, just for those people who freak out with like <laughs> having to write syntax and stuff like that. So that's one thing about what Webflow is. So that's uh, what Webflow is. Who is it for and who normally uses it? It's normally designers and marketers who want to be able to produce a site without the help of a developer. Okay, um, you know, they might feel like they can only get so far on their own and then they're kind of, it becomes quite tricky then to kind of get another person involved and pay them. So um, yeah, designers often will use it to build multiple websites for their clients. They might be doing other design work for them, want to build websites, don't know how to code, and Webflow is that perfect solution. No code, quite complex websites, um, and it gives the client access to update it as well. So it's this, it's a lovely uh, flow for a designer to make websites and it's becoming very popular. Um, same with marketers where they've got an idea or a microsite or something that they want done maybe quickly, okay? Um, and don't want to have to make it a really big project with other external kind of developers. There's nothing wrong with working with a developer. I work with a developer all the time to do custom stuff, but Webflow gives me the ability to get quite far on my own um, without any help. And you can take Webflow a little bit further and, um, you know, it's not 
can't use a developer, what you can do is you can take Webflow and you'll probably get 99% of what you need done. But for that weird edge case, you can get a developer to help out and there are becoming more and more developers that specifically help designers and marketers uh, push that Webflow a little bit further so you can kind of jam them in there as well. Um, also, business owners are using Webflow because it means they can take full control. They're not kind of outsourcing it and feel this disconnect between their idea, especially at the beginning, and what they want to deliver because Webflow allows you to do e-commerce and kind of database-driven CMS-style websites, which are traditionally need help from um, other people, um, whereas Webflow kind of brings it all in and allows you to do it all on your own. Let's talk about where it fits in the web design process. So Webflow is not used to design a website. You should have done that previously. Okay, you do it in something like Figma or XD or Photoshop or Microsoft Paint. Why would you design it in those uh, first and get maybe client sign off or your own sign off? Um, uh, and then build it in Webflow afterwards and not just build it straight away um, is because it's very quick and easy to design something in something like these other tools like Figma, XD, Photoshop. We've got courses on all of that, Illustrator, it doesn't matter. Um, any tool you want to use to design it, it's very easy to move things around. In Webflow, it's a lot more structured. You've got to kind of build stuff up from the kind of ground up uh, and it's very hard to, not very hard to change things, but moving something around with your mouse versus changing where it is on a website is a lot different. Um, the best analogy is uh, you want a house, okay? You could design 10 of them and bit, you could build 10 houses and decide which one you like the best, or you could draw 10 houses and decide which one you like best and then build one. Do you get the idea? Um, it's not as elaborate as that. You can totally design in Webflow. It's just not a great way of doing it. Design something first, get client approval, sign off. You can get it tested in these other programs. I'm not sure why they're over here. <laughs> this side is all these guys, okay? The design software, and then you build it in Webflow once you love your design. You can make some changes along the way. It's not kind of set in stone, but um, I hope you get the idea. Uh, design, build in Webflow, and then Webflow is the kind of like last port of call. You can then say, here's a website, I'm finished. So that's what Webflow is, who it's for, where it fits in the old web design flow. Uh, if you're like, oh, 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 I got more questions. Oh, me, me, me. Uh, good because I've got another video. I'll go through all the kind of frequently asked questions that most people ask me, and I had about it when I first got started. So I will see you in that video. I'm gonna get a cup of tea, and I will be back. I'll see you in a minute. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the frequently asked questions video. What was that thing at the beginning? It is like a way so that you can jump along in this long video for all the different frequently asked questions. For lots of you, you just watch the whole thing. For some of you, you can look through and go, I know all that, move on to the next video. And for some of you, again, you'll just wanna check out a few things. So I left that right at the beginning so it's easy to scrub back and see where it is and then move along in the timeline. Does that make sure, uh, make sense? Hope it does. So, why are we doing this? It's because there was just a bunch of questions before I got into Webflow that I had that I eventually figured it all out. And I was like, that's the kind of stuff, I wish there was just one place for all of that stuff. Um, so that's what this video is for you. Hopefully this will answer all your questions and answers all in one place. Just get going, Dan. Roger. All right, most frequently asked question about Webflow is price. Uh, I'm gonna talk about US dollars and monthly payments here just uh, for consistency. And uh, let's talk about the free one first, is that the pros and cons. The pros is you get to work for free, um, you can build a site and launch it, okay? You can only have two of them. And the big drawback for that is that those, well, the first drawback is that those two different websites you make uh, can only have two different pages. That's a fine for like a landing page or a brochure website or, you know, homepage, contact us page. Homepage are becoming quite extensive and the thing we'll build in this course here is you can make them quite long to have still exp you know, show a lot of content for those two pages. So uh, two websites, two pages only, the limitation becomes when you wanna start paying is when you want a custom domain because those first two websites can go out but they're on, uh, on the free account but they're on uh, dansamazingwebsite.webflow.io. So that's the URL you'd have to give out. So it's a, not very professional. 
So if you want dansamazingwebsite.com, okay, you need to then upgrade to the like $15 a month, okay, and that's your web hosting, okay, and it's like if you're thinking, oh, forever? Web hosting costs. It can cost as little as $5, but with Webflow, you get the perk, all the perks of Webflow, okay, and so, yeah, you have to upgrade from there for the website, but only when it's ready to go out, okay. Get that custom domain, and yes, um, the next kind of price jump would be in like in this course is going to be when we need a CMS. Uh, CMS, if you've never used one, it's like uh, really good for things like blog posts. Let's say we don't want to be designing every page in Webflow, we want to give it to the client and get them to kind of be able to go onto the website and you know put a blog title in, add some images, add their own text, hit upload to website, and they have nothing to do with Webflow. Okay, it's uploaded to a CMS or a database and it's displayed on the website. Okay, so it allows, yeah, people not to be coding and designing every page, just gives them a little bit of uh, an area to be able to upload stuff, kind of like WordPress. So you move to like, I think it's $20 a month to get to that um, CMS. There is a bandwidth traffic, you know, so uh, most small sites are gonna not exceed this bandwidth at all. But if you've got a super high traffic website, they might ask you to upgrade to the next level because it's getting so much traffic, but it's really popular and you're making loads of money, so you will be able to do it. Uh, other pricing brackets, um, there's lots of different scales in here. I'm just kind of picking the key ones that I find most useful is when you then move from CMS to e-commerce. So let me look, e-commerce. So e-commerce is a different one because they they need to do a bunch of different stuff. So to get a lightweight uh, e-commerce site, so say you're making headphones, okay, and you want to sell them on your site, you're going to have to move to the $29 a month um, uh, plan because that's what Webflow says, okay, and it unlocks all of their kind of e-commerce stuff. Um, and you can go right up to like, you know, what was that? Yeah, that's a month. You can go right up to, the most expensive one I can see here is $212 a month for e-commerce. And it's it comes down to like, they break it down with like how many items you have in your shop, um, you know, do they charge you a transaction fee, do they not, all sorts of other stuff. So have a little look, go to webflow.com slash pricing, those are the main bits. Again, these change, the rules change, um, but those are the kind of zero, 15, 20, 29 are the main food groups for things that you might be using for Webflow. And if you're thinking, I'm not paying that, um, if you've ever done web design before, you know you need some sort of hosting and you need domain registration and somebody's gonna have to do the e-commerce for you. You're gonna pay somewhere. This is what Webflow does, it's above what you can get if you are really kind of on a tight budget, um, but the perks for Webflow doing it are pretty good. Like they handle all the patching, you don't have to worry about servers and uh, yeah, that's, that's it, that's pricing. Let's talk uh, WordPress versus Webflow. What are the differences? Which one should you use? So let's talk about what they both are. WordPress is essentially started as a blogging software that you can manipulate to do basically anything. So much of the world is powered by WordPress. Uh, it has an, an exhaustive amount of depth, so much depth. If all these weird edge cases, you can probably find a WordPress plugin that will sort it out. Um, whereas Webflow is more the core of what you need to do for web design, but none of those like tiny little edge cases, or at least it's not as click and plug in and play. You can make WordPress do quite a lot of it, okay? And um, so if you're a person who just wants a quick blog this afternoon, a blogging website up, uh, just install WordPress, pick a plug, you know, pick a template that you kind of like, and install and start blogging away. And um, if you want, if you've got a design that you've made and you want to build that, uh, do it in WordPress because getting that customization into web uh, WordPress, okay, taking that um, design you want it to be perfect, or at least you've got a really strong kind of idea of what it, you want it to look like, and uh, making WordPress do it is real tricky. Like I'm okay at coding, and it's still quite tricky to get WordPress to do what I want. Um, you have to get into the code and stuff. And um, in saying that, though, I don't want to. WordPress is amazing because of all those kind of plugins that you need to do something. You know, I, if you need a plugin that uh, will accept uh, payments, but only from that weird payment gateway that only your country uses, and it's only for left-handed people, you're probably gonna find a plugin for it. Whereas uh, WordPress will take generic payments from most of the world. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Loads of depth, 
quite tricky to customize, but really easy to get started. WordPress, pretty easy to get started, you'll see in this course, um, but allows you to control everything, okay? And you're a bit, yeah, that's <laughs> WordPress, good, Webflow, very good, and um, both have their pros and cons, but those are, that's the overview of those two, which one you should start with. There you go. Can your client update your Webflow website uh, without your help? They can. There's two sides to Webflow. There's the designer side, you the maker, okay, the creator of the website, and then there's something called the editor. And the editor is for customers or clients and they can go in and update the website as they need. Okay, they don't need any interaction with Webflow, Okay, they can do it within the website. I'm gonna give you the teeniest, tiniest demo uh, just to show you kind of what I mean. So here we go, there's two sides to Webflow. There is the designer, okay, which is me going in here and going, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to increase this padding to move it across and design it all, get it looking good. Okay, I publish the website and then the client or my customer uses something called the editor. The editor allows them as the customer to not come back to you, but go into the website, Okay, and click on editing and say, actually, I want to change this. You know, this needs to be 20, uh, 36. Okay, and when they've made a change, what they can do is they can say, publish it. Okay, and they publish the website. And the cool thing about it is that it'll update the live website. So that text change will uh, update, but also it'll change over here in my designer view. There we go. So it means client changes appear for me as well when I'm designing, I can see what they've changed. Now they can change text, images, links, anything. They can also um, add blog posts if you've set up a blog or add products if you've set up an e-commerce site. It's quite a nice little setup here. You can use Webflow just in Designer View and just for yourself, okay, if you're building your own portfolio and never touch the editor. But if you wanna hand over to a client, they have got ways of updating the website without coming back to you every time. So can the client update the website? Yes, they can without your help, fancy. The question is, can I host my Webflow website on my own server, okay, or my own hosting platform? Yes, limited use cases. Um, if you wanna build something in Webflow, uh, like a static website, okay, um, and you know, maybe it's a portfolio, and you just kind of make it and you then wanna go and stick it on your own host, totally doable, okay? If you wanna make updates to that website, you can either Hack the code on this side, okay? If you've got some basic HTML and CSS knowledge, you can totally do that on your own host, okay? And forget about Webflow now, just use it to make it. Uh, if you wanna continue using Webflow to make changes, okay, you can go into Webflow and say, oh, okay, I wanna move that around or add this next project and lay it all out and then export the code onto your own host. You can totally do that. And um, the limitation becomes uh, when you are, want a CMS, you want the client to be able to log in or you want, uh, you know, it's blog posts. We're gonna create a blog posting website, okay? Um, and we're also gonna create an e-commerce. Both of those functionalities need to be hosted on Webflow. They don't export all the databases and stuff to make that work uh, for your own site. So static websites, perfect. Uh, anything that requires either a functionality like client login or a CMS, okay, for uploading our blog posts or e-commerce, that needs to be hosted with Webflow for that to work. So yes and no. Can you import your own code into Webflow? Uh, yes and no. Uh, no, you can't grab your existing website and put it into Webflow and make it adjustments and then spit it out again. Okay, you can't like import a whole website, so it doesn't do that. Uh, what you can do in Webflow though is you can put it in your own custom code. So you might have some code that needs to go in the head tag or into the body on a particular page or all the pages, you can inject um, your own code into pages. So you can bring in little bits of code, but not import the whole site into Webflow. There you go. Can I build a membership website in Webflow? Kind of, not yet. Uh, it's in beta. It might be out by now, depending on when you're watching this. Um, as of this recording, it's in beta, so they're working on it. So it's probably out by now. So yes, you can. Uh, for the moment, you can build uh, like a password protected section of your website. That's already functionality in Webflow and membership site is coming or it might be out now, go check. There you go, that's the answer. Can I use my own custom domain name uh, with Webflow? Yes, you can. Uh, they give you one uh, as part of the free part and development site. 
uh, of Webflow, um, that is like Dan's amazing website dot Webflow dot IO. You can use that one. Everyone wants their own custom domain though. Dan's amazing website dot com. And yes, you can connect them up. Do they sell them? No. Uh, how to set them up? I will show you later in the Webflow Essentials course. Uh, but it can be done. Yes, it can. All right. Onwards. Does Webflow handle your email addresses? So you've got dansamazingwebsite.com. Okay, you want dan at dansamazingwebsite.com. Okay, uh, Webflow don't handle the email for you. Uh, you need something else. Most people will use Gmail or kind of Google Workspaces. That's what I use. It's fairly common. Um, or sort out your own email kind of hosting. Uh, so they don't do the email kind of management for you. You can just use your Gmail account and not get a special, you know, dan at the special website.com email and just use your Gmail. Um, the other thing is, is that they do handle things like say you make an order through your, um, your site, you know, somebody makes a purchase, they will handle the like grabbing the order and emailing it to you and giving you a space to log in to see all your orders. So they kind of handle, you know, not quite email, but like those transactions. Same with a form. I'll show you how to make a form in this course. And when somebody says, hi, my name is Daniel Scott and I want to hire you, um, submit, it will, they will process that, they will hold a copy of it and they will send it to you, your whatever email address you want to send it to, your Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo or whatever you're using. Okay, so they'll process that and send it to you so you get the contact. So they'll process the form and send it to your email address. So they do not sort out your fancy email addresses, but they process and send stuff to your existing email address. There you go. Is Webflow good for SEO? Uh, yes, uh, I'm a relatively qualified SEO person. Dealt with that a long time, reasonably good. Um, it does the basics very well, Webflow, on page, okay, on page SEO, and actually gets quite deep in terms of what it actually can do for your kind of like website SEO. So the answer is yes, it does website on page SEO extremely well. I'm going to say extremely. There you go. Hi, everyone. We're going to build our first website in Webflow. Uh, it's going to be super basic like this. And we're not actually going to build it so much as use a lot of the kind of pre-made stuff in Webflow. Um, I do this because I want a real good overview of yeah what the process is, like how you start a site, how you put stuff in it, how you publish it, how do you preview it. Okay, so that's why it's a short video and we're going to get to here quite quickly because there are just some basics. I want to show you the whole process in one little bit and show you the main areas that you're going to use before we get into some more of the you know fundamental stuff of Webflow. A nice brief overview. It's going to either be really helpful and you'll be like oh yeah that was good like now I get a sense of where we're going or it's going to be too fast and be very confusing. I'm unsure which one it is yet so let's go. <laughs> right to begin uh, depending on where you start you might be here you can start a new site you might end up actually just in this window here okay you can start with templates which is going to be great later on when you're awesome um, but for now let's just start with a free uh, project you can i'm just going to demo it you can follow along if you want at this stage but we're going to bin what i'm going to make it's more of a complete walkthrough remember just to give you a sense of what's in the future so this is the designer welcome this is where you're going to spend most of your time uh, the, there's kind of like four main places to find stuff. I'm going to show you three now and one later on called the editor. That's later in the course. But the main ones you need now is the designer. Okay, this is where we get to add and draw stuff. So I can go in here and say this little plus button and I could say I want a heading and then I want a button. Remember, this is just a quick whiz through if you're like, oh, slow down. This is not the purpose of this <laughs> video is to give you a kind of a, a broad overview before we get into the nitty gritty. So the designer is where you make stuff and do your design work. Okay, the other place that is useful is see up here in the corner, okay, is your project settings. So this is our project, okay, this is my project, okay, I can go into those settings and it has a lot of important stuff. So mine's called Dan's Awesome Site, okay, and we've got a button and a heading on it. Here, general stuff, the name of your website, favorite icons, <laughs> Okay, uh, what, you know, where you're based, all these sorts of things. Um, members is an area for, you might have it another designer helping you or um, your client goes in there, ways of publishing, your billing, things you can change for the website for SEO, any form submissions, 
I guess it's not to really to go through it is it's more like this section here has a lot of important stuff that when you get started you'll be like where is that it is in your settings your project settings okay so let's go back to the designer for this project called Daniel's awesome site okay there's a few ways of getting everywhere so remember designer I can go to my project settings okay but let's say you've got two projects you're working with three clients ten clients you're awesome okay you can go to your dashboard and you'll end up here quite often when you load up uh, Webflow after a while, okay, you log out or uh, go away from it and close it and come back here, you'll end up here. At the moment, we've got one site. You'll end up with multiple sites in here if you build multiple sites. From here, you can more often than not just click on it and go to the designer where we were before. Or you can go straight to the project settings. There it is, this project's settings. So those are the three parts, the designer, the settings and this dashboard. So you're going to toggle between all of these. These things along here are, that's important. These things here, cool websites they've made, uh, designers that you might hire, their education part, like that's the main bit. And within this um, dashboard, you can open your project and a designer. There you go. So those are the main areas. And the other main things I want to cover is I'm going to click these and just delete on my keyboard. And I want to just quickly go through these um, chunks here. So you've got elements and layouts. Okay, elements are the little building blocks that you're going to work with. Okay, so you're going to start creating a container. Okay, and then inside that container, you can put your heading. So it's not remember that heading was all the way over there. Okay, and you start building your website. And you go, okay, I need uh, what else do we need? <laughs> Easy stuff. I need an image. Okay, let's put our image in. Missed it. Get it in the right area. Okay, you start building your website through these elements and there's lots in here there's forms you can see there's nav menus all sorts of cool stuff that we're going to learn in this course okay layouts is let me delete these layouts is not cheating okay but is pre-made chunks you want a sticky nav to the top boom you want a layouts you want a hero section there you go uh, do you want a footer? Where am I going? There we go. Plus layouts footer. Okay. And you've got a quite a complex site going already. And the cool thing about it is I'm going to show you, this is your preview. So this is the designer, right? This is me with all the editing and lots of junk everywhere. You can clean everything up and preview what it's going to look like to the end user by clicking this little eyeball. There we go. It's going to look like. You can see here, I can't do a whole lot. It's not beautiful, but it's a lot of the structure is there. Like if you switch down to this, say, um, mobile view, can you see the nav, does that change? Yeah, the nav restacks, the images kind of stack differently on the here. They've done a lot of the work for you by using those layouts. Okay, to come out of the preview, just click the eyeball again. So elements all the individual bits layouts are all the individual bits stuck together okay that's still a heading and that's still some text and that's still a button but, but it's centered now look at that centered in the box so it's just a way of kind of jumping okay and skipping now you can't do it yet you could the problem becomes is like okay i want to get this i want to delete this okay i want to delete this whole you know bit do i just delete all of them why did that jump over there? There's a lot of things that this is super helpful for once you know what you're doing, okay? So you, at the end of this course, what you'll be able to do is be able to use all of this and know what the float is and why Flexbox is keeping this in the middle. It's not hard, you just gotta learn it. So jumping to these um, pre-made stuff or templates of other people's is cool, but only once you've got some basic skills. I'm gonna give you some basic skills so that you too can save time by copying templates or cloning websites or using these big um, layout chunks. Anything else I wanted to show you? So uh, elements, building blocks, layouts, cheating, okay, previewing, and the other one is publishing. Okay, so up here, okay, we can publish it and it can be seen on the internet by people. It's gonna use this kind of strange domain. Um, like I said earlier in the course, you can use your own custom domain, but for the moment we're gonna use this and you can publish it and people can see it. Previewing it just for you, publishing it to the world, building it with elements, cheating by using Webflow's elements that they've already made, all kind of pre-styled and ready to go. 
Okay, that is my brief overview of making something in Webflow. The full process is brief as it was. Also, don't forget the kind of places you need to be. Remember, your project setting is everything about this particular project. Okay, back to the dashboard to see all the different projects you're working on, and the editor will actually talk about later on. This is what the view that your client will potentially see if you give them access to update the site. You might not be planning to do that, but it's another chunk. All right, I hope that helped. Did it help? I don't know. I feel like a quick little brief through is kind of nice to see where everything goes, or it's going to confuse the heck out of you. <laughs> it's one or the other, right? So, uh, either way, let's go to the next video and actually start building something from scratch so that we get to know Webflow. Little bonus, I guess, is we get to find out how to delete a website because this is all it was for. Okay, was to you know get something up and throw it together. So if you've made something, we're going to delete it. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard, okay, and I'm going to say, here's all my projects. This particular one, I'm going to delete. And you have to be very type in all of that because it's very important because they delete it and you never let it back. Do not copy and paste that because that's cheating. <laughs> all right, so we're cleaned up, ready to start properly in Webflow. I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, uh, we're gonna do our first class project. It's a nice simple one, it's just gonna generate a brief that you can use uh, to follow along with me in this first section of the course. And um, I don't want, well, it's not very fun if we all make the exact same thing. We're gonna have the same structure, but I want everyone to have their own kind of client and brief and colors so that it's unique and that you can use it for your portfolio. Now the class projects are all listed in your exercise files. There's a full uh, PDF called class projects. So you can get to something that looks like this. Okay, and the first one is go to random project generator. Okay, it's something that we made here at Bring Your Own Laptop so that, yeah, we're all unique. So click on Webflow Essentials and all you need to do is type in your town or name or city or whatever it is. Okay, it doesn't have to be the actual place. Just, I don't, <laughs> I don't wanna know where you live. Okay, but what we wanna do is have something unique for everybody so that when you click on this, you get your club. So this one here, use the first one you get, don't cheat. Don't press retry. Okay, I got the idea roundabout appreciation club. There is a roundabout appreciation club, I think in the UK. But everyone will get something different here. Okay, and the brief that we're gonna be following is that I can read it out. <laughs> You've been asked to design a one page website for this club. Okay, this need a simple website. It's gonna be a one pager just to post upcoming events, past events and sponsors. Okay, this is their ideal client. They're in their 60s. They live locally and basically the site is just a way for the club to not be contacted every single time somebody wants to know what time we're meeting on Saturday. Okay, so that's the goal of it. Download a PNG, don't hit retry, okay? So just use the first one you got and if, whatever you do, the internet will break if you hit it three times, okay? Do not hit retry three times. Download it, get ready, and then we can start building it in the next videos. Is that all that's in the class projects? Yes, enter your name, download it. Deliverables, there's nothing for this. Some of the future, class projects, I'll ask you to take screenshots and upload them. For this one, nope, just grab your brief. And optionally, let me know on social media that you're getting started. Use that hashtag, starting Webflow. <laughs> you might have to copy and paste it so that you can see other people getting started. And let me know, you ready? You excited? Is it already too hard? Because I'll check in later on in the course via that same tag and see how you're going. Are you more overwhelmed? Or are you starting to get the hang of it? Let me know. It's cool to see people getting started with my courses. Here's all my socials. Yeah, drop me a line. All right, get your brief and I'll see you in the next video. Hold on to your hats, everyone. We're gonna make this a beautiful design example. Okay, we're gonna make it because we need to learn a couple of things. We need to learn under your layout elements here, uh, the most important ones, container and section. So I'll show you how to do those and I'm gonna introduce you to this guy here, the navigator. He's super useful. All right, design brilliance, here we come. All right, first up, let's make a new site. If you haven't deleted your old one or, yeah, make a new site. Make a blank one to get started. Give it a name. Um, my one, remember, is called Adair Kayaks. Adair Kayak Club. There we go. Create a new site. So remember, this is our designer. We've been given one thing. It's this body. The body is everything you see on the canvas. Okay, currently it's white and there's nothing in it. If I preview my site, this member, this little eyeball, I got nothing. Okay, so click it again to come back out. So we're gonna learn the two kind of most fundamental parts for building a website. 
Okay, we're going to click this little add button and under elements we're going to look at sections and containers. We'll look at the rest of them later on, but these are the two main ones. So the container is generally, okay, this is very general, you have one per website and you stuff it full of different sections. What I mean by that is let's say that I add somewhere down here, I add some typography. If I add it here into my body, okay, it just hangs out. And it's kind of all the way over here on the left and you're like oh i want it to be in the middle like websites are okay so i'm going to undo that using command z on a mac control z on a pc okay so what you need to start with is not uh hitting dump straight into the body what you do is you say actually well why can't i just put a section in you kind of could uh, the problem with the section is well it has the same problem as the header it'll span as far as it's allowed to which is all the way to the edge of the body okay so you don't start with a section Okay, what you do is you start with a container. Okay, and you can see the container, ooh, it's got edges. Okay, so like, um, say, the Sony site here, you know, it's just common now. You can expand to the edges, and I'll show you how to do that later on with a more complex website. But a lot of websites just hang out in the middle here and have this white space. It's just common. <laughs> it's not essential. Um, but remember when websites were on the left? Anyway, so we've got this container. Okay, and it hangs out in the middle, and inside of that container we add our sections. So what are sections? So sections are, let's look at Apple. So our website is broken into kind of unique sections. It's kind of a way of delineating information. You know, this is a navigation. It is a, the section called navigation. This is a section called charity. I'm guessing these. This is a section called MacBook Air, iPhone 3. 13. <laughs> okay, so these are different sections. Scroll to the bottom, there's a footer. Same with Sony. They've got a nav, they've got this carousel, they've got this, I don't want to call this, different business units, okay? And down the bottom, a latest news and a footer. Okay, so those are different sections. So that's what you have uh, in Webflow. You'll end up with quite a few sections. So let's look at our kind of preview. So this is what we're building, right? Yours is gonna look different, but there's a nav, there's what's called a hero section, there's gonna be a sponsor section, a new event section, and then a past events. Within there, you can break it up. I'll show you how to do that using a grid. Okay, but you just have some like big things called sections. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the navigation and just build the hero section. Uh, it's just easier to learn the hero section and we'll do the nav a little later. So what did I do? I clicked on plus, I'm gonna undo that. So clicked on plus, and I drag my section into my container. You can kind of see where you drag it. If I drag it there, it's going to be underneath my container. Bad. So I'm going to undo. And I'm going to drag my section inside the container. The, remember, the section just kind of spread out as far as it could. But because it's inside the container, hey, it gets trapped in there. Let's have a preview. <laughs> Nothing much going on. Uh, let's have a look at adding something inside that section. So let's go plus and let's add our heading. So grab the heading down here, click hold, drag, drag, drag. And remember, you can kind of squeeze it in the section or underneath the section in the container or just out here in the body. It's not what I want. If you get it in the wrong place, you can just click hold and drag it and say, actually, go in there. There you go. So we've got our heading inside of our section. Let's add, well, we could keep adding different sections. We're just going to leave one at the moment, the one we're calling hero, because I want to introduce you to something, two things. Uh, I've got my heading selected, so have your heading selected as well. Down the bottom here, can you see I have a heading that happens to be inside of a section that's inside of a container that's inside of my body. We are web designing, everybody. Okay, so these are the breadcrumbs kind of showing you where you are in the world, which can be handy. Say you want to select the container now, and you're like, I keep hitting the heading. You can say, actually, I want to click the container and give the container a background color, which is down here somewhere. Okay, backgrounds. So you could do that. They, these are handy. The other thing, and the, probably the thing you'll use the most, or at least I do, is I'm going to click on heading, is this thing here called the navigator. The navigator shows you similar to the breadcrumbs at the bottom, but it's got all this indentation, which is really useful. So my heading happens to be inside of a section, inside of my container, which is inside of the body. You will have one body 100% of the time you will most likely have one container and you'll have lots of different sections and lots of different headings the navigator is handy for moving things around let's say I want to add another heading or say a paragraph and I add it here and I'm like here you go but it ended up in the body and you're like huh <laughs> you could drag it and try and get it under the heading 
and it works. Is it? Uh, did it work? I'm gonna undo. Let's say you can't do it. Okay, the navigator is really good for this. You can say, here he is. He's hanging out, kind of not in the right place. He's underneath the container. Okay, so you can say, actually, I want him up next to, you know, just underneath this heading. So you go drag him up, move him around. There we go. He's right underneath. He's inside the section, uh, hanging out with the heading. You can change the order. Watch this. You above there. There we go. So it's kind of a nice way of working kind of more with the code than it is the visual. The visual's great for loads of things. Sometimes it can be tricky though. That's why I introduced you to the navigator. Let's style this section just a little bit before we move on and look at styles properly. So you could, like I want the background, let's look at our preview. I want the background for this chunk here to have an image in it. I will do the image a little bit later on. For the moment, let's just fill it with a dark color so we can see the text. So this, you know, do I color the paragraph? You could, you could say paragraph here, I would like to have, scroll, so you should be at your styles option here. It's the kind of default one, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I'm using my mouse wheel, you can drag that. <laughs> You're in charge of figuring out how to go up and down this thing. Okay, I use my little scroll wheel, you can drag the little slider at the side. So there it is there, backgrounds. I can say you, P tag, or paragraph tag, have a dark background. You're like, hmm, then you have to do it to the heading. Okay, so you want to often with kind of like large styles like this. Okay, I'm gonna undo, which is Command Z on a Mac, Control C on a PC. You would like to do it to the, probably the section. I know that this heading thing here is a whole section that I want to be dark. So how do I select the, hands up, hands up, how do I select the section? Okay, you know, there's two ways. Down here I can say you, section. Okay, remember the breadcrumbs? I clicked inside of it first, so it kind of knows where in the world you are. Okay, so I'm paragraph. And then I want the section to have a background color. There you go, so backgrounds, transparent. I'm just gonna use a dark gray for the moment and we'll change it later on to an image. There you go, you styled your section. You have just created the first bit of CSS. You didn't even know it. So we use the breadcrumbs to select it. You could, maybe if I click on my paragraph again, you're like, hey, the background color's gone. How do I click the section? The navigator panel's probably what I use the most. Okay, and you can say, not paragraph, click on him. There you go, there's my color, which I can then click. And with this color picker here, if you're not used to them, you just kind of click anywhere in here once. I click and drag often, you don't have to, but just kind of find a color, okay? And to pick a different color, you can drag this hue slider, okay, if you want a dark blue. If you want a green, drag the slider to green and then kind of pick within the shades and the saturation of the green. But I'm gonna go all the way over here, and just pick a washed out gray. And then kind of just click off into here and we're done. All right, that is it. We've added a container, kind of keeps us from the edges and inside our first section. We're gonna add multiple sections to our one container and body is there to rule everybody. Sit in the background, keeping everybody in the right place. All right, that's it. Basic structure, containers, sections. Let's get on to the next video. Hi everyone, this video is learning all about what classes are, CSS classes in Webflow. How do we style things? It's a long one because it's a relatively important topic that is quite foreign to people new to web design. If you already know what a CSS class is, probably watch it anyway. There's some uh, Webflow quirks that we need to get a hold of before we can move on with the course. All right, let's go. So what is a class? A class, a CSS class, the long version, is a way of styling the elements on the page. Gives them color and style and padding and what font to use. Okay, so we drag these kind of like block level elements onto the page, just these kind of like things, we just lump them on and then we wanna style them, we select them and over here, change the style. We did it to the background of the gray before. So let's do another one. Let's click on our heading, okay? And let's have a little look at our, um, the design we're following. Remember you can pick whatever you want along on your own one. Let's go and style it. So I've got my heading selected. Now the right way to do it is to go in here and say, okay, I've got my heading selected. Uh, I'm going to click in here and give it a name. So I'm gonna say this is my, this is gonna be Dan's heading. So I give it a name. You can see over here it's applied to it. Then I'm gonna go style it. I'm gonna say down here in typography, scroll down. Okay, there's my color. I'm gonna say, click on the little thing there and say actually I want white. To get white, okay, it doesn't really matter what hue you're in, as long as you click hold and drag, 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 kind of like all the way to that corner and kind of past it a little bit. Or you can type in FFF 
FF. <laughs> that is the code for white in web hexadecimal language. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard. I'm not, I'm just gonna click out. <laughs> okay, and we've styled that heading uh, white. Okay, so if I click on it, it's got uh, a CSS class that I named dance heading, okay, and it tells things to be white. I can reuse it, okay? I could call, I could say actually this, paragraph here that I added. You are also, if I click in here, I can say, oh, look, here's all my other ones that I've made, my existing classes that made called dance heading. There you go. Dance heading doesn't really do anything. All it does is makes things white. This is the only job in the world. So dance heading, if I'm going to use it like this, might be better called white text. Okay, and I can just apply it to different things. So you have now created your first CSS class, okay, called heading or dance heading in my case. So selecting something and purposely adding a class is what you want to do. But Webflow knows that people just hack around and, you know, do it. And what they do is they actually make classes for you. We've already made one. We've already made our first CSS. This is like your second CSS style. So remember when we had our section, the background. So how do I click the section? Remember, okay, you can either do it down here. Okay, we'll click inside first and say, actually not the heading on the section. Click on that. Okay, or remember you can go to your navigator and click on in there. The section has a style. Okay, how did it get its style? Can you see there? That got automatically named for us. That little blue thing, that wasn't there before. The site wasn't born with it. It was just added when you started trying to change the color and you forgot to name it. So it says, oh, I'll just name it for you. So you will end up with lots of that, especially when you're new. So let me show you an example. Uh, don't follow along. So I'm gonna add a new section. So section, I'm gonna drag it off, try and get it in the right place. Whoop, that didn't work. Okay, undo, undo, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go section. You can't put one inside of each other. It's against the rules of the internet, or at least the rules of Webflow. Okay, so it says, so it says section elements cannot be nested inside of each other. So I agree, I'm gonna put it down here somewhere. Where? You can see that it says body at the top there. You can get a bit higher. It's inside the container, which is kind of where I want it. Inside the container, not inside this other section, because it won't let me. So kind of get it in the right spot. Even if you don't get it in the right spot, I want to show you something. Actually, no, let's finish this example. So I'm going to get in the right place, and I'm going to style it. And in my little um, mock-up here, you can see this white background. So, oh, cool. I'm going to do white background. Well, white's not going to be that helpful uh, at the moment. Let's pick any old background. So over here, um, what I want you to do, I'm going to change the background. Watch this. Okay, watch this bit up here. I'm going to say, oh, let's, can we scroll it up so it's closer? It is. So watch there. I'm going to say you're going to have a background color of really bright red. Can you see? It said, hey, you didn't give it a name, so I'm going to name it for you, section two. Okay, when you're new, you'll end up with section 42, okay, which isn't very helpful. So what you want to do is be a bit more purposeful. So I'm going to undo it. I want you to see if you can add your section, give it a go, and then let's give it a name before we style it. Okay, I'm gonna call it section. I'm gonna use title case here. It doesn't matter what you name your CSS classes. Okay, you can give them any old name. I think they have to start with a letter, not a number. That is important. This is gonna be section, and this is going to be my sponsors. So later on, I can find it easily. And I'm gonna now pick a really interesting color. Wrong color, where we want? Backgrounds, here we go. Click in here for color. I wanna drag around until I get something. I'm just gonna use kind of a, another gray for the moment. Okay, so I'm being a bit more purposeful now. I've created a style, applied it to the section called sponsors. And you'd be like, well, what do we do with the one we already made? So we're gonna select it. So we're gonna click in here and we're gonna do something. Well, let's click on it down here and say, I want the section selected. Okay, instead of it called section, cause that's not a very good name. You can just right click on it. No, you can't. <laughs> you can just double click on it and say section. And this one's called my hero. Okay, so now I've got a hero section and I've got a sponsor section. There we go. After a while, you get in the habit of making names first, but for the beginning, you'll end up making them and naming them afterwards, and that's totally okay. Now, next thing to know about CSS classes is that it is more often, it's useful to style the section or the thing that it's in rather than the elements itself. We styled, remember, we used Dan's heading, okay, and we put it on both of these. Okay, and that's fine, you can keep doing that. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's probably better. Let's get rid of it. So how do we remove a tag? Okay, over here, drop down, there's one that says just remove that one. And I'm gonna remove it from here as well. Remove that class. So it's gone, okay? What, it's easier, instead of kind of creating a class and doing it to both of them, you say, actually, I want everything in my section for hero to have typography down here that is white 
it's not really you don't have to do it that way but you see it's easier it's easier to style the um, container that it's in than the individual elements often okay same with the padding let's look at our example okay there's a big push off this side so i could go heading if i don't give it a name and i add some um uh let's say some padding on the left hand side here by clicking holding and dragging can you see it instantly made something called heading and if i make another one it's going to be heading two three four five six seventy four so i don't want to do it that way so i'm going to get rid of it remove this class so i could name it and then add the padding which is slightly better but actually it's easier just go i want the section okay so i'm clicking on my hero section i'm going to say i want padding for everything in there click hold and drag it here we go and everything comes along for all right same with the top i want padding from the top too this one's a little tricky <laughs> you drag it the way you want it to push okay so i'm going to undo that so there i wanted the number to go up so i dragged it up nope you want to drag it down there we go how much padding do i want um we're just going to guess it for the moment i'm going to kind of look back here and say oh yeah something about there that looks good want some padding at the bottom how much padding is down here about the same as the top so i'm going to say you're 23 so i'm going to click the bottom and say 23. now i have some problems with numbers i realize uh, i said 23 it's 53. one of my weird quirks you'll probably see it again in the course my eyes my brain my mouth they don't sometimes coordinate so anyway we've very purposely made our section we've given it a background color Okay, where is it? Background color. I'm scrolling down. There it is there. And we've said everything inside of here is got a text color of white and some padding going around. Probably some padding on this side as well. Drag it the way you want it to go. Here we go. So look at the example. Kind of that far. Actually, it doesn't really need that. I'll, I want that paragraph to come in a little bit there, but I want it different over here. So now this is a really good example where actually if I make the padding for everything, where I want the paragraph text, let's say, let's go you, let's go all the way across, here we go. The heading is not gonna be long enough. There you go. So this is where actually the padding for the container is not that useful. So what you can say is go you, actually I'm gonna turn the padding down, actually I'm just gonna turn it off for the section. So you, to turn it off, there's a couple of ways. You can just hit zero, is kind of working, okay. So removing something, can you see it's blue? And this one's not blue, okay? Blue means I've made it be zero. I've said be zero. This is grayed out because it's like, oh, I'm just guessing, I'm doing whatever. It's not set to zero, it just happens to be zero. I'm being very specific here. So what you can do is you can hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC and click something. You see it went gray? It just kind of says, I'm not saying be zero, just be whatever your default is, just go about your day. And now what I wanna do is I wanna say this paragraph text here, I'm going to say you're my paragraph. I'm going to just use the word, I'm going to use the letter P. Okay, then a space, because I'm going to probably have more paragraph text in my whole document. So I'm just going to say paragraph for the hero. Okay, a little special class that we're going to make. Okay, create it. You can either hit enter or click this. I want this to have some padding over here, which is different from the kind of section. And what happened there? Why isn't it kind of listening to the section? The section's kind of like a parent, okay? He's saying, all right, do these things. The children inside of here can override them. It's called specificity. We'll talk about it. It's more specific. So this paragraph text is getting some vague instructions from high above. If he gets some more specific instructions, he will override and say, I hear you, but I want to do this other thing. So get the generic stuff into the kind of outside wrapper, which in our case is something called section hero. And then if you want to do little more specific things inside, give them their own class name. And in our case, we're just doing padding. Now, class naming gives everybody anxiety. And even if you're the best, most diligent, I'm pointing at myself, you can't see that, but I'm kind of diligent and I like all this stuff and I understand it all. Uh, you always end up with hitting 17. Okay, maybe not that bad. You'll end up with classes that you, you know, you start off with best intentions and you end up making it work, but maybe not as, I don't know, uh, as organized as you'd hoped, but you will get better. And in this course, you'll notice that there is kind of three sections for CSS. Just introducing a little bit now, enough to get us going. And then later on, we'll do a level two and a level three. And we'll be hardcore CSS coders by the end. Speaking of code, let's have a quick look. Two things I wanna do. I wanna see the code and the navigator panel. Uh, let's do the navigator panel because it's quick and um, there's a lot of like clicking on this and then figuring say i want to drag this into the next section i can probably do it because it's not that hard oh very good point i got three things to tell you <laughs> the first one is the navigator panel 
is just handy when it's always out. So it means when you're doing stuff in the navigator panel and you're like, okay, I wanna drag this in. You see, it doesn't go away, it stays there all the time. And it's easy to actually drag straight into this. You can say I want a heading inside of the section rather than trying to drag it on the page. You can do it, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm gonna undo. So the navigator panel, if you go to it, okay, because otherwise it automatically closes and it's super handy to be open all the time. So do that with me, you'll get used to it. Okay, and this option up here that says pin the navigator, don't close. There was two things. What were the other two? You wait there. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, so let's have a look, because we I said you've been writing code. Have you been writing code? How do you know? Uh, you can go up here and there's an option that says export code. Okay, you can click on it. Um, to export everything, you need a paid account. Okay, but you can see a chunk of it in here. It's loading the code. Come on, code loading. I'm not sure, mine normally always loads. Let's close it down and try it again. Nope, yes, okay. So what code have we written? We've written some HTML, some CSS, and some JavaScript. HTML, so we've added, we knew there was a body tag. Look at that, that's what it is. So if you're doing my, I've got a like a web design essentials, we'd be writing this code and saying body. Inside is a div class called container. Inside of that is something called section, okay? And you have, uh, so that's, you, we are writing code and it is nice and pretty and well laid out. It's easy to read, but we're just doing it in a kind of a more visual way. You never have to look at this side. It's just interesting. I think it is anyway. So divs are just generic containers, divisions, divider tags. Okay, and we've got one called container that keeps ours in the middle. Okay, and we've got a section and we gave it a class name of section hero. We've got another section here. We gave a class name. Okay, so div class of section sponsors. So this is in the HTML. We've kind of said, here's a box, it's called section sponsors. Over here in my CSS, we've styled it. We've said, okay, where is my section sponsors? There it is there. And this is what I want you to style it. This is the CSS class you've made. Okay, and this class is called CSS, uh, section sponsors, and that's the background color, that's all we've done. We've done a bit more to the section called hero. We added some padding and background color and the color of the font. Remember Dan's heading in there, we don't need any more, but it's set the color to FFF, which is white and some random heading one we made. Okay, so we are writing HTML, CSS, and the JavaScript, we're not really touching at the moment there, but it is getting produced for us. Cool, huh? You're a coder. That's why it's like no code coding. The other thing I'll mention while we're in here, can you see class names have, if you were doing my other web design course, okay, we use VS Code, you'd actually have to know that a class name starts with a period and then has to write, it has to be lowercase, you can't have spaces, all these sorts of things. Whereas Webflow kind of says, we don't want to teach people that. You type anything in there and we'll convert it f to you to the right kind of syntax, which is there's no spaces, so they just put in hyphens where I put in spaces and they made it all lowercase automatically for us. We never have to come in here. I think it's useful. Anyway, have a look at your code, see what you made. Now, I said there was only two things and then there was one thing, this. <laughs> you saw it, I ignored it. So it's a good example, okay, is that this thing here is being told a couple of things. It's being told to be this paragraph here that I named, okay? And what does that tell us to do? It tells us that it wants, the only thing it's telling us to be is, we only said be, what was it, padding. That's the only thing we did to this thing. Everything else that makes it white, okay, that pushes it from the side is, comes from, where does that come from? That's right, it comes from the section. The section says be, this from the top, this from the side, and be a text color of white. He says blue when things are done and everything's white or gray when you haven't said to do anything. We'll discuss what um, the amber color is later on. But so this tag here, this paragraph text is getting some commands from, it's getting one specific command connected to it saying be padding on this side. So when I drag it over here, that's the only thing that comes along with it is this thing here, because everything else that makes it white and pushes it down from the left, uh, you know, from the top and the left, is coming from this fella, okay, from this section hero. So that's an interesting thing to understand. Does it help or make it more confusing this early on? Now why don't we just apply it to everything so that when you drag it down here, it's white and padded over. You can do that, it's just very repetitive. Especially if I then, say I'm making a, say it's a blog site and I've got, my blog's probably only got four posts because <laughs> that's as far as I get before I lose interest. Uh, but I love making videos though. And um, But let's say you are an avid blog writer or your client is and you make a thousand pages and you've applied one to every single bit of paragraph text and they say, can you make the font bigger? You can say, no, 
because you're gonna have to find every single one, click on them and go and change them all, okay, to some other style. And whereas if you just do it to the kind of containers, it's relatively easy because everything inside comes for the right. You say, actually, I want the text now to be, you know, awful red contrast, easy. And if there was a thousand bits of text in this um, section, it might be like the article section or the blog post section. Everything comes along for the right. All right, that was a long one, but it's uh, pretty fundamental to the rest of this course, understanding classes, how they apply, and a little bit of specificity. Remember, specificity is a hard word to say, okay? And it's a way of saying, I'm gonna be really specific for this bit, but everything else is just generic. Follow me, unless I tell you to do otherwise. All right, that is it. On to the next video. Hi there. Hey, a little interlude. I just wanna check on you, see how you're doing, uh, and to see if you're enjoying the video, maybe give it a like. Uh, also subscribe to the channel. And I also want to see if I could upsell you to the full course. Okay, so what you've been doing now is just a small part of the larger course. And what you're seeing in front of you here is what's in the full course. Look at it all. Look how fun it is. So if you do want to upgrade yourself in Webflow, there is a card link in the corner or a link in the description to the course. It's called Webflow Essentials. For now though, enjoy the rest of the video and I might see you in the full course. Hi everyone, this video I'm going to show you how to bring in an image, we're going to look at the asset panel and we'll look at adding a class to it and experimenting with the differences between margin and padding. All right, let's get into it. Oh, and I'll also show you where to get free commercial use images for your project. It's a bonus. All right, now let's get into it. Okay, first up, get your image. Um, whatever club you're doing it for, um, you can go to something like unsplash.com. Unsplash is just a great uh, commercial use free images. Okay, it's pretty amazing. Um, I'm gonna click in here and type in juggling. Let's, do, I'm just assuming your, your club is juggling. Okay, and find any of these images down here. Okay, and hit this little option here, it says download. So find something for your club, yours might be, I don't know, sewing or cat juggling, whatever it is. Find your image, download it and get ready. So I've already got my image, it's in the exercise files. So first thing is we need to add an image. Okay, so add this first little tab here. Okay, and down the bottom here, there's one called media, and there's image. Click, hold, and drag him, and just kind of plop him in where he needs to go. You can put it above, it's a little blue line. Okay, got an image. Let's go to choose image. Okay, this little setting pops out, okay, and you get to kind of do some basic stuff. I'm gonna use choose image, and what it did, it opened this tab over here, your assets tab. So we've been on the like add tab and the navigator, but now we've got this assets tab. This is where we keep all our images. You can either upload your image, or go you know, do this and go to browse and go find it. What I find super useful is just to drag it in there. And um, so where's my exercise files? So here's mine. I'm in the uh, club event site and I've got one image in here. And it, it's really cool because if you've got 20 of them, you just click and drag them in. Here we go. Here's my image. It's uploaded. Okay. And now what I can do is because I've got the selected, if I click on that, it just kind of throws it in there. Okay. So my little placeholder selected, just clicked on it and it just kind of injected itself in there. Nice. It's way too big. You can just grab the edge of it. See this like little anchor point down here. Click, hold, drag. Don't have to hold anything down. Just drag it up and it will resize. I want mine kind of that sort of size. I'm looking at my mock up that I did. Yeah, something like that. There we go. So in terms of image settings, you can be a bit more manual and you can get to the settings from it, you know, because at the moment dragging it's fine. You can kind of see the numbers there, but say it needs to be, you know, 250 exactly. You can either go to this little cog here, image settings, or there's actually a tab over here. So I'm going to close that down, I'm actually close it down. The same thing appears. See this cog here? They're the same thing. Two different ways of getting to the same thing. That cog, this cog. The difference between this cog, it has a bit more settings, a little bit more advanced. So um, the basics though, replace image here and we can type in this size. So I'm gonna say, and um, this needs to be 250 and I'll leave the height to auto. Okay, if I type in the height, let's say I make it 20 pixels, you can see it squishes it. So you wanna leave it as auto by deleting it. So there's nothing in there. There we go. Well, <laughs> 250. Here we go. All right, we'll talk more about images later on, but that is it for the moment. Uh, I promise we'll talk about padding versus margin. Okay, uh, so I wanna add a bit of space between my paragraphs, all very tight. So what I wanna do is add a, a CSS class. Okay, and how do we do that? I have it selected. Okay, I could just go to styles and start dragging stuff. The, what's gonna be the problem? That's right, it's gonna automatically create me a, a class, okay, that I, I can rename later on, which is fine. Okay, but what I wanna do is be special and say, I wanna go image, 
Okay, and this one's going to be called uh, capital I. Uh, it doesn't have to be. I just no, it's a tick I have. So image hero. So I put it backwards because there's going to be an image that's going to be maybe in the footer or in the sponsor section. So I always put image first and then the other thing second, just so that it's easier to find later on. All my image styles are together rather than you know hero at the front. There we go. So I'm going to do that. Hit enter on my keyboard. Okay, and I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to add some padding or margin. Now, with an image, padding and margin doesn't matter. So I'm going to drag it down this top one. So I've got a bit of space there. Nice. You'll notice that if I undo that, okay, to undo it, you hold down the option on a Mac or on a PC and click it, okay, and it will get rid of it. You, you'll notice margin if I drag that up, okay, it doesn't visually look like it do anything else, okay. So padding and margin front image is pretty much you don't have to worry about. You can do either. Okay, where it gets different is, let's say this section here. So I'm just clicking in this area here. We did padding before, okay? Let's say I want more, but I'm just gonna use margin because it doesn't matter, Dan said. But for a section, look at this. If I drag the margin down, okay, or up, you can see the difference between margin and padding. Padding is the internal bounds of what's considered the section, and the margin kind of pushes it away from its next element. Okay, so it adds space between them. Even though, let's say, if I do it to this P tag, it's still doing the same. It's gonna either open up, um, padding's gonna push it from the inside of the P tag, and the margin's gonna push the outside of the P tag kind of away from the next element. It's gonna look the same, watch this. So if I drag this up, I get some space. If I undo it, if I use padding, drag it down. This is weird, right, you drag it up, that drown. Internal padding, you can kind of see on these boxes, this is the inside, that's the outside. But what you can see is there's actually the same thing. Like, you know, it, it, if I click off, it's got the same amount of space whether I use margin or padding. So it doesn't really matter here, okay, or with an image, but some things do. Like this, I want you to have some space at the top, okay, or some padding on the inside. You get the idea? We'll do it a few more times here, but in this case, if you are looking for a rule, okay, it's better for this case to use margins than padding because you can kind of see there's boxes all the way up here. There's nothing really wrong with that. I'm gonna remember optional alt click it. It's better to kind of push it away with margin. So the P tag kind of is separate from this bit here. There's a gap in the between. It makes more sense later on when we make things clickable. If I want this to be clickable, I don't want like maybe all of this clickable as well. I just want the P tag to be clickable. Here we go. So I am going to, what have I done? I'm gonna undo that what I'm doing. So Command Z or Control Z on a PC. And I've got some, in this case, margin at the top of my image. I've added a class called Image Hero. We've added an image and it's awesome. We can get to the settings by clicking on this or with it selected, going over to here. Same, same, but with some extra stuff. All right, images importing into Webflow. Hi everyone, this video I'm gonna show you how to add a background image that kind of fills it so the text can go on top. I'll also show you how to darken the image so that you can have text over the top that's legible. All right, let's get going. All right, to add the background image, you need to first pick a background image. Okay, so again, if you want a free image for your background, for your particular club that you're building, go to unsplash.com and type in and find something. It's better if it's got a dark background. Well, it doesn't have to be. If you're gonna have a light background like this, you're probably gonna have to have dark text on it. And um, I looked for something for me that had a dark background. Like this would be good because the text will appear nicely on it. Okay, so to add your uh, background image, okay, it's best to add it to the assets first. Okay, so I'm going to go to my assets tab here. Okay, and you either hit the upload to upload it or do what I do, find it. And image two here, I'm going to just drag in. It's going to upload itself up there. It's a really big file. I'll show you how to kind of get these smaller later on, but nice big file. And what we're going to do is we add the background graphic, not as like its own unit. It's not like an image that we push behind everything like in other design programs. What we do is this section here, this helpful little section, okay, that we named Hero. We're gonna say you have a background. We've done background before. Look, down here is a background color of gray. Actually, what I want is, can you see it says image and gradient? See this plus here, background. I wanna add R in image, which is cool, or gradient, okay, if you wanna do that. And where it says image, it says choose image. I'm gonna click that. It bumps open the assets panel, and you're gonna say this one, please. You're gonna give it a sec and it's gonna be massive. Yours might be small, depends on the size. Okay, so to start with, mine's on custom, okay, which means really it's the height and width that it was 
you know, that I downloaded it. It's massive. The one you probably want is cover. Okay, there's custom, which you can type in any old size. You can say, I want it to be, you know, uh, 30 pixels by 30 pixels. Okay, you could do that. It's very common though, just to go to cover. And what cover does is actually, it stretches the image to fit whatever the size of the section is. So if I decide that I'm gonna add two P tags, watch this, if I copy this P tag by Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC, and then paste it, Command or Control V. Can you see that? I am add extra, but this background goes, I'm bigger, so I'm gonna show more. And I paste it again, look at that. It just keeps filling the background, it covers it. I can't see any of this side of the image now, which is a bit of a pain. You might be like, hmm, you know, the central part of this design is this lovely river. I want it to be in the middle. And you can do some changes to it. So remember, have your section selected because that's where the background is applied. And over here in background, I'm gonna click on my image, okay? And you've got some options. So you can say, can you see position? It's saying, I'm gonna start at the top left and spread out. You could say, actually, just go from the middle. So when it does resize, it's gonna have the center of the image in the middle. Let's delete this. So now a little bit of the bottom is gone, a little bit of the top, a little bit of the sides, or quite a lot of the sides. So that's the kind of trade-off. And you'd be like, hey, I want it to be pixel perfect. This image is perfect, it's a product shot, it needs to work perfectly. Now, the trouble with being like that for web design is the amount of devices that you need to show it on. Um, so responsive design is a term used for showing on at the moment desktop. And check out this one here. What does this look like on a tablet? Okay. It's a whole different size. The format's different. So the content resizes and readjusts to you know adapt to that size. Um, so does the image. So if you get it perfect on desktop, it's not gonna look perfect on tablet, okay? You're not gonna be able to see every single pixel and get it framed perfectly. Um, unlike kind of print design where you can be really perfect, you need to be you need to be 90% good <laughs> for web design, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, get down to here. Look, it only shows a tiny bit of it. Okay, I'll show you how to fix all these different breakpoints as we go along, but it's just something to be careful of when you are designing things, um, especially background images. Cover's good because it adapts for all these different device sizes. And we're only designing for like a generic desktop. You've seen how many laptops and big screens and little screens are out there. There's just so many that your site needs to be responsive to them all. So let's click on our hero section again and look at a couple of other things before we go. So I'm gonna click on my image again. So cover constrain is more like it will show the image completely. The the rock down the bottom here, it will squeeze it into the spice provided. Okay, if I make it on mobile now, it will squeeze in and then tile. I don't use it very much. Okay, if you don't like the tiling, you can turn the tiling off. So constrain, so it's the, you know, it fits everything in the window and you can say, actually, I want it to not tile. So tile forever, you can tile it left and right, tile it up and down, no tiling. But it's not what I want, I want it to cover. Thank you, Cover. All right, the next thing I wanna do is darken it. The moment it's a bit light, you can darken your images um, with CSS, with these styles, okay? You could go to Photoshop or Figma or XD or Illustrator, whatever you're using to design, Canva, whatever it is, Microsoft Paint. <laughs> you can definitely not darken it in Microsoft Paint. Um, but we need to darken it, so there's a little trick you can do. I'll show you. So we've got a uh, image on our background. You can actually have more than one thing on the background. So at the moment we've got an image in the background, but let's have another thing. That's, that's why there's a plus. You can say, I wanna add another one. What do you wanna add? I wanna add, not an image, because I already got one of those, not a gradient or a linear gradient, not a radial one, I want this one. I want a solid color, please. Okay, and that solid color is going to be, I'm gonna click on it. And I'm not sure if this remembers it from last time I did it or if this is the default. But anyway, I wanna pick a dark color. Okay, it might be a tinted black. What I'm gonna do is drag it right into the corner here. Okay, black, zero, 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 zero is the um, CSS color for black. FFF, FFF was white, remember? Okay, and what we can do is we can use this one called alpha. Okay, at the moment it's 50%, that's the slider. Transparency, they call it alpha on web design, to be fancy. Okay, but we know it as opacity or transparency. Okay, you can decide on how opaque versus how transparent it is. So I'm gonna find something where I can read my text because we want a nice good contrast between the text and the background. All right, it's good enough for me. I'm gonna click off. And if you're like, that didn't work for me, what might have happened is, I'm gonna click on my section again, is can you see there's actually a layer ordered here? Your one might be underneath, it might be on the top. You want it to be on the top really with a bit of transparency and the image on below. There you go. Well, one last thing I made a note here to show you is I've been using the undo, command Z. I went straight to the shortcuts. Here's a manual way, look, undo, redo. Okay, if you do 
close down Webflow and come back to it, those undos have gone. Okay, but you can undo redo using the buttons. All right, that is it. On to the next video. Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at adding a button and getting it to go somewhere. We'll also add this kind of hover color here, plus a few things related to a button. If you came here just for the rollover color, have it selected and it's in here. This little drop down, go to hover and style that. Okay, that, pick a background, different background color and you'll be adding the hover. <laughs> I know the title of this video uh, promises rollover color, um, but I ended up doing it about five minutes in. So there you go, that's the cheat code. Uh, for the rest of us who wanna learn all about buttons, let's carry on. All right, adding a button, easy. Go to add and down here, there's one called button under basic, okay? And click, hold and drag it. And it's gonna kinda not go underneath, it's gonna wanna go to the side of our image. Okay, it'll go underneath this text, uh, you know, paragraph text, but let's see why. I'm gonna go after this button. Okay, you'll see in my navigator panel here, remember if you haven't got it stuck, go to navigator, stick it to the edge, super handy. You can see he's in the section box and he is what's called a sibling, okay, because he's in with his other siblings. He's all amongst these guys, are all kind of in this section. He's the parent. These are children and also siblings to these guys. Anyway, some language there for you. But he's not underneath. Why is he not underneath? Okay, it's because this image is doing something a little weird. So this heading tag here, we've got a paragraph text. Okay, can you see when I hover above it, can you see it stretches on for infinity? Okay, it's called a block level element. And what happens is, unless you tell it to be a width, it goes, I'm going all as far as I can to the edge. Same with the paragraph text. It goes, I'm going all the way over here and I'm filling it. Nobody else can be up here. That's the default for it, okay? An image, can you see here? He's not racing off to the edges. He's saying, I'm here. He's what's called inline. So block level, inline. Okay, we just need to change him. So here, this fella is this option here. So we're gonna cover layout in more detail as we go along, but let's do this one now. So with it selected, I'm in my styles. I'm gonna, this first option here says layout. He, his display setting is set to something called inline. Okay, inline just means he's in line. This guy's in line as well. Can you see? He's in line. Let's look at the difference between this one. Oh, look at that. His display and he is set to block. Okay, and he will fill up. You can even see. Thank you, Webflow. It says he will fill up all the available width. Whereas this fella, okay, he won't. Okay, he goes stack next to each other. So buttons are really good when they're in line because if I want lots of buttons, kind of like in this nav in the top that we don't have yet, that's really good. And there's image, sometimes you want images stacking next to each other. But in this case, we don't. We want to say you, my friend, is actually, go to this one here. Look at that. He says, nobody can be next to me. Not friendly at all. <laughs> the button, though, gets pushed down and squeezed down. All right. Uh, so our button's on its own little bit. Let's go and do some changing. So this one's going to be called event details. Okay. Uh, let's look at some styling. So you can select it all in here. I can do bold and stuff in this. And um, what I want to do is with it selected, I'm going to show you advanced typography. So under typography, okay, there's one in here that says, we're going to that type, more type options. Ready? There's one in here that says make caps. Not sure why I took you there. Anyway, we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just type in capitals, save yourself some time. All right, let's style it. Okay, now uh, what will happen if I go and do, well actually I've already styled it. I did, didn't I? I made it all caps. Ooh, what happened? You saw it. A style was created called button. I didn't make it. It wasn't there when I first dragged it out. Watch this, if I drag out a button now by itself, okay, you see there, he has no class applied. Okay, but when I went and added that style, pretending to do it on purpose, <laughs> <laughs> but forgetting to name it, because we all do, it created this thing called button. And that could be confusing when you're new, and you're like, oh, is that something already made? Like, is that special? Nope, you made that <laughs> by accident. So let's call this one button, and we're gonna call this one hero. Okay, just because it's in the hero box, I'm gonna do some styling that I'm not gonna use anywhere else on the website, just in this hero box. So that's why I call it button hero. You might end up a button nav, or button footer, button contact page. Okay, so we've got that, hit enter. And I'm gonna do some styling. I'm gonna pick a color. So under backgrounds for this button, I'm gonna pick just a kind of a green from my design. You can pick any colors you like. Okay, and what else do I wanna do? I'm gonna pick some typography. Arial's fine. We're gonna use the new Arial. Open Sans is a really pretty, pretty, pretty is the wrong word for it. It is a very sensible um, body copy font. Really legible, free to use, and I like it. But I'm gonna go to bold. Size-wise, yeah. 14 pixels looks fine for me. 
The only th other thing I want to do is I want to add rounded corners. So now this panel here, I want to give you a little tip on using this styles panel. It is big and confusing. Not big and confusing. It's just lots. You're like, where is everything? You scroll down and you eventually find it. What I like to do, you might not like, is you can see these little arrows here. You can actually just click these to make them smaller and just open the one you want. Look at that. Oh, you're like, okay, so I want to do what? The borders. Excellent. Just open that up, work on it, close it back up. I don't know. Feels a bit more mm, free to me. Uh, another cool trick is with them, you can hold down the option key on a Mac. Alt key on a PC, so hold that down and then click any one of them and they they all open, okay? And they hold down that same key, and they all close. And see these little blue dots? That shows you that somewhere in here you've made a change. You've made no changes to border, so there's nothing going on. So button hero, uh, nothing, you've changed none of these, you've done some typography, you remember what it was? That's right, we've made it all caps and we've done some background. Okay, so if I do borders now and I say actually I want the border radius to be something, I'm dragging it here, I'm watching it over here, Okay, picking something, there you go. Um, now I twirl it down, can you see? Oh, there's a blue dot. Blue dot means I've changed something. We'll do amber later on, it means that mm, something else is applying to it. It's not something you've directly done to it, which is important, but we'll get to that. I know you'll ask. Uh, so yeah, we've got rounded corners. Let's look at padding and margin again. Oh, actually no, let's make it work. <laughs> we've done rounded corners, but we haven't made it link anywhere. So a button has some default things. Now, like before, settings from this cog here, or with it selected, we can go to the cog over here. It doesn't matter. Lots of options, just a few options. Let's use just a few. So by default here, we're gonna use, we we'll use this first one. So when this button is clicked, it's gonna to go to URL. You can pick any URL you like, okay? And um, it's gonna open in our case in another tab. Okay, that just means that when it button's clicked, it's gonna leave this website open, open up a new tab up the top here in the browser and go to that, so both of them are open. If it's an internal link, okay, to another page on your site, okay, or you just want it to replace it, you can turn that off so it will switch out the website to wherever that's going. Okay, let's do that and give it a test. Open a new tab, um, close it down. I'm gonna go to my preview. We haven't done much previewing, have we? Because it's pretty, it's pretty good at showing you exactly what it's going to look like in a browser without you previewing. To preview, it closes down all your panels and gets rid of all this kind of like weird blue lines. Watch this. Weird blue lines gone. And watch this. I can click it. And magic, I've got myself to an amazing website. Okay, uh, so let's go back into here. Turn the eyeball off. Other things that I want to show you to do with the button is actually let's go through these other ones. So you go into a URL. This would be going to like an external website, like, hey, go check out this um, great Webflow tutorial that you should go check out by this <laughs> handsome but hairy dude. Uh, so you could link to that. And another one is you can link to a link on this page. You know, we've only got one page. So if you go, I want to link to a page on this website, ah, oh, I can only go to home because we've only got one page. You can do uh, linking to a section. Ooh, so we're going to do that in a bit. Uh, you know, our one pages, we're going to add navigation to jump around the different sections. It doesn't quite work yet, but we'll do it. You can, when this button's clicked, go to somebody's email. Okay. Or when it's clicked on a mobile device, start ringing. So you can have like a call this number that only works. Well, no, it works in my browser. If I put in a phone number here and click on it, it will try and launch Google voice or something anyway, but on a mobile phone, it'll click and it'll kind of preload the phone. So those are those options. For the moment though, we're just gonna use our any old URL just because it's a placeholder until later on we get to jumping to our sections on our site. So those are the different links. And um, the other thing we might wanna do is change the hover. Because at the moment, you know, uh, you wanna change the uh, hover color. So let's look at that. So with it selected, I'm gonna take you in to some secret place. So we're gonna go to our styles. So at the moment we're looking at button hero. I want to style the hover so when you, you know got your mouse over it, it works. It's hidden in here. With the button selected, Webflow knows that, hey, there's some special things with buttons. Where should we put them? They put them in here at the moment. Have a look around, somewhere in here. Okay, it says, hey, buttons have special things. Here they are. There's the hover, pressed, focused, visited. You can use hover. Okay, and you can see it's added a special class. Green means Figma, oh sorry, Figma. <laughs> Webflow already knows what you're talking about. It's kind of like a pre-written one. There's already a class called Hover. You didn't have to name it. It goes, hey, these are special things that buttons have. We've made them. You can just pick them from the cool drop down. OK, 
Okay, and with it now on, you can say, I want the style for the background to change to something else. Pick another color. Okay, close down and there we go. Let's give it a preview. Okay, if you click off, it'll kind of preview without going to full preview mode. Some of them do. Look at that, we've got a hover. Look at us, CSS superstars. And um, so, yeah, we've got a hover. Anything else I want to show you? Okay, there are, if I have it selected, okay, if I want to go back to hover, because I want to style it, I've got to go back into here, because it go, it defaults once I've clicked off. I, you know, clicked off, click back on. You can see it's gone to button hero, but where did that go? If you want to go and change that color again, go to hover, and there it is. It's all kind of loaded back up, and you can go and change that one. You might decide to do one of the other ones. The other ones don't. They don't, they don't not work, but things like pressed, okay, is when somebody clicks it, what happens, but nobody sees the click. This is my opinion, anyway. Let's make it bright and red, bright and yellow. <laughs> Come on then. Okay, bright and yellow. So let's have a look. Um, you have to go to preview mode to check pressed. Watch this. When you click this, you're going to fly off to another page. But did you see it? You can. It's really quick, but you can see it went yellow. So you can do pressed if you like. Mm. Yeah, nobody's going to see it. <laughs> Focus did something else. Google that. It's kind of to do with tabbing around a website and accessibility. and But uh, kind of out of the scope for this one. Let's have a look what else we've got in there. Focus, visited. If you've gone to that link before, people don't really use that one anymore. Uh, it'll change color if somebody's clicked it once. Remember those old blue links that go purple that you because you've been there before? Not really used for a button, in my opinion. All right, um, cool. And secretly, you made your first combo class, which we'll talk about in a bit. But yeah, that is a button that is styling it. Oh, the other thing is, I'll just check my notes there. Hover. <laughs> is hover going to work on a phone? It is not. You can't hover on your phone. Okay, You can't hover your finger over your um, cell phone's screen and it changed color. So this is a desktop only thing. So yeah. Oh, the other thing we need to do is padding and margin while we're here. So I've got my button selected. I can see that style here. I'm going to go to my spacing. Okay. And do I want padding or margin? You have a think now before I say anything. Is it, bad? Is it padding or margin? If you chose padding, you were wrong. Look, click hold. So I could put padding in there and it moves it down. But obviously padding is on the inside of the box. And margin, click, drag it up. Ooh, look at that. There you go. All right. It was a bumper. We learned buttons, hovers. We showed you the different ways of doing it. I showed you how to close these down. Remember Option or Alt to open them all out. Click one of them. We visited the Comic Sans Appreciation Club and we found the secret ingredients for these buttons here. This is not just buttons. We found stuff in here. You can, other elements within this course and within our Webflow will have this drop down to show you things that are you know, related to that particular um, element. All right, cool. So um, one thing is that if you are following along, I'm going to set a class project for you to submit in a little bit. And basically, it's going to be kind of making sure you're up to where I am. So if you are following and just watching, um, I don't know, it's really good to practice. But also, um, when we do the class project, you'll be kind of mostly done and ready to submit. Um, so yeah, do the exercises while we're going along. It's good. It's a good way to learn. And it'll make the class project just a small little thing to add. Anyway, all right, on to the next video. Hi everyone, we're going to build this navigation along the top here. Okay, we are going to build it together so we understand some of the principles. You'll notice that I didn't end up styling these buttons very much. Why? Because we're actually going to bin this in the end. So do it, follow along with me, build it with me, but don't put too much style into it. Don't spend half an hour, you know, getting the kerning right and the font size perfect because we're going to bin it. We need to know how this thing is created in a simple form so that when we add the kind of uh, easy one from Webflow, we can adjust it knowing what we're doing. So we're going to cover things like float, inline and block elements. So let's get started. OK, to make our menu, we are going to put in first a section. OK, because we've got our hero section, we've got our uh, boring little sponsor section. Let's add another one for our navigation. So section, I'm going to drag it. Remember, I can drag it on the page or I can drag it in here. OK. Up here, can I get in the right place? Probably not. There you go. <laughs> I want it inside the container, so I missed it. You can adjust it afterwards. So see my section here? Actually, I want it inside the container just above the hero. Look at us. All right, I'm going to give it a name. Okay, while I remember. Okay, I'm going to call this one uh, section, and this one's going to be called my nav. Enter on the keyboard, because we're going to recreate this, okay, on my mock up here. Remember, you can pick your own colors and your own styles and your own fonts. 
Uh, so yeah, let's make this. So background color, start with that. So um, remember, I've got all mine curled up. Remember that's Option or Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac. Okay, I'm gonna say with that selected, I've got my nav, selection nav, background is going to be some sort of dark gray. Excellent. Let's add an image for the logo. So let's go add, let's go down to image. Okay, and just drag it inside. Perfect. Now in terms of the logo here, I'm going to click choose image. And let's go and upload one. Now I've got one that I'm going to use and I've got a generic one you can use. So under club event site, okay, go to icons. And I've got, I'm going to use icon kayak. Okay, it looks like that. Um, you can use, go get your own icon, try something like iconfinder.com and look for the free ones in there. You can find your own kind of like logo thing you could use for the moment, or you could draw one in Illustrator or Figma or XD. Okay, or just use one of these two, like generic club icon, another generic club icon. In the moment, just use the 64 pixel one, so a small one. But I'm gonna use the special kayak one because that's the one I'm building. So we go, kayak logo in. Hmm. I must have changed the colors <laughs> somewhere along the line. Oh, well, it's purple now. Size wise, okay, it's weird. Um, look, oh, sometimes you can't drag it unless this is closed. Mm, that seems to be intermittent. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll add a class to this image. So we're gonna say, this is my image. I'm gonna use uppercase I, image logo. And I'm gonna say this has some, what will padding and margin do? Okay, not layout. Spacing, it'll do the same thing. Okay, so padding and margin will look the same. I'm undoing. Okay, so I'm gonna use margin. All right, roughly. So I've got that. I would like to add my little buttons over here. So let's go to add. Let's add some buttons. Let's go one button, get it in there. You're like, huh. How do we get it over here? Okay, so the way to get that over here is something called float. So with the button selected, I'm gonna say you, under position, okay, have this thing called float. I'm gonna float him to the right, okay? Like right align, but for objects. So I'm gonna float him to the right. What happened? I've added a style to this button and I forgot to add a class, kinda on purpose, I forgot. Uh, so what can we do? It's already created this one for us. That's okay, I can live with that. So I'm gonna call button, this one's gonna be called space nav. Cool. Now, uh, what was my text in this one? I'm gonna have past events, sponsors, events. So this one here is my big one, events. Let's go events. I want another one. What we can do is just copy and paste. So I've got it selected. Command C, V on a Mac, Control C, V on a PC. You can actually hold down the option key Okay, or Alt key on a PC and just drag them out actually. That makes a duplicate too. It's a bit fancy. Uh, so I've got three buttons. This one here, I can't remember, was uh, sponsors, was it? Sponsors. Okay, and this one was past events. These buttons are probably too closely named. But anyway, we're building our nav. Um, so let's preview it as we're going through. Let's have a look. Okay, it doesn't go anywhere yet because I don't have those sections, but I will. Um, yeah, let's do the spacing on this. Uh, so turn the eyeball off. So I'm going to say, select it on one of them. And because it's applied, of a, you know, it's on all of th all of these because I copied and pasted it. So button nav, button nav, button nav is on all of these things. If I had a button now, a new one, I had in there. Can you see? It doesn't get the same thing applied. And you're like, actually, hey, what if I go over here and apply button nav, okay? So can you see here, if I clicked in here, I could type button nav and it would work. Do I have to be uh, the exact same button nav? Yes, it works. It's easier though, just to click on it and click in here and look, it goes, hey, but there's existing classes, Dan. Do you wanna use one of these? And you're like, I do. I wanna use button nav. And if you've got a thousand of them, which you might do in the end, you can start typing, remember image, and it just shows you your image hero, image logo. That's the kind of naming convention that I like because it makes it easy, but I've got button, I've only got two of them, but at least it cuts it down to these two. Ooh, nice. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of him. Uh, I'm gonna style these guys, and I only need to style one. So I've got him selected, doesn't matter which one. Okay, I'm gonna go into my uh, spacing, and I wanna push it down from the, do I? Push it down from the top and away from each other. Okay, so how do I do that? Is it margin or padding? 
<laughs> just drag both down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so there's gonna be a bit of this. I want some margin on the sides. Now, if you want more space inside of the button now, let's say, can you see my button here has quite a bit of you know uh, negative space in there? This one's really close. So I click on, it doesn't matter which one you click on. Now, is this gonna be padding or nav? It's gonna be padding, Dan, come on. Can you see the, uh, the gray one? It's got 15. You didn't add that. It's grayed out because it's the default. It's what Webflow and Web in general have added. The ones that are blue are the ones that we did. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this up from the side and 32 on this side as well. Now, a little trick for styling these things, I'm gonna undo and undo again. So it's back to the defaults. If you hold down the option key on a Mac and drag one side, can you see they both come? Hey, you see it's doing left and right at the same time. So that's option on a Mac, alt on a PC. Same for the top and bottom, any kind of one that has, you know, top and bottom, left and right, you can do that, it's up to you. If you hold down, you hold down the, is it the command key? Shift key, alt shift key, I can never remember. <laughs> <laughs> if you hold down shift key, it does all of them at the same time. All of them at the same time. Okay, so yeah, I use the alt option one quite a bit. The holding down shift one <laughs> is a bit of keyboard smashing. But anyway, we are there. Now, I should go through and completely style them. Actually, let's add one more thing before we move on, because we're gonna bin this, remember? Uh, so uh, I wanna add some text. So I wanna add some text here. I wanna show you how you build it. Oh, you already know this. I spoke at the beginning, but I want to show you how it was built on your own so that when you get given the, you know, the, um, what is it called? The element that is a component ready to drag in, you know how to adjust it. So let's add our bit of text. And this is gonna be interesting. We've added headings and paragraphs, which made sense before. I want a logo. There's no like logo text option. So if you're unsure, if it's, if it's none of these, then it's this one. Text block is generic block of text that means nothing really. You know, it's not, the, the browser doesn't think, oh, it's a heading, it's special. Or, oh, hey, this is the article and the paragraph, very special. Well, the main guts of it. Okay, if it's just supportive text and you can't think of what to call it, you know, it's not any of these two, drag this in. It's just a kind of like a really basic unstyled block of text. And let's type in your, you know, look at your brief. And what was mine called? I put mine in caps. Uh, idea. Kayaking club. Let's put in yours. And what do we do here? Have a little think about it. Pause it. Like, what would you do? What would you start clicking on? What terms bubble to mind? We looked at it before. And um, it was to do with the layout. So I'm going to click on this. And he is the name. It's hidden in the name. Text block. Okay. Block means he goes all the way, clears the space for himself. Nobody else can be on the same line as him. But we can say, hey, buddy, under layout, I don't want you to be a block. I want you to be inline block. Get in line. Okay, and it's given it a class because I've added a style to it, okay, which is layout, display, um, inline block. Okay, I don't want that. What I want is, I'm gonna call this one text, and I'm gonna call it logo, okay, and I'm gonna say you are, well, he's in the right place, job done. <laughs> I'm just gonna style him now. So I'm gonna go spacing, I'm gonna add some margin to the side, always the wrong way. Okay, I'm gonna go to my typography. Okay, and I'm gonna go to, what am I using? Can't remember, Roboto, I think. No, we're using Open Sans. Where is it? Open Sans, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna use the bold. I'm gonna use the color of white. Okay, we'll do the red stuff in a little bit, but that's kind of the right size as well, based on my mock-up, but we could change that. Cool. So. Sometimes the default is right, okay, like this image here, just kind of, well, actually, this text box here is set to um, display block, and we needed, and he pushed down the next guy. And then we wanted that, but then sometimes you're like, no, we don't want that. We had the image, remember, it was set to inline, but it kind of wasn't what we wanted, so you push down. Clear a space, pushing this guy down. All right, all this work, and you told me at the beginning we're gonna delete it, why? Well, it's because, you don't have to, but it's, we've been working on our desktop and we've kind of just hinted at these other different displays, but if I go down to mobile, ah, okay, it kind of rejiggles and doesn't quite fit. And you want the little nav bar, you know, the, the nav sandwich, the little three lines that you can click and drop down. Everyone loves that, okay? And to get that going, there's a bit of JavaScript. It's, it's you know, there's breakpoints. It's, it's not hard, but it's way easier to let Webflow do it. And me, even as an advanced user, I'd still just use the pre-made one in 
Webflow. But it is super handy knowing how things like float and inline block work first when you start modifying it. Because you dump it in, you're like, I want to change everything. <laughs> and it all falls apart and you have no idea why. So now we know how some of the structure works, we can use with a bit of authority, we can use that nav component. So let's go and bin this and, and do that one now. I'll see you there. I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, we're going to rebuild this navigation at the top. We're gonna to use the uh, built-in component from Webflow to make it super easy. We're gonna style it how we want, and it's gonna do the nice thing when we go down to mobile, it's gonna to change to this burger menu, okay, with a drop down without us doing anything. All right, let's go and make it in Webflow. Is he ignoring how bad it looks on mobile? I totally am, we'll get to that, we will. Okay, what do we do with this old one? We could select our section nav, okay, and we could say actually, it gives me an excuse to show you this. We've looked at display block and inline. Okay, look at this one, it says none. Okay, you can click on it and say none, and it goes away. It's still there in the code, okay, just the browser can't see it anymore, ever. So it's not a real point of having it. Okay, to turn it back on, what you really wanna do is click on that or that, it doesn't work. You gotta go back to what display setting you want, okay, which is in our case block. So it pushes down his buddy underneath. All right, so I'm actually just gonna delete it. So select on section nav and go away. So I need a section, I can go to here and add my, where is it, my navigation, my nav bar, and it will actually be pretty much fine. If I add it above my, trying to, above my section hero, nope, I got it inside my section hero, okay, uh, nav bar goes above section hero, it'll work just fine. It's better for this to be inside a section Okay, not 100% essential, but the browser and the search engines wanna see your different sections and it means we can navigate a lot easier. A lot easier is not a word, but have you seen those websites where there's an arrow that says go back to the top? Okay, you can click on the button and say go to what section? We could say the nav section. Cool, so let's put it inside of a section. So we're gonna add a section, U section. I'm gonna put it just above my nav bar and then I'm gonna put my nav bar inside. There we go. Nothing has changed, except I've got this section. Okay, and the section, I'm gonna call section nav. You're like, hey, but we've already done that. And yeah, we just use section nav. We could, you know, if you, if this is the first time you're doing it, you're gonna have to make it, but because we already made it, there you go, we've got this thing called section nav all ready to go. Do you notice section nav has a background color? That's not doing anything. Why is it not doing anything? It's because the nav bar has its own color and it's overriding it because it's more specific or it's over the top of it, okay? It's actually gray in the background, but we can't see it because nav bar's on top. So we can select on nav bar and either go nav bar, you are completely transparent, this one here, so I can see through to my sections nav, or we're getting in the weeds here, aren't we? <laughs> ah, ah, we're learning. Uh, yeah, so, or we can just style the nav bar. There's no real difference here. Because I've already started, I'm gonna make my nav bar transparent and my section is gonna bring my color through, which is my dark gray. All right, let's have a look at what's special about this. The special thing is, there's two big special things. One, it's already done. I can put my logo in here, I've got some buttons all ready to go, okay? And that saves me time from adding buttons, floating at left, floating at right. And, but also when I get down to mobile version, oh look, there's already a, like a bit of JavaScript that switches that out and changes it. Let's have a look at preview. Watch this, I can click on it. Oh, all of that sort of stuff is done for us. Okay, the CSS actually switches that out for this little icon, and then some JavaScript does this lovely drop down. But it's all done. Okay, so I'm going to go back to desktop, and I'm going to go to my preview off. And let's have a little deconstruction. So we've got this first chunk, it's just called brand. All it is, is a container that they've called brand, Webflow, and they've made it linkable. So if I dump an image in here, you know, it will be one of those links that links back to the home page. Thank you very much, Webflow. What they've also done is they've got a bunch of buttons. Okay, so the button, button, button. And we know, how do they get them on the right-hand side here? You're like, I know, hands up, you know. At the back, what was it? Float right. And you're like, great, so it's gonna say you are floating to, where is it, under position. There it is, float to the, huh? It's not doing any float, don't float. Why is it not floating, Dan? You, you promised us, float would work. Okay, what they've done here is, there's this container wrapping it all up. So these are my buttons, okay? And that's what I did it to. I applied the float to these buttons. What they've done is just to be cleverer is instead of doing it to all three of these, just, just do it once to the wrapper. 
Okay, we put this wrapper around the outside. Okay, and in this case, this is called, they've made it using this thing called a div block, which is like a generic wrapper, which we'll do ourselves in bits. But let's have a look, let's get back here. So they've got this generic thing, they've called it navbar, and they've said, you float to the right, look, and everything inside of it goes, all right, we'll float to the right too, I guess, because <laughs> we, we have no choice. The navbar goes flying to the right, dragging these guys inside along for the right. So there you go, pre-made, but we kind of understand how it's made a little bit. We can make new ones by copying them and pasting them, nice. Okay, I don't need them. The last thing I wanna show you is this brand chunk here. Okay, it's a container that has a link applied to it. Thank you very much, Webflow. And what is it doing? Let's hit the cog. Why isn't it working? Okay, it doesn't work because there's just so much that needs to come out of this, it would be massive. So what they do is, well, uh, this is my assumption actually, it might be broken. <laughs> okay, but if you, it just, see the cog here? I've got it selected. There's just so much that they've done for this menu that they, it's not really an easy drop down. So they've just done nothing. You gotta click on the cog over here and you can see there's my link settings. At the moment it's linking to a URL. What I might do now, cause it's my, I'm gonna put my logo in there. I'm gonna say, go to a page. Which page? I've only got one page, home. And that's good. Cause when I duplicate this whole website to do different pages, it means that it's gonna always, you know, whenever you click the logo, it's gonna go back to the home page, which is pretty typical of websites. All right, I want a logo in there though. It's not particularly hard. We've already got a logo from earlier. Okay, whatever your one is. So my assets panel, click hold, drag it inside. Check that it went inside. I'm gonna adjust my size, which doesn't work when that's open some of the time. Okay, and there you go. So there's my little logo. I am now just gonna go start styling stuff. So that's it. If you wanna carry on, I'm gonna basically do what we did already, okay, in the last video. Um, so I'm gonna go through and push this around, add my logo text, add my buttons. That's why this video is so long, is a little bit of just doing stuff. If you've got nothing else to do or you can't reach the skip button, <laughs> you're gonna watch me style it. So let's do it together. So my image, I've got, ooh, I'm gonna go back to my styles. Sometimes you're like, where's all that stuff gone? Oh, there it is. Okay, I want to put some padding around it, but hopefully, remember I did image. I've already got a logo one from last time. Oh, saving time. Okay, same with these buttons. Okay, are these buttons though? They're not. Can I apply that style for them? Let's go button, our nav. We totally can. It didn't bring the color through but we didn't add the color last time. Awesome. Okay, so we can still reuse that button nav even though we deleted the last navigation. And that's an important point. Uh, if you create styles and never use them, they'll just hang out. We'll have to clean them up towards the end of the project, but they don't go away, they're persistent. So what do I wanna do? I want this one to be green and kind of actually, I want the spacing to be taller, and the padding to be taller. Both sides, how do you do both sides? At the same time, yeah, that's right. Hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. Something like that. I want my background color to be, not typography, background is going to be that kind of greeny color. You pick your own. All right, I want the button to be, the text to be white. That did not work, what I have selected. I had the body selected, that's not what I want. I want these button. That button nav here, I want the typography color to be white. There we go. Okay, and is that kind of what I want? Let's have a look. I want it to be caps, we know we can do that. So typography under more type options, caps, there we go. And I want it to be also our, not great vibes, or impact. Impact is the comic sans of Webflow, don't use it. <laughs> uh, you can use it. Uh, we're using, not Arial, we're using Open Sans, aren't we? Cool. Here we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is apply it to all of them. So you have got a style called Button Nav. You've got a style called Nothing. So let's go Button, But, in Nav, you two, Button Nav. Here we go. Okay, I wanna change the colors of these ones. It's gonna require a combo class, which we'll do in a little bit, but let's just leave them for the moment. I'm not gonna do the hover. I'm going to add the hero text over here. So we've done that before. You, when I say hero text, I mean logo text. So I'm gonna use, remember, a text block. None of these other ones, because it's kind of generic text. And I hopefully, where did it go? It is, where do I want it? Do I want it like, there's the brand, which has got this in it. 
then inside of that brand linkable thing is got a uh, image and then do I have it afterwards? Okay, which is kind of freaking out or do I put it after the image? I'm not sure. I'm just going to see what it looks like. Okay, so it's kind of in the brand. So it's in the box brand. You see there, but it's doing something a bit weird. How do we fix that? We're going to have a look at our position. So we're going to say the logo is not letting it play ball. Okay, or the text block. Okay, is not doing it. One or the other. Let's try the text block because I'm guessing and I'm pretty sure that under, where it is it? Size. Nope, we want display. Where is it? I'm going to have to scroll up. There it is. Display. I don't want it to be inline block. I want it to be, well, I don't want it to be block. I want it to be inline block. Oh, there it is. Cool. Now we can style either the logo to have more padding on the side or this bit of text that says, uh, dear, dear kayak club. Kayak club. Um, I think we already did uh, style. It's created a style called text block. Okay. And this is an interesting one because it created that for me because I wasn't, because I changed the display. So I said, all right, you didn't make a class. I'm making one for you. Now in the position where in the last video, I actually made one. So I want to apply that to it, but I want to get rid of this. What do I do? Okay. I want to remove this class. Okay. Because I don't want two of them. Okay. I want the one that I already made called what was it called? It's called text logo. We already did it with the inline block, didn't we? So we deleted the automatic one and kind of went back a step, found the one we want, and it's done everything we need. Happy days. Cool. All right. Beautiful ish. It's getting close. I want to grab this one and play around with the margin. Zoop. Top. Be the top and the bottom the same. All right, so that is it. It's good enough for the moment. Um, yeah, it's coming along. We added navigation. We were learning terms. We're becoming more web designery. You know terms like display block, inline block, floating. Oh, we're fancy. All right, fancy. Let's go to the next video. Hi everyone. Welcome to the production video. What is a production video? Well, it's a point of the class where I actually need to fill out some of the details here, okay, to build a website, but I'm not using any new things. I'm using existing techniques that we all know and just putting them into practice to kind of do repeatable stuff. I'm going to style some text, put some images in, style more text, put some images in. And um, so it's, there's just a lot of repetition in this one, not a lot of repetition, but more of uh, putting our skills that we know into practice. Now I could do this and not record it and just surprise you with it. And some people would be happy with that. And some people were like, I want to know how we did it, even though it's the stuff we've already done. Okay. So watch this video if you want. That's what these production videos are. Skip them. If you, I try to make sure there's no new techniques in here. Okay. So you're not missing out if you skip it. Okay. So I won't be angry if you skip it, but my advice would be watch, see how I make these things, problems I run into and how I fix them. That's why this one's a bit long because we make a couple of different boxes. There we go. Okay. And copy these two things. So yeah, production video, follow me. Okay. So let's begin. What I'm going to do is I've got this demo, you know, this thing I'm working off, um, kind of an example. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is you obviously can do your own styles. And um, what I'm going to do is copy my design. We'll cover how to get it exactly out of um, some other design programs later on. But for the moment, we're just going to do some copying and I'm going to kind of move mine so I can see a bit of both. The one thing you might be on a smaller screen and you might be like, I can't use this thing. You're totally right. That's why it kind of automatically goes back in. Okay. So if you're like, yeah, you put this and it just covers too much. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you need a bigger screen. You can get around that by going up here and saying it doesn't scale your website down, but it scales your view of it. You can put it down to 70% so you can see more. Okay. And then you can use this thing. So it stays out. Where is it? Is that one? Yes. No. Why aren't you staying out? Expand your browser. Oh, it won't stay in. Here we go. Now it will. I didn't realize that. Well, there you go. We all learn something. Browser needs to be a certain width for this thing to be able to pin to the side because there's not enough room. All right, but you can also still lower this down if you need to, to fit it in. Okay, you might be designing on a really small screen and you just needed to get it smaller. I'm going to get mine down smaller. It doesn't change the preview. Watch this. When I go to preview, it goes to the right size. Come out of preview. Fortunately, it goes back. So let's do our styling. So what next thing we want to do is let's work on this sponsors. So first thing is to change our background color because it's this kind of dark gray here. So what we do is we style our body, which is everything. And we say the body has a class. I'm going to call it body. Okay. And I'm going to say this body has a class 
called body and it's going to have a background color of, I'm going to twirl those down, okay, a background color of, not white, I'm going to use, I'm just kind of looking at it, it's kind of a bluey gray. There we go, bluey gray color. Here we go. So that my sponsors can do a couple of things. It can have a background color of white and I'm going to add some uh, spacing, I'm going to add some margin, here we go. I'm going to add some text to it, this supported by. Okay, so I'm going to grab my plus. I'm going to add, this is going to be a heading. I'm going to use these like little headings all the way through. Now looking at my hierarchy of headings, this is my most important one. This is my, what's called an H1. You see this is H1, most important heading. Okay, my H2, I should probably, you know, uh, because I'm, it's the next thing I'm doing, I say, oh, this is going to be my H2, but it's not the most second most important bit of information on my page. Google's algorithm will look at it and go, hey, what's the most important? And if your most important thing is this, and your second most important is next event, that's not particularly useful for search engines. The second most important bit of information as a heading is actually this um, river event. Okay, so I'm going to skip H2 because I'll do that in a little bit. And I'm going to say, I want a heading... I'm not making sense in my, I'm making a heading here that's going to be H3. Even though I'm kind of next is H2, but I actually want to save that one because it's this thing here is more important. So I'm going to use H3. It's got some default styling. I'm going to say you, my friend, I'm going to call it heading, this is three. Okay, and I'm going to do some things. I'm going to pick a bit of typography. So the typography is going to be, I'm using um, XO. Font size, I'm guessing about 26 ish. Okay, the color of it is going to be this kind of ready color. It's kind of a pinky red ish. I like to refer to it as nuclear red, not pink. Here we go. And we need some padding around it. Actually, let's change the text, double click it. And this one is called, what is it called? Supported. Supported by. Okay, and I want some padding all around it. So what we'll do it to is we could do it to the heading, but what's a better way of doing it? That's right, do it to the section that it's in. Okay, because there's lots of things in the section that need to follow the rules of the um, spacing. So I'm gonna put in, what is this one? Okay, I want that same spacing there. So let's go to this, I've got my section hero. I'm 73 from the side, okay, and 53 from the top. Let's see what we wanna copy. So my section. I want to go margin, actually padding of 73. And the margin wise, I wanted margin 30. That's perfect for me. Let's do some padding there. Let's go something like that. I'm just eyeballing it from the kind of mock up that I've got. And the bottom's going to be the same. Remember, margin, push it away, padding pushes the inside. Probably need some more bottom padding. Now, how can you do top and bottom at the same time? Okay, you remember, hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and they will match. There we go. Now you might notice that actually this isn't perfectly in the center, is because this H3 has its own little bit of margin. Can you see he comes with just his own margin without asking? So some of the elements that you drag in from here, okay, have some, you know, their own settings, like our button. A button does some stuff, it's blue. I didn't tell it to be blue, but it comes with some default stuff that we can override. So we can say, actually, this heading three, we can say, uh, I want it to be zero, not 20. I want the bottom to be zero. Now it's kind of perfectly in the middle. Now it's ruined my eyeballing. <laughs> so clicking the section, and we're gonna say actually holding down my option or alt, drag out one of them, good enough. Cool, so now I need some images underneath. So let's grab our images. Now we've got a few to bring in. So let's do the few bringing any check, um, you know, uh, method. <laughs> so I click on my assets in my exercise files, I've got some in your exercise files under club events. They're not actually in there. Let's get them in there. Inside of here, there is sponsor one, two, and three. So what I can do is just drag in all uh, four of them. Okay, you can all use these sponsors. Okay, and then I'm going to, what we've done in the past is we said now add an image, drag it in, and then choose it from here. And that totally works. Okay, but I'll show you. It's actually just easier to go straight to your assets panel and say, actually just bring in this one. Oh, in the wrong place. It's all right, there we go. Uh, the next one, let's say you is next. They're all a bit big, it's okay. When you're dragging them in, you're like, why, why is it going above? It is weird. It's just the way the kind of flow of 
code work sometimes. You've just got to either just dump it in and move it afterwards or kind of just keep an eye on that blue line. You see, he's just jumping around the place. There he is. Nice. Next one. Uh, let's bring in. Who's next? Uh, this one. These are just various logos I made from various projects. And um, you can see it's actually quite easy to do it here as well. So let's do it on this one rather than on the document. It's the last one at CSS Crowns. That's the gag for this um, t shirt that I'm wearing is that, you know, we're kind of coloring in. That's what I feel like I'm doing anyway. I'm kind of taking my design and using CSS to color in with crayons. <laughs> it's like a big adult coloring in version, but you're doing it in code. Or at least Webflow. Cool. So I've got my uh, images. Let's shrink them down. So I'm just going to click on one. You're a bit smaller. I'm going to have to get them all kind of the right size. Here we go. Seems about right. By default, this heading three is block, so it pushes them all down. And by default, images, member are in line. Okay, so they all kind of stack next to each other. What I'd like to do is space them out a little bit. So I'm going to add a class to this image. There's nothing. Okay, so I'm going to call you image. I'm going to call you image sponsor. Okay, and this is just going to have some... Actually, let's do it for all of them. I'm going to add it to this one. Where is it? Type. Can you see it on existing classes? It's only showing me a few. Okay, so if I go mm, <laughs> I am. Okay, and go sponsor. There you go. Mm, sponsor you. Mm, sponsor. There we go. So it doesn't matter which one I have selected. I can say I want them all to have a little bit of margin on both sides. So I'm holding on my alt or option to kind of getting it so it doesn't break onto the next line. Yeah, that'll look. Looking good. Okay, next thing is I need another section. So I'm going to say new section, section, section. Here we go. It's going to go underneath. Thank you very much. It needs to go inside of my... Um, can't go inside the sponsors one, but it needs to go inside my container, which is tricky to do, right? By here, it's outside of it. Up here, it's now gone inside of my sponsors. Can you see? It's still inside my sponsors. But if I drag it to the left, can you see it's kind of the indentation changes? And you can kind of see over on the right so wrong red here it's going to go inside my container if i go a little bit more left it's going to go inside the body not what i want somewhere in there there we go inside my container uh let's give it a name let's call it section and this one is called uh next event next event enter on my keyboard i'm going to make the background green now first of all actually let's make the background green i want to show you something background is going to be a Gonna be a green color now what you can do is because you can see i can see both of these i can um this is meant to be later in the course but hey use the eyedropper tool watch this i can pick any color from in here or i can go over here look Ooh, i can steal that color there we go so i've got that section let's preview it that's what happens to this section preview <laughs> it's gone completely okay it disappears because it has no height or width what webflow does because because we've got a this empty section okay what in like absolute fact is that there is no height to it because we didn't add a height. The height's just magic in here because Webflow knows that if you added a section and you couldn't see it until you added height, you'd freak out and run away. So what it does is it just adds this like temporary height in here so that you can add things to it and it's not just a complete empty box with no visible signs. Okay, so if you're coding this, you'd add this section and there'd be nothing to see. Okay, so that's why it's kind of, that's why there's nothing to see. It's not until you either give it a height by selecting the section and saying, and let's have a look at the size. You could say, I want a height of 30 or 300. Now it has a height because we told it that section has a height. If you have nothing, which is uh, left to auto, okay, how do you clear it out? You can right click it. Can you right click it? You right click that button. You can't. <laughs> if you just delete it from in there and hit enter, it goes back to default, does it? It does. Okay. I don't know that way because this is the way I do it. Hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC and click it. Click the kind of word and it just resets it to default. All right, so now we're back to a box that has no height or width, but we know we can add some of the spacings. So we might use the same spacing as this. So let's have a look. We've got a margin of 30, 49 and 73. You remember 73, I'll remember 49 and 30. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, what was it? Oh, 49. 
that was 73 that was the one you were remembering thank you and oh i can't remember <laughs> 3049 all right it's going badly people uh all right so 3049 i can do that where's my section where did it go it's teeny tiny let's have a look all right what have i done i'm going to select it i've given it a margin i've given it a width i haven't given it any so let's just type it in 30 and see if it fixes itself 30 and then 49 there you go let's come back to life and the bottom i'll do 49 as well all right so we've got some sort of structure going let's add that title called next event and what we're going to do here is we're going to reuse this one we're going to copy it because it's got all the styling applied to it it's the right h3 it's just the wrong text so i've copied and pasted it brought all the styles over and this one's just called next event now the only trouble with this is the kind of contrast seemed like a good idea over here but it looks pretty yeah anyway uh we're just gonna have to live with the eye burning red on green and next bit i want is i want this remember what we decided i pre kind of emptied it being the h2 so i skipped it so i'm gonna go you I'm going to be hitting underneath here there we go it's gonna be my h2 okay and i'm gonna give it a heading of h2 and we're going to say what is it it is let's do typography first going to be open sans you just type o when you've got this open it will jump to the o's okay it is bold it's fine size wise it's going to be a bit bigger and it is going to be white and it's going to say you come up with your own event mine is there's a river near me okay uh, <laughs> this is Irish. Uh, my goo, my go. If you're Irish, I'm sorry. Uh, some names where I just I find it real tricky. Um, my go. If you gave me a Maori name, I'd be okay. Um, but um, yeah, anyway. So uh, let's the next thing. All these are nice block elements, so they're all just kind of stacking on top of each other. Let's add an image. I'm actually just going to cheat. Copy that one. It's the same image. Okay, because that's what I want. I want that kind of like the details for this jumps down to here. And I'm going to add some paragraph text. I'm just going to copy this. If I copy this, this is interesting. So I could copy it because it's the white text that I want. And I paste it. I'm going to click in here, paste it. Okay, now it's done a couple of things. It is brought in the style. Okay, have a look at it. There's two things wrong with it. The white text didn't come. And this big padding over here came. What did I do wrong? So it's basically nothing I want. <laughs> okay, so if you've worked it out, that hero text, remember that, sorry, that hero um, paragraph text that we added? There it is there. He's got one job in the world, and it was, if we close all these down, you can kind of see, this is it here. He's got one job, and it's that blue thing, and what it is, it's that. We gave him padding, so that's all it brought across. Where did the white text come from? Oh, that's right, it came from here. Okay, it came from the actual section. The section says, I've got topography of white. There you go. But this one, the hero section doesn't say anything about what color the typography should be. Okay, I know it's not because it has got, it's this amber color, which means it's being colored by something, but it's not something that I've done. It'd be blue if I colored it. So I can do one of two things. Looking at this, I've got two paragraphs. Okay, and I've got text up the top here. Okay, they're all white. We're going to do this red stuff in a little bit but so what i should do is actually go to this heading two and say actually don't be white i'm gonna remember hold down the option or the alt key click it to get rid of it instead of telling that to be white i'm going to say the section okay called section next event is going to be everything inside of here is going to be white unless i tell it otherwise which is this guy he is the child of the parent the parent says be white and the child says no way i'm going to be red this child doesn't know any better. Nobody told him, you know, he doesn't want to be red, so he just takes whatever the parent says. Do you kind of see that flow? Okay, you style the outer box as much as you can and then do individual things uh, to override it. A little bit more specific things, specificity. Okay, so I always look at this design when I'm working, I'm like, most of it's white, let's make the section white and we'll do little bits. If it's half and half, pick one of them. It's better than styling this one, this one, and this one. So what I want to do is remove that hero text because I didn't like it. I should have just dragged in a paragraph text from my add options. But remember, drop down, I can say just remove this class. There we go. Now I want two of them. 
Actually, I've got my text. I've got my text in another document. You just type something out for your next event. You can leave Lauren Ipsum in there. If you're not sure where you get Lauren Ipsum, this kind of like fake text that appeared. Okay, you can just drag it from, if you add a P tag, even if you just want to copy and paste it, watch this. You go into paragraph, if you drag it in anywhere, you get a chunk of this stuff. And just use it out of that. Say copy and then, oh, and then delete it if you don't need it. Or well, there's lots of online options you can go get um, Lauren Ipsum text from. I've got mine in a Figma and an XD file. So I'm going to just grab mine, hit paste. Okay, I've got a return there. Here we go. I'm going to put double returns in for the moment. We'll do proper space after text styling later on. The other thing I probably want to do is what should we do? Now, I could add a class to this to say the text that is inside my section event can have padding at the top to push it down. Okay, and that's creating a new class. Or I look up here and I go, I've already made a class, one called Image Hero. And I can just add it to that. doesn't matter if it's pushing down from the image or up from the paragraph. So I can say you, my friend, it's going to have spacing. And let's have some, there's 32 at the top. Let's do it. Let's do 32 at the bottom. I'm just clicking it to get inside of it. Or you click and drag it. Here we go. Some text. Um, the one thing as well is this one here. You're like, how did you get that? You could try and split it up as separate boxes, but with that, I'm not sure why I added that. <laughs> it looked cool when I was making it. I'm not a fan of it anymore, but if you want to add that chunk, um, so select this section, what we can do is we can add a border. So let's close all that down. Let's look at our borders. So we did rounded borders. Okay, you can do it for um, sections as well as buttons. So I'm going to undo that. It's not what I want. Can you see down here, there's these options. Okay, border. Okay, I want to border not on all of the sides, well, actually, let's do all sides first. First of all, we'll put a width in. Let's put it in 10, just so you can see it. So by default, it's all around all the sizes. You can pick different kinds of borders. Okay, I'm gonna have just a hard line. And what I wanna do is actually say, I don't want it to all sides, I wanna set it to zero. And I wanna say this side only has a border of about 30, about <laughs> 50. Okay, another little trick while you're working is Click inside of here and just use your up arrow. Can you see? Up, 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 up. If you hold shift, it'll go up in chunks of 10. See? 90, 100, 110, 120. So I use that quite often. Uh, there you go. 50 is going to work for me. And the color is pick a color or I'm going to steal my eyedropper tool. It's not exactly matching just yet, but we're getting there. Other thing is I've got this kind of padding from the side because it, it just looks weird reading. It's very hard to read all the way across a whole website, so I'm going to trim it down. So I could make a class for this paragraph to, you know, grab the spacing and say margin goes uh, from the side. Okay, it's hard to do it to the side because there's not much room to go. So a little draggy. So that works, but I've had to create a class. It's automatically called a paragraph. I'd call it uh, p next event, but that's a bad way. Well, it's not a bad way. It's just an extra class that you don't need because I've got the section event and I can just add it to this. Draggy drag. Oh, not margin. It's the padding. There we go. Padding goes in. Oh, I'm looking at my thing. That's good. Good enough. All right, that is where we're at right now. There was a few new little things in there, but essentially the same things we've been using up until now, kind of in a bit more of a real world project. And you get to, I don't know, ride along with me and listen to my ramblings. Anyway, so that is it. Let's get on to the next video. Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to make this hyperlink here. When you click it, it's gonna load another website. I'm gonna show you how to style away the ugly blue and underline, and we're gonna make it well, white and underline, but I'll show you how to remove the underline as well. So hyperlinks are clickable and they jump to a website. In our case, it's jumping to a link to a map. So let me show you how to make it and style it in Webflow. All right, so I've gone back to full screen. I've kind of dragged my browser out and let's talk about hyperlinks. What are they? They are, I'll show you an example. Um, so on a blog post, can you see here, um, that little link here, within the text that an author has decided that it's great to link out to somewhere from here. Okay, and if I click this, it'll go to another page. Okay, I'm going back. There's a bunch of them in here. Okay, you, they use them a lot for affiliate links. Okay, so he's talking about things like, hey, notepads. Like, 
totally irrelevant, but they've decided as part of their kind of monetization that notepads, when I click on it, will go to an affiliate link to Amazon with notepads. Okay, random notepad. I don't think it's what uh, this person was mentioning, but hey, you can also go to Mints and Headphones and they all go to Amazon. Okay, this one here goes out to Muji, which is cool. Do they have an affiliate program? Don't look like it. Maybe. I love this company. Anyway, so those are hyperlinks. What we're going to do is we're going to get ours to go out to a Google map. So when somebody says down here, uh, click here for the map location. We're going to select it. And what you'll notice is if I highlight any sort of text, you get given these options. I can bold, italicize it. It's not what I want to do. I want this one here. I want to insert a link. Oh, and the blue underline we love. So that is the link. Let's get it to go somewhere. So I'm going to go to my maps. I'm going to find my river. Okay. M Meg. Meg. <laughs> Meg River. And look at that. Clog hat. Uh, that's the beginning of the river. I want to go somewhere else, but hey, it's fine for a moment. Okay. I'm going to share it. I'm just going to get this send a link and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, so where's my link? There it is. I'm going to click on the little cog and I'm going to get it to go to leave. Take away the hash. The hash is there as a placeholder. You don't need to leave it there. It just kind of acknowledges that it is a link and uses a hash so it's not an error when you click it. But delete the hash, put in that. I'm going to get mine to open up a new tab because I want people to keep the you know, Webflow open but jump out to the map. If it's an internal link, don't have that on. Cool. Um, so let's test it. Let's go to preview and let's go to our link. Hey, and it opens up Google Maps to our river in Cloghatakak. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's style it. So uh, let's go out of preview. Okay, and in here, let's style it. So let's add a class to it. So go to our styles. Okay, and I've got it selected kind of there. And I'm going to say you are going to be a class for hyperlink. Hyperlink. And I want to override the defaults. There's some stuff coming through. Can you see all of that's kind of coming through from the defaults for a link? Okay, that's why they're amber. Okay, it's saying I need to be aerial. I need to be this size, this height, this color, and this text decoration. That's the first thing we can get rid of. So text decoration is underline. I'm going to say I don't want it on. Okay. Uh, so let's turn it off by going to none. So no text decoration. Okay. The other thing I want to do is I want to change the color to white, please. Okay. But I want to turn the underline back on now. It's up to you what you want to do. Okay. So I'm going to leave the underline on because it's kind of a, I don't know, a universal maybe, and um, that it's a hyperlink. It was going to underline. The blue though is obviously a little bit tough with our design. Now a little bit of foreshadowing for the later part of the course when we talk about SEO, but these are one of the really important uh, factors for getting your rankings for your website okay is when other people make hyperlinks on their website that link to you okay so um our hyperlink or is it cog okay is um, supporting google maps but let's say this was for um you know linking to a supplier for kayaks Okay, and saying you should buy your kayaks at this place here, and here's the link. Those are the sorts of links that are really important and what you're looking for and um, for your website to rank well. Okay, so sending them out is not so important for your website, but whoever gets these links, okay, these inbound links, like the kayak shop, like in my instance here, and um, they will love links back to their site. It's kind of like what makes, it's one of the really big indicators for Google. So once you do have your site, one of the things you can do is be looking for people to link to you using good keywords. This is where I hard sell to you. Uh, if you do like this video or appreciate it in my courses, and that's what helps me and my courses get popular. So if you are building a website and it's appropriate somewhere in there to say best Webflow course on the internet, go see Dan, I make that a hyperlink and point it to this course. Uh, yeah, that's my begging. Um, but so hyperlinks, super important. They're kind of uh, more navigational for your site out, but to get them pointing to your site is like uh, gold dust. Really helpful for search engines. All right, uh, that is it. On to the next video.
Hi everyone, in this video we're going to do this. I'm going to click a button and ooh, cool huh? Kind of slides down to the different section. Okay, it's a way of doing navigation on a one page website. Okay, where you're not actually jumping to separate pages, you're just jumping down to different parts of it. Okay, they're called element IDs and anchors, but really they're just fancy page slide navigation stuff. Let me show you how they work. All right, to create that navigation, it works kind of backwards. That's why it's really hard to remember and you'll end up coming back to this video or writing it down somewhere. So you don't start with the button, okay, which seems natural. You start with where you wanna go, okay? I want this button when it's clicked to come down here. So I'm gonna say this section here, I would like to go to my settings option. I'm gonna give it an ID. That's what it uses or the button knows where to go. Okay, so we're gonna give it a name now. You've gotta be reasonably, uh, well, Let's do a space in there. Uh, section called, this one's called next event. Okay, watch this. If I hit enter, it will put on the hyphens for me. Seems to be okay with upper and lower, but there are just some things like IDs don't like spaces. So it forces you to put little hyphens in. Cool, so that's kind of half the work done. Now we go up to the button and say you, when you are clicked, so at our settings, we say, I want it to go to a website. I want it to go to this page section. And you'll notice that it only appears now. Even though we've called things sections, it doesn't care. It wants to see an ID. So that link there, okay, it's called an anchor. It's gonna to go to this anchor here called section next event when it is clicked. Let's give it a go. So let's preview it and let's click it. Hooray! <laughs> There's not much down here, so it kind of, kind of stops. Uh, I'm putting more on my website later on, but all that easing is already done automatically for us by the browser and by Webflow, but Nice, huh? We're doing it to a section. You can actually add it to anything. You know, you can select this, go to this, give it an ID and say, when it clicks, go down to whatever this is. So it doesn't have to be a section. It's just obviously probably useful going to a section. You can go to an H1, as long as it's got an ID. So let's do some of the other bits. So uh, the contact us, we don't have right now. The about us, we actually, this is not all we want, is it? What is our, it says past events, sponsors events. We've already done this. We deleted it, didn't we? So you wait there, I'm gonna type it real fast. Aha. All right, so we've got our buttons. Okay, so what I wanna do is when we go to events, okay, it's gonna drop down to that, uh, the section here. And the cool thing about it is I've already got that ID and I wanna to go to the same place. So this button and that button goes to the same place. So I can just reuse it. So select it, I can go to my settings. I can say not a URL. I wanna to go to a page section and there he is. So they both go there. Let's preview it. Yep. Ooh, there he goes. All right, let's turn that off. And what else can we set up? We can set up sponsors. So let's do it one more time. Actually, I'm gonna pause, you do it. You wait there, you do it, but you can. Pause it, go try. All right, you're back, you did it. How did it go? <laughs> okay, have you forgotten? Uh, I'll show you. If you did make it do what you want, be proud of yourself. Awesome, you're web designing. Okay, so first of all, remember, it's where you wanna go first. Settings, I'm gonna call this one anything you like. Don't have to call it section. Okay, and mine's gonna be called uh, Sponsors, you might have called your supporters. Getting a bit loose with what I'm calling mine. Okay, so I'm gonna go, so that's that bit done. Now I wanna say you go to in page and go to one called sponsors. Let's give it a preview. Sponsors, doesn't go very far, but hey. You can tell when we make a longer page, okay, when we're not having multiple pages, we can just have this one page that you can move up and down. Okay, we don't have a past events yet. Okay, there it is there, we don't have it. We'll build that section in a little while. We'll do these grids down the bottom. But good work, we've done some hyperlinking. Same sort of thing, these are links, okay? But these ones have cool page slides. All right, that is it. See you in the next video. Hello, good people. It is class project time, not homework, okay? I want you to go through and get your website up to where we're at now and send me a screenshot. So the brief is, use your own brief. If you're following along with the kayak one, that's totally fine as well. But hopefully you worked on your own brief you got earlier, okay? And get it up to where we are at now at this course. You can push it further if you like, but what I'm asking for is just to get it up to here. So you can choose your own colors, your own images, your own fonts, up to you, okay? These are the, this is the prerequisites, okay? You need to have the four sections, so nav, the hero, the sponsor, and the next event, okay? Add the images, add background image, okay? You need headings one, two, and three, okay? You need to add a navigation at the top there. You need that button hover class. I know I'm asking for a screenshot, so you can't really show you the hover class, but I'll know if you're not doing it, okay? That's that kind of rollover event on the button. 
hyperlink, which is this one here. Uh, remember down the bottom. Okay, um, we click it and go to somewhere else. And the anchor links, which is the navigation. Okay, so where it slides down. Okay, now do it while you're in preview. So it gets rid of all this junk everywhere. Okay, and also if, you know, taking a screenshot is tricky when you can't see it all. So what I, what you should do is go up to here. Okay, this, they've changed this quite a bit. So I'm hoping it's the same still, but if it's not, you'll find it somewhere up here. Okay, that you can change the scale down. Now my laptop, I get down to about 70. Well, maybe a bit more, 60. Okay, and then I can take a screenshot. Now screenshots on a PC, you can do print screen and paste them. You'll have to Google that. On a Mac, it's relatively easy. It's Command Shift 4. Okay, hold those down, you can drag a box and on your desktop will be a screenshot. And um, if you're working on something else, or yeah, you might have to Google how to take a screenshot on your computer, um, but yeah, do that. And upload it to somewhere, uh, there'll be a, an assignment or a projects or a comments section on this website. Okay, they're a little bit different on different ones. So upload it there, and yeah, I'd love to see what you do. Also, uh, take a stab at sticking it on social media. Okay, um, show me what you've done, where you're up to, even if you're like, it's a tricky one, because all of these groups are filled with people who are like you, who are just getting started. So don't worry about like, oh my goodness, I'm not sharing what I'm up to, because I'm new. That's the beauty of these groups, is that everyone's new. Okay, so upload it and ask for a bit of feedback, or don't, just post and say, this is where I'm at. It's interesting to see everybody's development, see what uh, group they got, what styles they're doing. Ask for feedback if you want it. It's a great way to kind of start getting creative feedback if you are maybe not used to critiquing work as a designer or getting critiqued. The only thing is, is that I want you to do it to somebody else as well. Even if you're not, you know, you don't consider yourself a hardcore web de designer, okay? By giving feedback, looking at somebody's work and seeing what you like, what you don't like, what they might do better, allows you to get better yourself because you start analyzing other people's work and going, I like that because of that. And you store that away and you go, I hate that because of that. Don't use the word hate. <laughs> <laughs> be a bit more gentle but say I don't like you know this is something that I don't think works because of x y and z and you can store that away as well so when you're doing your next web project you're like oh yeah those are things I do and don't like about web design anyway you don't have to share it on social media okay but these are the main food groups the Facebook group is super awesome the LinkedIn group's really awesome these ones here uh, Instagram and Twitter are a little bit more one way but it's cool to see what you do these groups here are a little bit more group like but I'd love to see what you do also let me know how you feeling now okay earlier in the course I asked you to kind of tell me was it were you nervous and overwhelmed how you feeling now more double nervous double overwhelmed feeling a little bit more confident anyway let me know I like scrolling through my social media and seeing where everybody's at high fives and hearts for when needed and hugs <laughs> for the people finding it tough all right that is it class project two go do it enjoy it I'll see you in the next video once you've done your homework. All right, bye. Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we're gonna look at what a combo class is. Let me demonstrate it a little bit before we go and make it. So we've got these buttons along the top in my design here. I want actually just, you know, this one to be green and these ones not to be. So what I can do is I can apply more than one class, okay, to update it. It's taking some of the styling from the original one, but the only thing that's changing is background clear. Same with this text here. Okay, I want just part of it to be red. So I can click in here and I've already made these. Okay, so we're gonna make this in this video, but I can say I want this little chunk to be text red. So if I click on this, I've got two classes applying to it, my button nav and my background clear. That's what makes it a combo. All right, combination combo classes. Let's get into it. All right, let's talk combo classes. What are they? They are, at the moment we've got like our button here. It's got one class. If we add a second one to it, there's two. Combination, what's combo class? Okay, so we, uh, why would we use it? Good question. Um, Cause let's go for instance, let's say our design here has our green button, but a couple of them don't. Okay, so we want, want kind of, there's bits of it we want to keep, like the font color, the font size, the spacing. We just want to change the background. What I could do is go you, I could go actually let's remove this one and create a brand new class all from scratch, get it to float right, get it to be uppercase and white and add the padding. Oh, what a pain in the butt. And then if I change, say the font, I have to change this plus that new class that I made. That's where combo classes are useful. So what I can say is I wanna keep everything, but I wanna add something to it just a little bit more specific. So I'm gonna say you can be button nav, but I wanna add another class called background red that I'm making. Okay, and all I want to do is say, 
uh, you know, out of all of these, I'm going to say just that's what it is now. I'm going to say actually you are this red color from this text over here. There you go. Okay, so that combo class is just a little bit more specific called specificity. I think I just like saying the word specificity. Anyway, um, so yeah, we've kind of just gone over the top of it and it only does one job. It's his own job is to go background red. We can apply it to more things. We can say you also have, oh look, pre-existing combo class there it is there I can apply it to that there we go now I want mine to be transparent so I'm probably going to rename mine and call it uh, clear or uh, transparent up to you okay and I'm going to say actually be this like fully transparent is zoop all the way down here or sometimes there is a swatch ready to go there you go and they both changed see that awesome the nice thing about the combo class is that now if the client comes back and says hey that font needs to be bold you can say no problem i got combo classes okay so i can say click on this one okay my button nav and i'm going to say actually what are we changing typography is now going to be the bold can you see them all changing way okay because they all use button nav the only thing changing on these two is the backgrounds being made transparent it's kind of why they call it the cascading style sheet. It's the CSS, okay, it cascades. You start with the body and it tells the website to do something unless something more specific happens. Like this navigation says, be in the middle, okay? And then this navigation says, I can't remember what it is, but it might say all the text be white, okay? Unless something inside of it cascades down and says, I'm more specific, like I want it to be bold. Ooh, it's gonna override and say bold. And then something even more specific says, I want, this button not to be green to be clear so can you see the kind of hierarchy here you start right at the top the generic stuff and then you get more specific and your website will totally work if you have a thousand classes trying to do stuff it just makes it tricky to update later on so it's just good practice and it's interesting i think anyway let's do another project where we're going to make a bit of the text red so let's have a look at our design you see i've made a chunk of the text red there and a chunk of the text red there so what we're going to do is we are going to take it a little bit further Okay, so I want this word kayaking. First of all, I don't think we have a style for the heading. If I click on it, there's no style there. So no, I don't have a style. So I'm going to make one called heading one. And I want to do a couple of things. I'm going to make it the XO. I'm going to make it all caps. We've done this before, right? Uh, and I'm going to make it the lightweight version. So we're kind of there. We've got a heading one. So I can't make just part of it red from here. I can't say oh, you're red. Okay, because it all comes along this giant block it's applied to everything how do i apply something just to a little bit of a chunk of text so what you do is you select that chunk of text and this pops up okay so you want a bit that says this one here wrap with a span Can you see the little paintbrush it's because i want to style just in this it's called a span tag you don't need to remember that but in the html it's going to put some bits around it so that you can add a class just to this bit so you click that Nothing really changes except, well, look at that, we've got a text span. We can give it a name. Let's call this one, uh, I'm going to call it text red, okay, because I might have text white and blue. So it's called text red, and his job is going to be override what's currently there. So it's being told somewhere along in the style sheet to be white. That's why it's amber. And not this class, but somewhere along there it is. So I'm going to say, actually, go over the top of that one. I want to break from the norm. I want to be a rebel. My children don't listen to their parents. I'm going to be nuclear red. There you go. Cool. All right. So we've done that little uh, span tag to style just that little bit. And like we did before, if we change our heading one, so I've clicked on this bit out here, heading one, we'll say, actually, I want you to be not XO now. I want you to be these other fonts. Impact. Uh, can you see <laughs> because of that cascade or that specificity or I'm throwing words at you just they're web design words. You might be like, I know what that is. If you're new, you, <laughs> I'm just trying to get used to some of these things because it makes it help, helpful for finding, if you've got a problem, you can Google you know, the terms that you've learned. Whereas Webflow likes to hide them a little bit just to make things more user-friendly and kind of using, using human language. Anyway, so you can see they follow through and becomes red. Oh, nice. All right, let's do it again. The cool thing about it is once you've done it once, you know, and you've got loads of pages to do, you can say, actually, remember on our design here, uh, where is it? June 8th was red. Same thing here. You can say, you, my friend, are in a span. Okay, and I'm going to add the class of text, text red. There it is. Hey, look at us. Web designing. That's the idea of a combo class. You can add more than one to an element to kind of help it along or do something else. So, yeah. 
I think we got there. Combo classes. More than one class applied to a particular element. All right, on to the next video. Hi everyone, it is time to build a grid. And um, we're gonna go and build this kind of like three column layout, but you can easily go through, adjust the spacing, adjust how wide they are, how many columns they are, as there are more rows. It's all very exciting. Grids are awesome. Let me show you how they work. Undo, 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 done. Now let me show you. All right, good morning. It might not be your new morning, but it is mine. I'm ready for action to explain grids to you. Uh, so let's get a grid going. We want to put in this. So these little boxes down here, little uh, past event cards, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it, uh, you could, okay, remember we've got our container. We could just dump our grid straight into it. There's nothing really wrong with that. Okay, but it is handy to put it inside of something first. Okay, because we've done it for everything else, right? We've got a section for next events. We've got a section here for sponsors. We've got a split. We're going to put in a section for uh, past events. So new add section. Okay, I'm going to put it here. Did I get in the right spot? Yep, it's hanging down the bottom. What's pushing this down? There's a big margin down here. I did that before because it was painfully close to the bottom. I'm going to remove it. Now you can click and delete it. Remember the option on a Mac or on a PC to get rid of it. Okay, and we're gonna work on it down here. So this section is gonna be called, let's give it a name. Okay, let's, we'll give it a class at least, section. And this one is going to be uh, past events. You can start to see my misnaming conventions in there. Okay, some of them had, look, section, some of them have hyphens, some of them didn't. Bad Dan. Okay, all right, let's get it back in there. Section, oh, past events. I made it, there it is there, cool. So I would like to add some margin for the top and bottom, just, again, just for while I'm working, just so it pushes it out top and bottom, so here. Yeah. So we've got an empty section. Let's throw in a grid. Grid is this one, and it is this layout option here. Click, hold, drag it in, nice. Okay, grids are awesome and look kind of scary, but they're not. And um, so basically, one of the things is when you're editing your grid, can you see everything else grays out? You're in this like magic grid editing mode. You can come out of it by hitting done, okay, and get back into it by either clicking this, okay, edit grid, or clicking inside, go to your styles, and it says under here, under layout, edit grid. Either way. So we're in here, what does a grid do? It allows us to divide up areas. It's really handy because we get to say, we're gonna use the pluses on the ends here and here, not the ones inside of the cells. Okay, these are more compute, well, more hardcore. We're gonna do that later on. For the moment though, let's add a new um, column. Awesome, okay, you can add as many as you like. Okay, you can add a few more rows depending on what you're laying out. Okay, we'll use this grid option for our portfolio later on in the course as well to remove them. Maybe there is a way, I can't figure it out on screen. Okay, so I've got to do it over here. So have it selected, you've got to be in member inside editing mode, click on it. This bit kind of pops out here. You can say actually columns, I don't want all four of them. I want just three. And over here with rows, I'm going to get rid of two of the rows, hitting the little trash can. So I've just got that, that's what I need. Now we're gonna do even um, columns, okay? But see this number up here? You're like, what is an FR? It is a fraction, okay? It's really handy, kind of like percentages. It's, what it's really handy for is, watch this, you can click on it and say, actually, I want this to be two fractions, okay? So it then divides the space into two, this is two and this is one of them, uh, one of the two fractions, okay? so. You can see that division there. I can say that actually this is half of a fraction and it divides it up, okay? It always spans the whole um, space, okay? In our case, it is being kind of contained by our container. It says don't be any wider than this, okay? Notice I couldn't click on that. It's because we're in uh, editing mode. You gotta click done, come back out, there's my container. That's what's, you know, giving it its um, width. Okay, I'm go back into the grid go back into here. So you can divide this up as, you know, to all sorts of cool uh, fractions. You can say that is three and it will divide it up for you. All right, I'm gonna go back to one, one, one. One, one, one. Let's add something to it because this is a little bit strange, watch this. I'm going to add an image. Okay, so if you're following along with your own project, go and find three images, and if you know how to crop them so that the same aspect ratio, go do that. 
um, like say Photoshop or Figma or XD, okay? But I you only know, say that, and if you're like, what is an aspect ratio? If I dump in an image here that are all different sizes, let's say these ones, if I put in that one, and then that one, and then that one, all on the same grid, they don't match because I want them all to be the same kind of height and width. We will do it later on, image, uh, image, there's a section called images level two, where we go a bit more hardcore with images and force them to be the right size. But for the moment, um, go and crop them, or I've made some past image events, one, two, three. I've made sure they're all the same kind of height versus width. Okay, go make your own or use these ones. I try to make them generic. I'm gonna show you a cool other trick is I got Webflow. I'm gonna close it down. I'm gonna get rid of my image because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a really quick way of adding images. You don't even have to have your assets panel open. Just be able to see Webflow. I'm gonna close all this. And I'm just gonna go, hey, here you go. Look, drop here. They'll be added to your asset manager. Look at them. Up they go. Okay, nice and easy way to add images. So back into my grid. And remember, I'm not going to, I'm gonna skip the whole adding an image and then connecting it up. I'm just gonna go asset panel. You go in there. Okay. And then I want to put my title underneath. Okay, so remember my, lo it has a image with a, the kind of title of the event. This is where it gets weird. I'm gonna add my heading. You, I'm gonna go, where are you heading? There you are, typography, drag it in. Great, oh, pushed it over. All right, just get it underneath. I can use my handy dandy navigator, no problem. So my heading is gonna go under my images. Huh, they're the same, they're on the same level. Okay, they are siblings, so they should be in the same grid. What happens with a grid is it looks at individual units in here and goes, I will put them handily for you into different, um, these different cells, okay? Which is good when you're only dealing with images. Okay, so let's get rid of that heading. It means I can go, all right, where's my things? There's this one as well. And then I'm gonna go, uh, where's another one? I'm gonna go you as well in there. Okay, just put some in new ones. And then same with this, let's add a, another one. I'm gonna repeat the process. You see, if you keep adding them, it'll just keep adding them into the very next grid. Thank you, CSS grids. But in our case, we want to actually have more than just you know one per unit. So I'm gonna undo that. I'll leave all three of them in there. What we need to do is this needs to be inside a wrapper Okay, something that contains it and the heading together. And what could that be? Okay, you can't do a section. We know that sections can't live inside of each other. So what do we use? Okay, it's this one here. It's called a div block. Div block is just your generic wrapper that's got no styling. All it is there is to kind of like a rubber band to keep everything together, okay? The section is actually a div tag, okay? Or a div, that's a div, that's a div. They're all divs, but these ones have styling on them. This one here does nothing. It just has this like empty wrapper. This is a div as well, but it has a link applied to it. Div is the kind of underlying thing. It's a division of space, okay, or a division or divider block. Okay, so I'm gonna add it randomly. Okay, so here I've got this div block. Okay, and I'm gonna put my image inside of it, which is a little tricky. You need to get it so, remember, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like inside of it and it'll be a little bit tabbed. It's hard, you can't really drag it in here on the, um, on the canvas. Okay, you need to do it over here in the navigator. So I've got a div block with an image in it. And now I can say, because the div doesn't do anything, it just, I don't know, it's wrapped around the edge of my image at the moment. But if I add something else inside of it, so my heading, okay, did I get it right? Kind of, at least they're in the same cell. You can see, put my heading underneath, there we go. So often for these, what they call cards, okay, these like little units, maybe features or past events or, you know, recent blog posts, these are like little unit cards. If you wanna use it in a grid, you have to put them inside a wrapper. In this case, a div block keeps them together. So where do we go from here? Uh, do I delete these and duplicate that? Oh, decisions. Uh, let's duplicate the div block. So I've just selected over here, copy and paste. I get a new one and I'm gonna go, you go in there, you go over here, <laughs> you go in there. It's hard to do it with a grid on here. Okay, so you actually got to do it over here. So I got one div block, okay, with an image and a heading, okay. I've got an image hanging out by itself. Delete him. I've now got a div block with an image in it with no heading. Uh, it can get confusing. I'll leave this in because you'll get lost too. So I'm gonna, it's easy just to get rid of these images and copy and paste the div block. There we go. Let's switch out the images. Easy way, just double click it. Replace image. I'm gonna pick the, that one, this one, 
It's kind of generic. Anyway, so we've got these guys in our grid. They're all inside their own little wrappers, div blocks to keep them nice and tidy. So what else about grids? And um, we added, we're quite purposeful and we went to U add grid. You can actually transform something into a grid because I want to acknowledge that this is actually just a display, um, you know, a layout display setting. So let's go back to our, so we've got this grid, right? And can you see it's set to this? We've learned, remember display block? Do you remember what that does? Remember that just pushes everything down. That's kind of the default for a lot of things. And then we learned this one here, inline block. Okay, where we did that, where do we do that? Uh, with these images or, I can't remember where we did that. <laughs> uh, for these guys, uh, anyway, they end up flowing on the same line. Okay, good work then. Uh, this is the other option, uh, grid. Okay, so it's another layout option. So I could go up to here and say actually the container for this, so the sections called sponsor, I could say, instead of uh, using this block, I could say, you know, grid. And it just transforms it into a grid. And every single unit in there, let's click done, is, you know, that was something, that was an element, that was an element. All these different elements have pushed themselves on to into these different cells, okay, like a grid. Same thing as before. There's no real difference here. I can add another row okay and start playing around with it so if you do get to a point and you've put in a div block and you're trying to lay everything out and you're like actually i want to just separate them out you can just transform it into a grid and same as uh you know the same sort of thing is you can say actually get rid of the grid and go back to the uh this one here the block element all right back to block so other things i want to show you about grids and the thing is, is that a style was actually created for this grid. Once you get it used to uh, trying to catch those styles as they get made so that you can name them. So we made this grid and we started changing it. We said, oh, okay, it's a, you know, it's three across, not, you know, uh, not two. And as soon as you do that, it says, hey, I'm styling it because I'm doing stuff in the styles panel. Okay, we're doing stuff in here. And it says, all right, we'll make you a style because you didn't write one. We'll call it grid. You can say, hmm, you can just leave it. The problem is, is if I do another grid, um, you know, you'll end up with grid one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's fine, but we are being, um, you know, we've been good. This is gonna be my grid for, in this case, past events. And I'm being quite specific here. If you feel like you've got a grid that you're gonna use on lots of different pages, just call it grid, that's fine. You might reuse it all. But in this case, it's gonna be three across. I might find another one that's two across and, Let's look at also the gap between. So you can play around with the gap, you can edit the grid. So I've got it selected, let's come out. So I've got it selected, I'm gonna to go to my styles. Actually, I've got my image selected. I'm gonna click on my grid, and I'm either gonna edit it here, or say edit grid, okay? And I can play around with the gap in between. So you can do it manually, okay? And I can use my up and down arrow. Can you see the spacing between the uh, changes? They're kind of linked, okay? I can do it on the, Canvas as well, okay, to kind of visually just do it. That looks good. Click done. Grids are awesome. If you do have in your mind now, like what about Flexbox? Um, if you have no idea what Flexbox is, don't worry, we'll cover it uh, later in the course. There's a section called layout, uh, layout level three, okay? And um, the rule of thumb is, if you do have that in your head and you're like, hey, what about Flexbox? The rule of thumb is they do a lot of the same jobs, okay? They do like, 70% of the jobs the same. Uh, Flexbox is just a little tricky to understand when you're new uh, and Grid is easier <laughs> to understand when you're new. So my rule for anybody starting off and myself is do Grid layout and if you can't make Grid do what you want, then look at Flexbox. But they're not really competing, they do a lot of the same stuff. But anyway, I know you're gonna have that question. Now, that's all I've got for Grids. Um, uh, you'll notice that the video is longer because I'm gonna go through and style the rest of the boxes. Remember in our kind of mock-up here, there's some color and the font needs changing. I'm gonna add this heading at the top here. So you can skip along. I'm not gonna do anything that we haven't learned already, but sometimes it's fun to follow along and watch me do it. Um, so yeah, uh, Grid's over. Now we're gonna style these elements inside of this Grid. All right, so first up, let's style the boxes. So I want that background color, so I'm gonna grab my uh, container, my div block. Okay, I'm gonna add a class to it. Okay, because if I don't, it'll add one anyway. So I'm gonna call this one a div, and this is for, what is it called? Uh, past events. Cool, and I'm gonna say you have, remember option, alt click, to close them all down. Uh, I'm gonna go to backgrounds, you. And I'm gonna pick the color from our font that we we're using earlier on. Cool, and um, now in terms of this heading, I would like to have, remember it's called heading, well, 
I've left it at heading four, sorry, at heading one. Okay, I don't want this to be heading one. Why? Because that's my most important heading and I'd like Google and the search engines to go, that's the most important, not this. Okay, that's my heading one. I decided that this is my heading two, unique, it's good. And that's my heading three, next most important element. And then heading four is what I'm gonna use here. So I'm gonna say cog, you are four. And four by default is smaller which kind of suits me anyway. And I'm gonna go add a class to it because it will do it anyway. I'm gonna go heading four. And I'm gonna say you, my friend, are typography white. And I wanna add some padding. So we're gonna to go to spacing and drag out. Do I want padding or margin? It's not gonna matter in this case. So I'm gonna use margin. I'll probably do it from both sides. I'm gonna hold down my option key on a Mac. Alt key on a PC to get both sides in case um, the sample heading. Let me think of something. <laughs> That's what I came up with. Anyway, uh, so I've got my sample heading in here. I want some padding on the site in case it breaks to two lines. All right, now I want to apply it to all of them. So I'm going to say you, my friend, are going to, this div block is going to have a class of div past events. This one here. No, not the image, I want the div block. Okay, I'm gonna go div past events. Okay, and the same with the headings, I'm gonna say you are a heading, first of all, a heading four. Okay, I could leave it as heading one, and does it appear? So if I do heading, it does. So we can say heading, we can say it's heading, you know, we used heading four, even though we said be an H1 still. Okay, so the defaults from the heading one, the large font size still comes through. So I'm gonna say you actually are cog h4 same with you i'm going to add this one called heading four nice all right there's my styling now i want to add the heading okay that's on there now we're not going to use the grid okay because spanning columns in a grid as possible, but it's just of course, gonna cause a, it's a lot of work um, when we can just dump an H, uh, you know, our heading just above it. So I'm gonna close all these down. Okay, and there's my grid, I'll close that down too. Let's get our heading and see if we can get our heading uh, in the right spot. Okay, I'm kind of looking at my navigator over there. It's in the wrong spot. I'm gonna go, just drag it over here, get in there. Cool, uh, and this one is going to be, it's actually gonna be the same as these. Actually, I didn't need to drag it in. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna grab this because it's the right heading. It's got the right class applied for it already. Copy. And I'm gonna say, you just go here, which is wrong, and then try and drag it out, which is wrong, <laughs> and then just use this. Here we go. Inside my section, but it's heading three. Now, the trick here as well is I want to center this, okay, and add some padding. And I could do that by using heading three class and just say, all right, let's go to text the line you know, typography, text line center. The problem is, what's gonna be the problem? You're thinking of it? Can you think of it? That's right, this guy uses the same class. So I needed to be a bit more specific. Okay, what could I do? You're right, combo class. So I've got heading three plus, I'm gonna add a uh, text center to it. Because I wanna do text setting and um, padding, or oh, sorry, margin. So I don't wanna call it text center. And um, so I'm actually just gonna call this one past event. Okay, so it is heading plus past event, and it's gonna be centered, and I'm gonna use spacing, and I'm gonna use top and bottom. I probably, we're just gonna use bottom, there we go. Nice. I've got some giant margins at the top here because I just wanted to push the page along. So I'm gonna go to my next event section and say, actually, where is it coming from? Is it coming from this? It's coming from the section, no. Where's my giant padding? There it is there, giant margin. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down to, what have I done in the past? Let's have a look. I'm trying to work out what this is. So I'm clicking on it, it's 30, is it? 30, there it is there, cool. So I'm gonna say, section past events, you are also 30. I'm gonna leave the big bottom one on until I do a footer later on, but that works for me for the moment. Anything else? I think that's it. You, 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 you. Change the text. Past events. 
Nice work, Dan. Nice work, you too. Okay, so style yours. Let me know in the comments if you run into any troubles. But for now, let's leave it there. Nice work, grids. Grids are awesome, super handy. There will be limitations to grids that you will eventually find, and we'll fix those with something called Flexbox, which we'll do a little bit later. All right, onwards. Hi everyone, uh, this video we're going to talk about responsive web design and uh, we'll talk about what it is and how Webflow deals with it. So first, what is it? It is basically just when a website responds to the browser size or the device size. Uh, I am on a big screen here when I'm recording. Okay, but let's say I'm looking at my iPad. I shrink this up. Okay, can you see it changes depending on the size. So if I open this up on a screen that's maybe a smaller laptop, can you see Dribble has decided that four for a big screen okay and they decide to actually cut it down to three for a kind of a medium screen and we're going to get down to something like uh maybe a portrait tablet okay i'm viewing this website dribble.com on a, on a tablet it's going to cut it down to only two so that's layout so they're adjusting the layout to respond to the device that it's on hence responsive web design it's layout it's fonts it's images okay there's all sorts of things you can address so let's have a little look get down to mobile and you can see it goes down to one column Let's have a look at one more Apple. So at a medium screen, okay, it's on the left and the MacBook is on the right. And then if we go down any smaller, look, they change the kind of structure of it. And then down here, you can see a big jump. See the fonts change for MacBook here? And same with the charity um, logo up here. Everything just kind of lays out differently on the different options. So how does Webflow do it? So Webflow tackles it by doing desktop first. So you design on desktop and then you design for these other styles. Okay, so what happens is you design on the desktop and then you kind of adjust for these different ones. This is your tablet. This is, uh, was it landscape phone? And that is portrait phone. You can look at it in the preview option as well. Okay, just make sure everything's working properly. So desktop, okay, and you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. And ours breaks down pretty badly across these because of that padding that we stuck on. So we're gonna adjust that in the next videos. If you want a specific size, you can drag it. You can see uh, 360, you can type it in here, whatever size you wanna look at. Okay, you might be working on a device, you know, the, your device. I've got a Google Pixel. I can type out whatever width that is so I can preview it on my screen here or just drag it out. Okay, so, and just see how it breaks down. And ours pretty poorly to start with. If you do have the question of like, why can't I design or, you know, can I design uh, mobile first? You cannot in Webflow. Webflow is a desktop first design. Design in desktop and then change it for these other ones. Is there a way of switching it around? Mm, no. <laughs> Not at the moment anyway. And I doubt they have plans to. They're kind of basing it around desktop design and then moving out to these mobiles. So it is best to design a desktop first, get everything you need in there, and then work out the mobile afterwards. So that's responsive design. It responds to the device size. Let's go and actually start working on that in Webflow in the next video. Hi everyone, time to make Webflow responsive. Okay, look at this title, look at this padding on the side here as a for instance. This is my desktop view, looks fine. But when I get down to, let's say tablet, let's wait for the breakpoint. Oh, can you see it changed? Okay, the padding got smaller. Let's have a look, padding massive, padding on uh, the tablet smaller and the font size got smaller. Let's look again, let's go down another breakpoint. Okay, to our next smaller size, let's go, look at that, the font bigger, smaller. Okay, so this is the responsiveness. We're changing things depending on the device size. And we get down to mobile and watch what happens. The font gets bigger, no way. Okay, and we make it centered. We're gonna do it with the images as well. Watch this, the images kind of flow onto different lines. We'll play around down here as well with this next event. Eventually on mobile, look, just get rid of it because it, it was a nice design element that worked on larger sizes, but mobile, we just got rid of it. All right, responsive web design in Webflow. Let's do it. Okay, uh, first of all, let's look at how good our responsiveness is. It is not good. <laughs> we are so bad at responsiveness at the moment. So how it works in Webflow is it's uh, desktop first. So you've got to kind of start here. Don't be adjusting your phone stuff and getting it ready here because there is something called the CSS flow. So what happens is there's these things called breakpoints. These are called breakpoints as a desktop. Can you see it says base break? I can't point to it, okay, but you can see just under my cursor here, that's the base breakpoint. There is something for that size. They say tablet, but it's not really for a tablet. It's just for a screen size that happens to be rendered at 991 and down. And then you can see all the different sizes here, okay, for different phones or devices or anything in between. So what happens with this flow is if you do anything on desktop, it flows through all of this. 
which we know because we've got that padding, which is the big kind of weird thing. We added it in the desktop. It made sense to have this giant margin over here, but it doesn't make sense obviously on mobile. It doesn't even fit. So we don't jump to fix mobile. We've got to fix all four of these breakpoints. Okay, so we're going to go here because what I want to show you is if I change, we'll just do this heading text. We'll do something simple. So I've got this thing called heading one. Okay, not this like little span tag. We've got grab that big chunk of it. So we're heading one on desktop. It fits, there's a lot of room, it's lovely. On here, it's getting a bit tight. So what I'm gonna do is just do a really small font size change. We've already got a class applied to it, handy. Okay, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna close all these down, I'm gonna mess with typography. I'm gonna say typography. You see these things are amber? It means that the, the styling is coming from somewhere else. It is actually coming from, if I click on it, it says, hey, I'm getting my values from somewhere else. I'm getting it from, see this little icon? I'm getting it from my H1 tag, but I'm getting it from, see that little icon matches this icon up here. Okay, so that's where he's getting his styling from. That's why it's not blue. Back here at desktop, it's not blue. <laughs> why is it not blue? Anyway, where is it getting its styling from? It's getting it from the H1 tag, okay, generic one. Ignore that. <laughs> it would come clearer later on. So it's getting it from the desktop. So I'm going to override that, okay, and just say a little, a little bit smaller. I'm using my arrow key and just clicking down until I'm happy with it on that tablet size. Now let's look at phone horizontal. Okay, oh, it doesn't fit. It even breaks onto two lines, so bad. Okay, so I'm gonna say here, let's hover above it. This is gonna make more sense. So this is amber, it's getting it styling from, it's getting from the heading one style on the tablet. There you go, that's where it's getting it styling from. Okay, so I'm gonna say you are going to be even smaller. I'm using my down arrow, okay. There you go. And then who's visiting my website horizontally on a phone though? <laughs> Don't think that. Think there's screen sizes that are just this size. Okay, they're just that. Okay, and let's look at uh, mobile portrait. Okay, and I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna actually make it bigger. You're like, what? Bigger? I am, I'm gonna make it bigger. Okay, because I have to break onto two lines. So I'm just gonna own those two lines and make it nice and big. So let's do a little preview. Let's go to our little preview mode and have a look. So desktop, okay, it's this size. Tablet, it drops down size. And watch this, I'm just gonna drag it because it's uh, more interesting to see the breakpoints. So it goes, watch this, I drag it bigger. It's gonna go back up to desktop. Drag it to go to tablet and eventually I'm gonna get to here. That's why they call them breakpoints. It's gonna get here and gonna go snap. Okay, so it's going, you can see it changing up here when I drag the sides. Can you see the changing? It gets even smaller. Okay, but it's trying to occupy, there's quite a range, can you see? It doesn't look really good there, it just gets smaller. But it's occupying this kind of, um, you know, pixel range between these two different limits. So there's all sorts of screens. That's why responsive web design is tricky if you want to be pixel perfect. You basically can't. Okay, so it gets down here and eventually goes boom, a mobile phone and a massive. Okay, and all these different mobile devices. It's kind of interesting as well to look at the different device. They give you some suggestions, watch this. Let's turn the toggle the preview off. If you drag that slider in here, so go to one of these other ones, anyone, okay, and drag the slider different from when the preview's on, we're just in the designer now, watch what happens. Can you see it on the bottom? There's all these like, uh, watch it, I'll drag it, you keep an eye down there. Can you see it'll show you all these different breakpoints and kind of snap to them? So the Kindle Fire. So if you're developing something that is specifically for the Kindle Fire, here you go. Okay, let's go out to a bigger size. There you go, the Surface Pro, okay, is at Microsoft. Okay, you can go down to these different ones and you can go even smaller, like let's go to phone and let's have a look at the different ones in here. So you can see, you can find your phone or your client's phone, that's probably more importantly, just to make sure it's looking good on the person who's gonna be checking it. Okay, so let's have a little look. What do we got? Where's my one? Pixel 3, I think I've got a Pixel 4, can't even remember. It's ancient anyway. Uh, so there you go, that's what it looks like on my phone, okay, these are on the larger iPhones, the Big Maxes, and you can go all the way down to kind of like the NES. I didn't believe that, I was like, no way, I had an NES, or at least a friend had one, okay, <laughs> I went and Googled it, and yeah, it was 256 pixels, <laughs> and that was the resolution, oh, it was lovely. Good gaming console, anyway. So I was more of a Sega Master System kind of dude, anyway. Uh, so that is our responsiveness, we've done it for the title, you can do it for anything, padding, color, size, so that's kind of it. I'm gonna go through and style my site. I'm not gonna to touch the grid down the bottom here until the next video, so if you just wanna to jump to that. The rest of it, I'm just gonna go through and fix some of the problems. Um, you know, the navigation looks okay, but I'll adjust that 
because your you might not have the you know that luxury or yours might be slightly problematic i'll work on the padding and um, yeah let's do all that together if you would like all right remember though you do not style it down here hoping to style things up the chain because watch this if i go through and fix that padding here i go okay i want the layout nope i want the spacing and i'm going to adjust it down here not this one i want the container or the section okay and i'm going to remove the padding here right in like this if i go up to the next one it's back to the big one and it's back to the big one again back to the big one so it's best otherwise i've got to change it every single time whereas if i undo that go to the tablet version and make that a lot smaller can you see the flows down to this one and that one so it's better to start big go smaller as you go along even though you really want to style the mobile make sure you work through it kind of systematically so i'm going to undo that because let's work on this one so how does it look yeah it looks good i'm going to make that smaller my obviously my padding over here doesn't make sense anymore can't really drag it very well to the right <laughs> like rowing the boat here we go uh we'll just type it in dan go ahead uh, that's good enough 149 okay so what else do i need to change on this one actually let's do that padding so and then we'll kind of look at it everything else so you okay i would like you to go what have we got padding on this one let's just guess 50. actually go right to the edge what have we got on that side that has got uh 35 I'm going to do 35 on this other side. So actually, I'm going to go to my paragraph here and say, actually, let's clear it out. Who remembers how to clear it? There's the reset option or option click on a Mac, alt click on a PC. I'm going to get rid of it. Actually, no, I'm not. That's a good point. I was like, I'm going to clear it by going back to zero. Actually, I'm clearing it and it's going to say, I'm going to look back up the line to whatever paragraph said. Okay, uh, sorry, paragraph, whatever the tablet said. Okay, and the tablet said 149. So this guy gets it. So I can't just like delete it or reset it. I actually have to say you're at zero, okay? Because what I'm gonna do from now on is the section's gonna take control. Why am I doing it this way? To confuse you. Mainly so that, uh, I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing it. <laughs> so that's 35 on each side, it feels nice. Okay, over here, okay, the same thing. It's 35 either side and this paragraph is set to zero. But in here, it's probably too wide. Okay, so 35, I'm gonna hold down my option key on a Mac. Hold key on a PC, get it reasonably close. The padding on the top is way too much. So I'm gonna go mobile device, I'm gonna get it down. Something like that. Or oh, still feels too, too close. Don't be afraid as well to go through and check the different sizes. Remember dragging it up, dragging it small. Your Nintendo NES, okay. Just to see what these all do. I think probably the padding is still too small on this mobile device. Here we go. They don't have to be equal. I've done it equal, but hey. Okay, let's look at, so let's have a little look. You, 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 you. And um, one thing I might do for this is I might go and be centered. And I'm actually gonna look in here. Do I want that centered? Probably not, just in here. I'm gonna get you to be centered. So let's, let's have a look, it gets bigger. Well, actually, when you're in this view, it's a little bit different, right? If you're in the preview mode, you can actually drag past breakpoints. Look, I can make it bigger and go to um, landscape phone, tablet desktop okay when you're in not preview mode you're in the designer you can actually only work within the scope of can you see i can't get any bigger i can't go past that breakpoint i don't know why <laughs> okay uh so let's have a look yep i like it and uh, we're going to need to do something with the background and make it darker because that red against that background is not going to work i might have to ditch that red completely because it looks cool here but on this device here it's yeah a bit of a pain what I might do, let's see if we can fix it. I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna uh, cause a can of worms here. I'm gonna go, let's fix that, even though I hadn't planned on it. Okay, so the background image here, I could go through and darken it. Remember, we've got two backgrounds. So on this one here, will it change just on this one? That's a good question. I don't even know. The transparency is set to 0.24. So let's have a look at it. Let's go into here and let's make it darker here. Will it only affect the mobile? It should do. There we go. Let's have a look. So background image on this. So section hero, background image. Did it all come along for the ride? You, 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 you. Where did it go? Background, it's still at 42. On this one, it is 0.72, so 72%. It did work. I knew that all along. <laughs> okay, so it's darker on the mobile. All right, other things I wanna do. So let's look at the image. Image is fine, image is fine. On this one here, it's just a bit weird that it doesn't go all the way across. 
So I've got an image hero, and what I might do is we're gonna jump the gun a little bit and say size wise, we set it to be, actually we didn't, did we pick a size? We just dragged it, didn't we? Just went, yup, yup. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you can be a width of 100, and we'll use the percent, 100%. We'll do units and increments properly later on and look at the, all the different ones because there's loads. But let's jump that one and say at these other versions, it's a specific width, okay? But at this last one, it jumps to 100%. Nice. And what that means is, watch this, the different sizes. Okay, if I go to preview mode, watch this, it'll be, actually this is a good test. It's getting pretty big. But when it goes to portrait, it jumps back to a, a specific size. Nice. All right, preview off. What else do I want to do? Uh, this is very big away. So, kind of liked it here. Do I like it here? <laughs> Do I like it there? Ah, it's fine. What's giving it its padding? That's, a, that's also a fun uh, game to play is like, where is that coming from? So with that selected, I'm gonna open up my spacing and it's getting some of it from this and probably some of it from the image and you can kind of see if I hover above it, can you see kind of the little checkerboard thing? So it's getting it from there. And where is it getting it from? If I click on it, from the desktop version of the hero button. Okay, so on mobile, I'm going to overwrite that and I'm going to set it to zero. And that's actually probably pretty good. Good enough. Oh, well, this mess. <laughs> look at that hot mess. Let's have a look. Fine here. Not good here. How do we fix this? What I'm gonna do is play around with the sizing and we're gonna play around with, let's look at the section sponsor. Okay, let's say everything inside of it is aligned to the center, but only on tablet. Okay, so you you can see I'm using the align and the typography. That's a weird one. You'll notice we're using the typography center, okay, rather than any of the sort of size and spacing centers. We'll do that later on when we look at grid and flex grid, but often you can get away with just centering the text of an entire, you know, div tag or in our case, a section, and it will follow suit. And do we have, we have an image, so we have something around this, right? We have a wrapper called image sponsor, and what I wanna do is probably the padding. So desktop, it's looking fine. Here, it switches to center, and I wanna add some padding around it. So I'm gonna say, who remembers what you hold down to get all sides to be padding? Okay, so I'm gonna hold down my shift key. Okay, and I'm gonna say padding or margin. So I might do them all, there you go. Okay, so on tablet, there's a bit more padding around it. The other thing is it's all kind of lumped to the side. Why? Because my section has some padding on it. And that was appropriate on desktop, but not so appropriate here. So I'm gonna say, you go away, zero. There's always gonna be a bit of jumping between the different sizes. Let's have a look actually, let's go to preview. Okay, so desktop, oh, wrong way. Desktop's that, gets down to this, gonna get smaller. Okay, it's kind of responsive. There you go, kind of bigger size, it fits three on there. You get under this one, gets down smaller. And how is it breaking down? I'm actually okay with how it is from now on. I'm not gonna change anything else. We can get fancier with Flexbox later on, but actually this is working pretty good. Given it some padding around the images and there's just, yeah, they just seem to break down or what's called inline block member. So they fit in line. If there's not enough room, they break down onto the next line, kind of like typography does. All right, I thought it was gonna be a lot harder than it was. Let's go with this. Um, what else? We've got desktop this. So what's giving the space to this? So let's figure out what's pushing this over. What is it? Is it you? You? Let's have a look. So is it just everything in the section? It is, there it is there. Big old uh, uh, padding on that. So on this one, I'm just gonna make it a lot shorter. Row it across, looks for me. That probably needs to come down as well on this device size. Yeah, looks good. This one, it's inheriting everything from the last one. Is it good enough? It is, because <laughs> I don't like you portrait a landscape mobile device. <laughs> I kind of go tablet, have a look at this, make sure it's not too bad and then go to mobile. It's really important. You shouldn't do that. Okay, and this one here, what I might do is actually this little design choice I had here, eh, it doesn't really work on mobile. It needs to go away or get really small. Let's get rid of it. So with this section selected, I remember it's under borders. There it is there. So it's got a border of that left hand side, okay, if I click on this, of 50. So I'm just gonna go zero. 
gone on mobile. So let's preview it on desktop, it's there. Oh, on tablet, it's there, but when I get smaller, smaller, poof, gone. Okay, you can see what you're doing here, right? And um, you know, you just kind of work your way through all the elements, starting at the top, work your way through. Don't skip landscape, mobile phone, and do uh, this last one. So I'm gonna go section next, I'm gonna say, all of this is gonna be a lot smaller. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and drag them all. Good enough. Is that all we got? We'll do grids in the next one, but I'm happy with how it's going. You're probably, because you're doing something on your own, you're probably gonna have a few other bits that maybe aren't working or didn't go exactly like mine because we're using different sizes and different images and different text and different text lengths. If there is anything, ask in the comments, but also know that we've got a chunk of the course left that, you know, we'll we'll get through it all eventually. And the other thing you might be doing is your logo size, um, you know, ours is fine on these different devices. On this, you might decide that you want it to be smaller and this text to be smaller. Okay, up to you to get it to fit in. And maybe the padding gets a bit smaller. Brand, is that where it's getting its padding from? Nope, where is it getting its padding from? The image, yeah, the image is getting padding over there. Awesome, so work through yours and see what you can do. See if we can figure it out. Remember, starting here and working your way down. All right, that is how to make Webflow responsive. Hi everyone, we are going to responsibly design this grid down here. On desktop it's three by three, it gets smaller to the tablet size. And actually I just picked three by three still, because <laughs> it looked fine. And then I get to two by two on the landscape mobile, and then I get down to mobile and watch what happens. Oh, there it is there. So bigger, and I went, I pushed it all over the edge and I stacked it one column high. So let me show you how to do that now in Webflow. Okay, let's make our grid responsive. At the moment, it isn't responsive. I'll preview, it just kind of, let's go down to uh, tablet, and it just kind of squidges in there and eventually just gets kind of pushed over to the side. So, to fix that, it's pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna start at desktop, okay, it looks fine. We're gonna look at tablet, and it's probably fine on this size. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. And on mobile landscape, okay, it's getting too tight. So I'm gonna break it into, uh, different columns. So what we do is we click on the grid. Okay, so if I click inside there once, there's my grid. Over here in layout, I'm gonna edit my grid or just click on the little option in the corner. Okay, and what we're gonna say is over here on this view here, I don't want it to be three columns. Okay, one, two, three, I'm just gonna say delete one. And it doesn't delete the actual content of the columns, just the available columns that the things have to go into. Does that make sense? So it ended up just pushing down to the next one. Created a row. Auto, okay, just wanted to push down another row. Let's do tablet, let's go down to here. The problem with my layout though is it doesn't look very good at, you know, two by one. And it's a design choice that next time I'm designing something, I can decide that this first one maybe is better to have four columns to start with because then it breaks down nicely to two. Okay, so up to you, make those decisions yourself. Sometimes you have to live with some strange layouts with responsiveness. And um, you'll also notice that if you change between breakpoints, which I do all the time, the columns thing freaks out. Like, <laughs> you're like, what, you, what? I've never seen it over there before, but it just doesn't like it. Okay, so turn that off. Okay, and if I go back into it, it will be fine. But if you try and change it while you're in here, it kind of freaks out. But turn it off, come back in, and it's just fine. So uh, on this one here on my mobile, um, I'm just going to stack them all on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of the columns. You have to have one column. Okay, so I've got one column, and then it's just going to populate as many rows as it needs. Cool, let's have a look. Let's go to preview. Let's expand it up so it looks fine on mobile and eventually gets to a break point and goes to my ugly layout and then back to three and then big three. Nice thing, I like it, nice and easy. Uh, let's tidy it up uh, just by playing around with some of the spacing down on mobile especially. Um, there's some big gaps in there. Do I want edges on it? You might or might not. I think on mobile it's, it's nice to run sometimes to the edges. So I'm gonna say mobile, I am going, the only thing I'm gonna change is the spacing. Okay, and in this case, it is to do with the rows, or columns, rows. Okay, so the row has a height of 60 on mobile. Let's actually start here. Let's make sure we're not. <laughs> Let's start desktop. I like the spacing. Here, fine. Here, too big. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say on mobile landscape, I'm gonna say edit the grid, and I'm gonna say the row height. I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna hit up and down. I'm gonna hit down, hold shift, and hold down. It'll jump in little tens. Okay, and I'm gonna make it 30, maybe 20, and I'm probably gonna to have to do the gap for this as 20 as well for the columns, because otherwise it looks weird. Do I want some padding on the outside? I think I do. So I'm gonna go U, because it's pushing to the edges, doesn't look right on this device size. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's have a look at spacing. I'm gonna go from both sides, I'm gonna do margin. Now I'm selecting my grid, which it'll work on, or I could do my section, okay? Both of these will work. Let's do this one and drag it in, hold down option, drag it the right way, and 30 is probably gonna be good because it's gonna match everything else. And 30 doesn't match, 30 there, so have a look, why is 30 bigger than that 30? <laughs> hmm. You know why, you're like, hey, it's that thing. I can't work it out. Let's have a little look, let's go inside. It's because it's 20, Dan. Because <laughs> Dan's an idiot, there you go. Uh, so let's do 20, both sides, 20 and 20. <laughs> All right, let's go look at mobile. And that's why we did it up there and not just in here because actually it looks okay here. No, I want to push it all the way to the edge. So I want to get rid of that 20. So remember zero and zero. I am a happy man. There we go. Our grids are laid out. They're responsive. Let's give it a test. Small, awkward, <laughs> fine, better. Well, actually best. Let's call that one best. All right. That is uh, grid responsiveness in Webflow. Hello, it is class project time. Okay, class project number three. I want you to add your grid and then make the site responsive. Okay, so let's look at what we've got to. So uh, on desktop here, the only difference from the last one is we've added this grid down the bottom. So I want you to add it, and then I want you to work through all the breakpoints and decide, make design decisions. Okay, font sizes, padding, okay, like we have in the last couple of videos. Okay, and I wanna see them all. Now, upload four screenshots of the four different breakpoints. Uh, the trouble is you can't see all four of them. I think earlier in the course I said, you know, you can go here and we can actually show this at like 80% or 50%, take a screenshot of everything. It doesn't seem to work on tablet. Okay, you might get yours to work, I can't. Okay, it forces it to 100%. So what I've asked you to do is take everything that you can see. Just take it all the way down to here. Okay, so just the minimum is the um, navigation and the hero board. If you can work out ways of doing the whole thing, scaling down the browser, that sort of fancy stuff, please do. Otherwise, just take it all the way, take a screenshot of everything you can see. Let's have a look. Do that, upload it to the assignments slash projects comments, depending on where you're watching this, and also share it on social media. I'd love to see where you're up to. If you can't stand the four by four, okay, I'm okay for you to go and back to here and say, actually, Dan, just add a fourth one so that it breaks down nicely on these other devices. Do it. All right, that is it. Class project number three. Go off, enjoy. I will see you in the next video. Hi everyone, it is time for animations. We're gonna do it to these buttons. I can't believe I got this far through the Webflow class. Well, you can't believe it. And you're like, why haven't we animated things? That's why I signed up for Webflow, because it looks cool when things slide around. We're gonna, oh, look at that. We're gonna do it to buttons to start with. We'll get that one to do the, I don't know, rubber band. This one's pretty cool, pop. Ready for, oh, jello. We'll get them to fly in. <laughs> we'll get them to fall from the sky. Ah, uh, flippy doodles, and my favorite, <laughs> jiggle jiggle. <laughs> All right, uh, let's learn how to do these in Webflow. Okay, let's make that magic. Um, so you might notice uh, if you've kind of jumped back to this video, I've already got this animation. Where did that come from? Remember on a button, okay, you can go into here and uh, change the hover. Okay, so where's my background color is green to start with, but I can go to hover and change it to this kind of pinky red. Okay, so that's that animation. That's not what I want. Okay, I'm gonna click off, click back on. I'm gonna add something extra. What am I gonna do? I'm going to do one of those things from the beginning. So let's do it. It's this panel here. So have the element you want selected, in our case, our button. Uh, click interactions. Okay, and we're gonna be dealing with this element trigger, not page triggers. Okay, so element triggers, we're going to say head plus. So when this element, in our case, a button, uh, is hovered, mm, yeah, when, when I hover above it, Okay, 
it's going to do something. Not just change color, no, we're going to get it to jiggle or whatever. Okay, so on hover, do this action. Okay, so we're going to do some of the pre-made ones. Okay, because they're nice and easy and they're pretty nicely timed. So we're going to do something, let's do pop. So they're kind of broken into, this will probably change. They seem to add and remove things from this. So there's kind of like movement stuff, appear and disappear. And then there's things that get their attention, emphasis. We're going to go for pop. Okay, so let's do pop. Let's preview it. You ready? Hey, okay, and it's working. Give it a go. So let's preview. Okay, and look, when I hover above it, it changes color and does a little pop thing. Nice easing. Well done, Webflow. Cool. Now uh, you can play through them all. Okay, so with it selected, interactions, you'll see all of this. And instead of pop, we can do. Now, before we go through any more of these, with great uh, interaction power comes great responsibility. <laughs> I don't want to find your website. Jiggle's fun. Okay, but I don't want to go to your <laughs> website and have a thousand things jiggling at me. Okay, even though it's very cool. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay, but it's like learning. Remember, remember when you learned the uh, lens flare in Photoshop, okay? And everything had a lens flare. Be careful. I'm warning you. Not everything on your page needs to animate, even though <laughs> clearly it brings me joy. Uh, so the things you need to notice when you do add these element triggers. So this element triggers something, okay, is it gets a little lightning bolt. Awesome. It goes all Harry Potter. Okay, just a visual indication that if I click over here and I click back on this thing, like, ooh. There's an interaction on this one, and I can only see it when I'm previewing. Okay, it appears over here as well. Okay, just a visual cue that this lightning bolt is where we need to go. If you need to adjust it, select it. Okay, and just over here, you can click on it, and it will kind of open it up. Close it, there you go. So let's do a couple, a little bit more. Let's get rid of Jiggle, as nice as it is. Let's do another terrible one. This is like barn doors uh, from PowerPoint slides. <laughs> it's like a transition. Boop, boop, boop. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we've got our hover out. So the moment we hover in, it does something and it does nothing when we release. So we can say when it hovers out, we might do something else. We're going to get it to blink. Give that a preview. You can preview it over here, but it's better to interact with it, I guess. Oh, it is freaking out. That's weird, eh? That's strange. I've never done that combination before. It's because, well, I'm assuming it's because it's moving. So it's trying to flash. If I follow it, it won't. It'll do the bounce watch if I can keep my finger on it. <laughs> I can't. Uh, it's because my it's moving up, so it's doing the mouse roll over off. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's bouncing up and then activating the roll out, and so it's blinking and it's freaking out. So let's not do bounce. Let's just do fade <laughs> and let's give it a go. Oh, it's still freaking out. Okay. Ah, I'll leave this in here because these problems, we run into these problems. So on hover, fade's probably not a good one. Let's get it to pop again. And when it hovers out, it's going to blink. And let's see if that fixes it. And then blink. There you go. So there are combinations that just, it just doesn't like. Okay, so that's okay. Don't use blink, I think is the um, what we've all learnt. Um, so I'll let you play with them. Other things you can do. You can add more than one. Okay, so let's get rid of the hover out just because it's killing me and I can show you how to get rid of it. Okay, so how to get rid of it. Action, select an action. Okay, there needs to be a none option, but just go back to select an action. Okay, so get rid of it. Let's preview it. It's going to pop. Let's get it to pop and something else. So you can add one more. So let's close this down. So there's kind of two parts, right? You're at this kind of element trigger level and you go inside of it to work on our mouse hover, come back out again. I can add a second one, see the little plus? I can say, I don't want another one that says on mouse hover. I want to do two things. So I want to get it to do that, plus I'll get it to, oh, I'm trying to think of a combination that's not gonna wreck everything. I've got it to pop, can we get it to pop and spin? I should have tested this before I uh, <laughs> recorded this video. What does it do? It doesn't pop and do it, does it? Let's give it a go, see if it'll do both. So it's got a pop and a spin in. Are you ready? It is, it's popping. <laughs> Can you see? It, it's another tough one. It's jiggling in and out as it's spinning. Oh, glorious, Dan. <laughs> okay, you can add more than one. This is a terrible video, but we'll leave it in here because sometimes, sometimes it's nice to see the problems as well as the completely always working stuff in case you go down the same rabbit hole of trying to add way too many.
All right, actually, what should we do? Let's let's finish it. Yeah, go through them all yourself. Actually, we won't go through them. Jiggle, jiggle. Ah, uh, does anybody can anybody say the word jiggle without the Louis Thoreau um song coming in the head? Anyway, if you haven't heard it, Google it. It's great. Yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna leave it on jiggle because that's what I want to start with this uh, intro with. And the other big uh, takeaway is hover. We talked about it earlier. Hover doesn't work on a tablet or phone because you can't hover with your finger gonna do it with a mouse. So what we'll do in the next video, we'll do something a little bit more kind of like that page load animation stuff. That'd be cool. So let's go do that now. Hi everyone, we're gonna do this. Watch this, I'm gonna scroll down and things are gonna fade in. Watch. Oh, look at that. They fade in while you scroll up. We'll do it all together, then I'll show you how to kind of offset them as well. One more time, let's have a look. Oh, magical. All right, let's, uh, let me show you how to make the magic. All right, let's create some more lightning bolts. So it's these elements here that I want to fade in. So I don't want to do it to the image. I want to do it to what's surrounding the image. In this case, I've got a div, okay, that's got a class applied to it called div class event. So give yourself a class if you don't have it, okay? It's a good way of reusing it later on. So let's go to the interactions now that I've got it selected. We still use this element triggers. Okay, we say this element here, I would like to do something different from before. We did uh, mouse hover. We're gonna use this one called scroll into view. When this thing is scrolled into view, nothing to do with the mouse anymore. Okay, it's to do with the page scroll. And you kind of just follow it. You just say, okay, uh, when it's scrolled into view, what you wanna do. When it's scrolled into view, can you do the action of, I'm just gonna get mine to fade in. Okay, fade in or fade out. I want to fade in. Let's give it a preview and let's give it a test. Now, when you are testing, if I test here, just kind of load straight away. Okay, so what you need to do is kind of like go up to the top so you've got some scrolling to do. Now preview it and we're ready for the scrolling. Do you see it? Scrolled in. Doesn't kind of, it just loads once. Okay, it doesn't kind of reset every time. Let's go again from the top. There it is. That's my page scroll. Okay, we're using those. Okay, let's look at something else because at the moment a lot of the actual animation is happening. It starts kind of happening like just the second it appears. Like just now it's fading in and it can be finished by the time person gets there. So what's quite nice is with my, uh, you know, my div wrapper selected, I want to use this offset. And this is to do with like the viewport. The viewport is like everything the person can see, the top to the bottom. Okay, and I want to offset it so that it loads maybe, um, you know, I don't know, a percentage after the, you know, after the start of the page. So it's going to load probably, let's say that that's my 100%, it's going to load 17% about there. It's going to start activating. Okay, if I turn it up to like, it's a hard one to explain, but <laughs> if I turn it up to 40%, it's only going to start activating once it's kind of, here's my 100%. It's gonna wait till it gets 40% all the way up the page. Then it's gonna activate. It's gonna be a bit weird. It's a bit, a bit too much. So let's give it a go. You are gonna be activated after mm, 20%. Let's do that. Cool, remember, start at the top, give it a preview, scroll along. And can you see it started quite far up on the page? Let's turn that off, turn that on again. There you go. So yeah, there you go. Uh, so what else can you do? You could do a delay instead of an offset. Okay, offset is gonna wait for the physical part of how much scrollings get done. You could stop that, turn that back to zero and say, I wanna delay. I would like it to delay for this many milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds is one second, okay? Which takes way too long. Boop. Okay, so half it is 500 milliseconds. There you go, let's give that a go. So let's preview. We're gonna do a similar sort of thing. Watch this, if I scroll down, it's just gonna take half a second before it loads. You decide what you wanna do. It's probably better to use the offset because it's gonna wait for a physical, like how high it is. And um, whereas the timer, watch this, I can kind of cheat the timer. If I go here and wait, it'll just look, oh, it didn't. <laughs> okay, let's go one more time. I'll be slow with my mouse. Slower, slow, come on. Oh, can you see? <laughs> it loaded. I saw it peaked in and then started its little timer. Whatever works for you. There's no real right or wrong. Now, let's take this a bit further because I want to do it to all of them. So what we can do is we could go through and just add it to every single one, do the exact same process. It'd be handy because you'd get good at it. But let's say that I've got this, I've got that interaction. Down the bottom here, it says, hey, um, the trigger settings, it says, I would like it not to the element now, which is the moment I'm just doing it to that physical thing. I want it to do to everything that has the same class name. Okay, remember we had, we've got that div class events and you can see it's applied to that one and that one. So 
we say class, go do it to all of them, please. Look, they've all got lightning bolts. Okay, and let's hit preview. Here we go. So scroll up to the top. You yep. scroll down and you can do multiple elements. Could you do it to the whole section? You could. It's probably easy just to do it to the section, Dan. <laughs> uh, so you could have done that exact same thing to the section and it would do the whole thing. Way easier than what I just did. Anyway, the nice thing about it though is because it's reusable, if I used, where is it? Div past elements. If I got something else, let's go, let's wrap that in a div. Do I need to wrap it in a div? I think I can just give it the class name of div past elements. Is this gonna work? I should practice these things before I go and show you stuff. <laughs> let's give it a go, give it the top. It's probably not gonna work, is it? Totally works. Have faith in yourself, Dan. <laughs> so that thing's reusable, as long as you use the same class name. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I actually wanna offset it. At the moment, right, they all just appear at the same time. So I wanna kind of like one to fade in, next one, next one. So you can't do it with this kind of structure that we've got now where we're going just apply the same thing to all classes because yeah, they just apply to all one. So I'm gonna say apply to the element again. And I'm just gonna repeat myself. I'm gonna say, all right, so we've got offset 20%, fade in, we can do that, but a repetitive. So this next, um, you know, this next div pass, div past events. Okay, we're gonna say, let's add element trigger of our scroll into view. What action would we like to take? I want it to fade in and I wanna offset it by 20% still. Actually, we might need this one to go 30%. It's a little bit higher before it actually starts activating. So it's a kind of way of timing it. We could do it with the actual delay as well, just like we did before, up to you. Let's give this a go. So you have a trigger of scroll into view. Action is fade. I want it to fade in after an offset of 40. I have no idea how long, uh, how this is gonna look. Let's give it a go. Probably not very well. We're, the percentages are probably a bit high. Start at the top, give it a preview. Let's go along. Yeah, it was all right. Um, I think I'll try the delay as well. Yeah, let's try the delay. Cause that was a little bit jumpy. So you page offset, we'll keep it all at uh, 20%. So go into it. 20%, zero for this one. The next one, we will go into it and say, stay 20, because I don't want it kind of happening too early, but let's have a delay of say, quarter of a second, 250 milliseconds. There we go. There's the next one here, same sort of thing. I'm gonna put it back to 20%, so it loads kind of 20% up the page, but let's have half a second, so 500 milliseconds. All right, let's give it, scroll to the top, preview. Oh yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Is that a cool heart or a, hmm. We'll do custom animations later on in the course, but for the moment, and a lot of the time, those, they've done a really well job at those kind of pre-built ones in these element triggers. All right, my friends, that is fade in when you are scrolling on a page in Webflow. Hi everyone, class project number four. This one is to create your own interactions. Want to create two of them, um, like we've done in this course, uh, one for the button and something that's on the page scroll. For instance, remember, that's the button one on hover. Okay, you can do anything you like and the page scroll in my case is this fading in, but you can do whatever you like. Okay, the best way to share it with me is to do it via video. So um, on a Mac, I know you can hit Command Shift 5 um, and record a section of your screen and then upload it uh, to the uh, assignments, projects or comments depending on where you're watching it. And um, sometimes it's easier just to upload it to Vimeo or YouTube first and just post the link, um, so up to you. Um, on a PC, I'm not exactly sure how you might do it on your PC, so just Google how to do it on your PC. There's screen recording software on both Mac and PC. So have a quick Google on how to do that. If you can't, look, not everyone can record their own screen. If you can't, I'll accept uh, just screenshots, okay? So see if you can do the video. I'd love to see what it is. So yeah, practice, have fun, enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to look at sharing what we've made okay, with our client. How do we do that? Now we are pretending at the moment that this is like work in progress. It is a work in progress, but that's what we're doing right now. We wanna share it with a client. It's not the big finish finale, you know, um, announcing it to the world. This is like, hey, Jeff or Jenny, and uh, this is where I'm up to, what do you think? Or maybe it's going into some testing for people so they can kind of work through it, find any sort of errors or anything missing. How do we do it? Super easy. Okay, uh, with your website open, okay, go to publish, and that should already be ticked, and just click uh, publish selected domains. Let's do it quickly, and then I'll backtrack and show you some other things. So 
it is live on the internet now. It's very exciting. Uh, to get to it, click on this little arrow here, or you can copy and paste that, or, okay, so there we go, it should open up. And that, my friends, is your website on the interwebs, okay? It is fully workable, okay, there we go. And you can copy and paste that, send it to your client and say, hey, have a look. It's very exciting if you're new to web design to get your stuff out there and actually online rather than just kind of trapped inside Webflow or Photoshop or Figma or XD, wherever your kind of first designs are. It's a big kind of milestone. Hooray! So let's have a little look back here. Um, so this here is the domain that you're going to be using. Think of it as a staging domain. So a word uh, kind of used in web design for like a draft part of the website. It's fully workable, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just on what's called a subdomain. Um, so the main domain here is webflow.io. This other stuff, uh, adearkayakclub.webflow.io is the subdomain for the main domain. Anyway, um, some people call it staging domain and it's just a good, we are a work kind of in progress way. Eventually you'll add your own custom domain, which we'll do together and it'll be on a proper website. It can live on this one. It's just not a pretty URL. It's a little unprofessional, but if you've got a very unprofessional website, knock your socks off, use that subdomain. Now, if you want them to check it and then turn it off again, if you unpublish it, it'll take it off the internet. The only trouble is, is that if I go to here and refresh my page, you get a big old 404 error. Okay, the error means the website cannot be found. Okay, so if I turn it back on though, it'll be found again. So it's kind of like, a, yeah, turn it on and off. And um, one thing you might be asking here is uh, there's a few things you might want to turn on. Okay, so I'm going to go to my project settings. Who remembers where that was? Okay, we did at the beginning, there was four places. We looked at three of them, the designer, there was the editor, which we'll do later on, and then project settings and dashboard. Where were they all hidden? Uh, you remember, there you go. Okay, project settings. Okay, so project settings for a dear kayak club. Now, I'm gonna show you some things that you probably can't do yet. If you're on the you know free plan or you haven't done anything yet, okay, um, if you do, yeah, I'm gonna show you them because you wanna have a look, but they are required a paid uh, version of Webflow. So in general, uh, this one here, website password, people like to turn on when they are kind of like, you know, it's just new and I don't worry about it. I used to because nobody's gonna guess the, you know, this kind of like a dear kayak club or webflow.io. There's no way of finding it. Well, it's hard to find. Okay, but you could turn that on, but you need to upgrade your hosting. I'll walk you through that later on as well if you haven't already. Remember, if you do want to upgrade to hosting, you can use my link here on the screen. Uh, yeah. Other thing you might want to do is, um, if it's going to be up there for a long time, is under the SEO tab, there's one in here called indexing. If you turn this on, it just means that Google's not gonna go and index it. And what they mean by indexing is just adding it to the search results. Because this is just a work in progress, it's not quite finished, it's the wrong subdomain, there might be placeholder text like in ours. So we're just saying this, saying, Google, don't go and search my site and add it to your uh, vast search results. Thank you very much. But again, if you had saved changes, it's gonna say, hey, you need to upgrade your hosting. <laughs> okay, so at the moment, um, that's not what we wanna do. Okay, so I'm gonna go from back to SEO. So you might wanna turn those things on or you might just have those questions in your head. Yes, you can do them. Yes, you need a paid hosting plan. But for the moment, don't worry about it. Like. I don't worry about it, is what I'm trying to convey. You might be like, it needs a password. Uh, you can totally go do that. But just sharing that link there is fine, obviously when it's on. You can actually, oh, another tip, you can publish from the settings. Not that you, you know, I never do it from here, but you can. You can bin the site from here. You can unpublish it from within the, you know, the website's uh, project settings. But I find it's just easy to work like this. and. If you do want to turn it on and off, uh, just let the client know that you you know there's a day of testing and you're gonna disable the URL. All right, that is it for this one. Let's move on to the next video. I'll see you there. Hi everyone. In this video, we're gonna look at hosting on Webflow, the pros and cons. We'll also look at what the difference between a site and a workspace plan is. Let's jump in. All right, first thing is, is that Webflow, I betcha, are at their office right now waiting for me to finish this video so they can go and update the language and the prices and the features you get. So um, be sure, I, I'm gonna run through it now, but this might change, the language might change, but it'll give you a good general overview. So I'm at my dashboard here. You'll see that that's the site we're working on. It's called Starter Site. 
there's this other thing called starter workplace. That was probably the trickiest thing to understand when I got started. So let's discuss those. And I'm gonna jump to this page here. It's webflow.com slash pricing. This is probably the same. Okay, and I wanna discuss the two different options here. Okay, there's something called site plans and down the bottom here, workspace plans. What is the difference? Briefly, uh, a site plan is hosting. That's what they call it, they call it site plans and e-commerce plans. These things are the same, just kind of different levels. Okay, but this is hosting your website, somewhere on the internet that it can live, where people can visit it, somebody needs to host it. Okay, so that's what this chunk is. The workspace plan is you as the designer. You as the designer is like, at the moment we're using it for free, okay? But let's say I wanna build more than, uh, you know, uh, two unhosted sites, I need 10 of them. I need to export the code, I need to add password protection. That's where you as the designer upgrade this. So you personally will upgrade this and pay $19 a month. Then every site will need hosting. So if you've got 10 sites, that's 10 times 12. Every site needs hosting, but you as the designer need, you can try and get away with the free, but you might need to upgrade to this one here if you're gonna build more than one website because it unlocks a lot of features. So that's it. You may get away with just one payment. You might need both of them if you're gonna go into Webflow seriously. So that's the skinny version. Let's look a little bit more deeper. Um, so site plans and e-commerce plans. So we're on the starter plan. Okay, the big drawback here is you don't get a custom domain. Okay, everyone's gonna want danielscott.com. Okay, not uh, you know a dear hyphen kayaking hyphen club dot webflow <laughs> Okay, uh, so that's that. If you do need to upgrade it, and that's all you're doing, let's say that this website is your website and it's static, it doesn't do a whole lot, and you just want the domain name, that's all you have to go. Grab the basic one, okay, get the custom domain, and that's it. The next jump up is a CMS. So we'll do a CMS when we do build our own blog, okay? It's when there's a bunch of items in your CMS, like blog posts, or it might be portfolio items, or, okay, CMS, content management system. Okay, if you do need any of that and you want the client to be able to update items or blog posts, you're gonna need to up, you know, go to this one here. And there's just a restriction on CMS items. Okay, if you've got more than 2,000, you need to jump to here. Same with the bandwidth, okay? 50 gigabytes is quite a lot for a small site. Uh, you know, 200 is quite a lot, and then you start getting to 400 gigabytes. It's like the trans, how much information is going from your host to people. Basically, it's based on how much they actually have to download, okay? Images and videos and all sorts of other stuff. And really what it comes down to is how much traffic you have. So often when you get up to these, okay, uh, higher prices, you often are generating more revenue and it's, you know, translatable, pay less, for less traffic, pay more for more traffic. The big jump here is the e-commerce one. Okay, so site plans here, CMS, static sites, perfect. When you want to start pay taking payments, okay, you're gonna to have to jump to the basic of this one here. That's where you start. This is where Webflow will start helping you with payments and shopping carts and orders and shipping and all that sort of fun stuff that is amazingly helpful from Webflow, but it costs a bit more. Okay, so these are the exact same thing, just with different levels. Our, you know, Adia Kayak Club is probably gonna be fine at this because I want the extra domain name and it's probably not gonna get more than 50 gigabytes. So as I wanna start selling stuff from it, okay, I'm gonna to have to upgrade to a minimum of this. And then again, this just kind of upgrades depending on your level, how many things are in your shop and your sales volume, okay? You can have a look through all of these. They've got kind of like view all plan features and you can kind of scroll down and have a look at what will work for you in, you know, what you can get away with and you can upgrade if you need to. All right, that's gonna be my skinny version. I don't wanna go through every feature because it's gonna change, I know it is, but go to pricing, view all plan features for both hosting, okay, which is the site or e-commerce plans, and then have a look at Workspace and just see what's gonna work for you. If you're new, maybe sign up for a monthly account and you can upgrade to annual if you wanna save some money in the long term. Actually, before you go, pros and cons for me, okay, the cons are that it's a little pricey compared to hosting. Hosting has to be paid for. Somebody has to pay for it somewhere. Gone of the free GeoCities days. Hands up who remembers those. Um, where they used to fund it from ads, I think. So you have to pay for hosting somewhere, but the con here is that it is a little more expensive than other places if you have done this sort of stuff before. It's not outrageous, but it kind of leads into the pros. And uh, you know, if you're comfortable setting up your own host, then you know, uh, that's one thing. If you're not, you know, I can set up a domain, I can set up, you know, I can set up a database kind of, and you know, uh, set up my host somewhere else. And, but 
I like this because it is, you know, somebody's looking after it. The security patches are all run by somebody else. And for me, some of the big ones is setting up that the client can update it. Okay, so that they can log into the editor and make updates to add their own blog posts, add their own, you know, items to the store, organize their own orders, the forms, it's all kind of outsourced and handled by them. All right, that's it. Site plans and e-commerce is hosting. And this one down here is basically or is it workspace is you paying to use the software I'm using air quotes because it's kind of a website but software as a service there we go all right I was probably stating the obvious there but anyway <laughs> I hope it was helpful uh, if it wasn't I'm sorry anyway I'll see you in the next video we're gonna start making our portfolio exciting Ooh, are you ready? This is an exciting one. Tips, tricks, shortcuts. Now that you've got a few Webflow skills under your belt, I'm gonna share with you some of the things to make your day go a lot faster, make you look impressive in front of your colleagues as well. Hang around to the end. I've got a special Webflow Easter egg hidden there at the end. All right, probably the most commonly used, or at least for me, is on a Mac, it's Command Shift P. Okay, on a PC, it's Control Shift P. Hit that. And it just toggles between, you can just keep hitting those buttons and it toggles preview mode on and off instead of trying to click the small eyeball up here. Okay, so that is Command Shift P on a Mac, Control Shift P on a PC. It gets better. Go into preview mode and you can, on your keyboard, okay, look at your keyboard, the numbers that are above the letters, hit one, two, three, four, five. Cool, eh? You can kind of just jump between all the different views. One, two, three, four, five. Five is not the one you want. <laughs> it just opens that. Just do one, two, three, four even. Okay, you can do it in both the preview mode and in uh, the designer. Okay, one, two, three, four. And remember, Command Shift P or Control Shift P on a PC, you can look at preview mode. Woohoo! Next super awesome one is be back in your designer at a preview. Okay, and on your keyboard, you've got A, S, D, and Z. They're all kind of grouped together on an English keyboard. They're all real handy. Those are the ones that I use the most. If you're, you know, if you're using interactions a lot, can you see if you hover above it? It's H. I never remember the shortcut for interactions because I'm not there all the time. The ones that am there all the time are A, S, D, Z. Okay, A is add. That makes sense. A for add. Okay, I'm always going to the add and then back to the navigator, which is Z. A, Z, A, Z. The other ones, S for styles. Watch this, if you're over here and you're on something else, hit S for styles, that makes sense. A for add, S for styles, and what would be the settings? D, <laughs> which makes no sense. It makes sense because it's next to the other useful ones on your keyboard, but there you go. <laughs> AS loads, D I use loads, and Z, okay, for the navigator. Remember, there are lots of other ones. You just got to hover above them. And if you're using the style manager loads, you're probably the only one, but it's G. There you go. All right, ASDZ. The next one is super awesome. It's the find everything shortcut. Okay, so I'm, you know, I am here and I want to add something. Instead of going to my A and then scrolling and figuring out as a component, maybe it's under layouts. Okay, what you can do is cut to the chase and just click where you want it to go and hit Command E. On your keyboard, can you see this find anything appears? You just need to know what to type. And if I want another image, I just start typing image and there you go. It adds an image, ready to go. So I want another heading, I don't know, underneath this paragraph text. So Command E, and I just go heading. There you go, hit enter. I just typed in the first few letters, and I hit enter, and then there you go, you got a heading. So if you can remember vaguely what it's called, Command E, oh, that's Command E on a Mac. You're Control E on a PC. Sorry, PC guys, I've forgotten about you. Okay, so Command E on a PC, and then type footer. Look at that, there's a footer Giant footer, I can't add a footer <laughs> inside of this. Anyway, you get the idea. Command K works as well. Does Control K work on a PC as well? If some of these shortcuts aren't working or have changed, you can go down to see this little question mark down here and go help, okay, and keyboard shortcuts, and it will list out them all. I'm giving you the good ones. Can you see on a Mac it's Command E and Command K? Back in the day it was only Command K, but Command K on a Mac opens up I can't remember, is it mission control? Something else. So they changed it, but they left the old one, which is confusing. Anyway, so that's control or command E, find anything. Now that gets better. How better do you say? When you can add a class automatically. Well, simply. Watch this, let's say that I've got this style here. I wanna add a class and we've been going up here and we've been going this and oh, we can pick from existing ones or we can type them in to add them. But watch this, imagine if I could just use my keyboard. Click on this and I hit command or control return on my keyboard. Key set jumped up over here, here I am. And I can type in heading because I've named mine relatively well. There we go. Let's go to this, 
command return or control return and I'm just going to type uh, paragraph, have I got any more? I've got text, there you go. And I'm using my arrows to go down, there's my text block red, there we go. Where it gets cool is, first of all, I'm gonna undo mine, uh, command or control Z, get back, is let me show you a bit more of a flow combining a couple of them. So underneath this paragraph, I need a, let's say another heading. So I'm gonna go command E for, oh, reload site. Oh, what shortcut did I hit? I'm not sure, <laughs> start again. So here, we're gonna go command E, I'm gonna type in heading, Hit return, command return to add the class, and I'm gonna go heading down, 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 one. Look at that. So you can add stuff and style it without kind of going through all the menus. You add command or control E along with command or control return. This one here, button, I'm gonna go command return. What else have I got? Have I got any more button styles? I only, I've only got one, okay, button uh, nav. You can add them. Let's say I just wanna add one. I wanna add a, a class, I wanna add a new class here. So I'm just gonna call it button and I'm gonna call this one purple. Hit return, it's created a class instead of selecting one. It's the same shortcut, command or control return. And then I can go down here and say, actually the background of this one is going to be now purple. There we go. All right, next one is pretty cool. It is the this one here, it's called X-Ray Mode. That's the shortcut. It is Command Shift X, or PC, it'll be Control Shift X. What does it do? Makes everything black and white, which isn't that useful. What is useful though, is when I am in this mode, watch, when I hover over, can you see? I'm not doing anything, I'm just hovering, okay? And it's showing me all of the padding and where it's coming from, can you see that? Okay, it's showing me that, why is this over here? It's cause there's padding, which is green. What's pushing this down a bit? It's cause there is blue, which is a uh, margin. Same with this, if I click, oh, I'm not even clicking, just hovering on this section here. It's got padding on it. That's what's pushing all this text on. It's not margin from the title. It is padding from the section hero. So it's just a really handy way to kind of move around and go, what is making this do this? All right, that's command shift X or control shift X. Turn it on and off and just kind of work your way around to see what's being affected. Great if you're working on somebody else's project and you can't, or yours from a long time ago, and you can't remember what's actually making things do what it's meant to be doing. The next one is over here in my styles, which is S for styles. Okay, I'm in the styles panel and if you hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC and click any of these little arrows or chevrons, they all close down. It's just nice and tidy way of working, just kind of going in and out rather than having them all open, which is that same key, Alt or Option, okay, and scrolling through them and trying to figure out where they are. The other nice thing about this option is you can start to see, if I've got this selected, it's showing me that this image, this class at least that I've got selected here, is doing stuff on layout and spacing, but nothing else. There's no other blue dots. That means something is actually doing something on this class. And in this case, it's the display set to block, okay? And the sizing has got some margin on it, okay? These ones here, this class does nothing with position. Absolutely nothing, no dots. The amber ones here, that is saying that there's actually a max width coming from somewhere else, and that's why it's amber. How do I figure out what is making this 100%? You hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and just click on it. Actually don't, <laughs> the command key, okay, or the control key on a PC. And it says the value's coming from all images tag. We'll look at that tag later on. Okay, but there are times where, let's have a look at this text. Okay, typography. There's nothing getting done here. A lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, amber stuff. Let's hover, hover over the, let's have a look at the color. Where's the color coming from? Hold down the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC. It says, hey, it's coming from the section called hero. So that's where it's getting its color from. So I could click on the section here and say, yeah, there it is. It's blue, it's white. It's affecting everything that's inside of it. All right, the next one are picking units. Let's say this heading here, we wanna go, actually, yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's do the typography, and let's say we don't want it to be pixels, we're gonna use Eames, okay? You don't actually have to drop this down and say I want Eames or Rims, okay? I can just, actually, let's undo that. Undo, okay, I'm gonna just type in, I want it to be two REM and hit enter. Can you see it just updated that and adjusted it? Any of these fields, you can type in measurements, Let's say I want the spacing to be a margin of 50, but I want it to be percents. Instead of changing it from pixels, I can just type in percent and it will make it 50%. All right, undo, undo. Things are getting wonky. There we go, let's get rid of him. Next one. All right, this next one is more useful when you've got more complex sites. Uh, we'll do uh, one of those later on, but to put it all in this video here, 
Let's click on this image here. And if I use my left and right arrow, can you see it kind of moves through everything that is what's considered a sibling? Okay, everything that's in this section called hero, all of these guys, they're all buddies. They're all siblings. Okay, they're all on the same level. Okay, so you can click on here and use your left and right just to kind of select the different ones. It can be trickier to select these things when there's a lot of data on the page and maybe it's not very big. So left and right is siblings up and down. So I'm gonna use my up arrow to go and select the parent. Okay, in this case, it is the section hero. There we go. So that is the, you know, that's the section there. Sometimes you can't even click on the section underneath. So you click on the, you know, the child and you just hit the up arrow and that'll select everything that's outside of it. it can be really handy when there's no room, you know, maybe these buttons are covering the background and we can't select it. So we can just say, you up arrow, select the parent, that works down here, okay, because remember there's div tags here. We can use the navigator, of course, but we can just click on this image, hit the up arrow, and we've selected the parent div. Uh, downwards, start selecting the children. So I can say, yeah, section past events, I can go down arrow, down arrow, and go deeper inside of it which I never do, but the up arrow is really good. Selecting the parent. Keep going, eventually you get the body all the way at the top, the grandparent. Nobody calls it that, by the way. All right, next one. Next one is I'm gonna click on those paragraph text here. I wanna change the size. If I click in here, I can just use my up arrow. Can you see it moves through 16, 17, 18, 19, down, up and down with just the arrow keys in any of these little fields. You can tab to the next one, watch this. Tab, ooh, I'm in the height. Okay, so you can mess around with these. Shift tab goes back. Too hardcore? I use it all the time, <laughs> but I'm a nerd. Uh, you can hold shift and use the up arrow. Can you see it goes in lots in 10? Okay, and that's true of basically any of these options. So let's say I want the spacing over on the margin here to be, uh, it's starting off at one. I can click in here and use my up arrow to go individual, hold shift to go over in big chunks. Can you see it moving on the page there? All right, how do you reset it? You can hit the reset button on most of these or hold down the option or alt key and click them and it will just kind of reset it to whatever the default is. Remember the zero, remember the default sometimes isn't. In this case here, if I reset it to the, you know, if I put it to zero to go back to the default, that's you know not the default. The default is actually probably 16. Let's hold down the option, give it a click and it will actually, 14 is what the kind of default for that is. So remember option or alt clicking is better to kind of reset it, get it out of there, don't make a, go back to what it was by default. <laughs> you get the idea. Don't be afraid to alt drag things. So hold down the alt key on a PC, uh, option on a Mac, and watch this. I can drag another one of these, and look, I've got two of them. Need another heading over here? Hold down the alt or option key, and just drag it, and it will duplicate it while you are dragging. The other useful thing is that you can right click things in Webflow. I can right click this, get into different things, copy. Duplicate, I can add a class to it. I can rename the class that is around here. I can add a trigger. Look at this right here, rather than going to this option over here. I could turn it into a symbol. I can move it up and down to the parent. I'm just reading these out now. Um, it's kind of weird because in a web-based application like this, you assume right click's gonna do all sorts of like googly stuff, not the actual application. But somehow Webflow have taken control of the mouse and sometimes it doesn't work over here. Can you see this is the normal stuff you see in Chrome? But over here, look at that, you get Webflow stuff. Another thing you can do is with uh, some of these fields, okay, especially these kind of like singular fields that have little inputs, you can hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC, and actually just drag them. Can you see the little arrow changed? If I hold down my option on a Mac, alt on a PC, you can just drag these things up and down again, just to visually get them where you want. Some of them, like this margin here, you don't actually have to hold anything down, okay, you just drag them. You'll get used to which ones do which, these kind of like infographic style ones you can just drag, but any of these fields that you gotta type into, you can hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC just to click and drag, nice. Speaking of dragging over here, we've looked at it before, but if you hold down the option key up here and drag, you'll notice that even just by clicking the key down, can you see this bit highlights? Okay, so it's showing you that I'm gonna do both sides. Look, ooh, they're the same, they're both 98. If you hold down the shift key, or the command key, shift key. <laughs> <laughs> and drag them, they'll do the top, bottom, and left. Okay, great for things like uh, the sections, okay, where you want them all to have some margin, or in this case, some padding, all will be the same. Hold down your shift key and drag one of them, they all come along with the right. And the alt option is either side, either top or bottom. Making a mess of this one. Also, while we're here, remember you can pin the navigator if your screen is big enough. It's this option here, it means it just doesn't go away. Okay, otherwise the navigator is super helpful and you gotta open it every time. 
Stay there, please. Thank you. And last but not least, the most exciting of them all, it's the Easter egg inside of Webflow. Being the designer, don't do anything else. Actually, let's let's say I've got this, and I'm like, you know what? There needs to be something better than impact. You know what's better than impact? It's this, you ready? Type in IDDQD, and then go back in, and happy days, look, Comic Sans has appeared. <laughs> I hate you, Comic Sans. <laughs> but it's there. Hate's a strong word. Sorry, Comic Sans. And Comic Sans lovers. What was that shortcut again? It's IDDQD. You get extra points if you know what that is. Anybody remember what that was from? Let me know in the comments if you do. Did a nostalgia for those of a certain vintage. All right, those are all the shortcuts that I love and use. You might have your own. If you've got one that you want to share, throw it in the comments. And if you're wondering, I can't figure out a way of turning it off either. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Once it's on for a project, I can't seem to turn it off. Sorry about that. But there we go. On to the next video. It's over. Boo! But guess what? You can continue on if you want. This is only the first part of my full course. Okay, so if you've enjoyed it so far, it gets better. Like, we've made the club ne next week. You know, the next video after this one is we start building a portfolio. We build a blog. We build a CMS, e-commerce, okay, animation galore all sorts of amazing stuff in Webflow. So if you are keen, yeah, come join me. Card, link in the description. Um, also, if you've got this far, you probably liked it. Liked it enough to give it a like. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I've got lots of other Webflow stuff here. I've also got courses for Figma and uh, Adobe XD. They might be of interest to you as well. Links in the description. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.